Hello. Welcome to the Anemone Show. If you're watching the VOD, there may or may not be timestamps in the description. Hello. If you're live, hello. <laughs> Good morning, good morning Brooke, good morning Gato, good morning Cat. Nemini Show! <laughs> How's everyone doing? Don't mind me while I put on some band-aids on my little fingers. The overlays look amazing, thank you! They're basically the same as they were before, but um, I think I made them a bit more uniform than they were before, because before I feel like they were just kind of random, you know? What happened to my fingers? I... I'm dehydrated, <laughs> and like, my cuticles are rising up, and I was pulling on them because reasons. And now I don't want to keep pulling on them, so I put band-aids on to avoid that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I have Wonder Woman band-aids. Games hydrate, thank you. Oh, I totally wrote a message in mod chat and then forgot to send it. But there will be a self-care timer on... YouTube and it's gonna ping every like 30 minutes or so so that just because we don't have redemptions here for hydrate and stretch and that kind of thing just to remember to take care of ourselves and I also made a command for the rules if um, stream elements would like to show up at any point That'd be pretty cool. If Stream Elements doesn't show up, I, I guess we have to go back to Nightbot. Um, Stream Elements is not showing up. I don't know what I did wrong. No, why'd you leave me? Thanks, Stream Elements. I know, right? <laughs> but basically, rules are... Wake up, Stream Elements. I know, right? It's too early for them. Basically, rules are just, don't be rude, uh, no self-promo, showtime, <laughs> and don't talk about current events, and also, technically an 18 plus stream for language, but PG-13 content is what I'm going for here. at like 8 this morning and then I was doing stuff and I was awake then I fell asleep again at like 9 and then I woke up at like 9.45 and I was like oh <laughs> and that's when I pushed uh, stream back No children, only babies. Yeah. Almost done. I'm almost done. And then I can show you my band-aids and I can show you my mug. You can hear the game audio and everything, right? Everything sound good? Yeah. Also, I wish I could have decorated a bit more for Halloween, but I don't know. It's been a weird year. Music, yes. Good, good, good. And I'm looking at my audio levels. Looks like everything is good. Look up at 10, saw your message and close my phone again. <laughs> okay, it's 
time. Uh... Oh no. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Wearing my Animal Crossing hoodie. These are the new overlays. Here's my little band-aids. They're Wonder Woman themed. And... Uwu. <laughs> A wild Uwudi appeared. Here's my, my little mug. I should put it on the side. Okay, let me just like... I'm drinking black coffee with a little bit of sugar because I don't have any milk. I have to go to the store and I haven't done that. Also, the handle is on this side. I might, I might hit the mic. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Don't take it personally. Adorable. I know, right? So cute. I love it. It's like my favorite mug. But I have to keep it in storage until Halloween season because I have too many mugs. <laughs> and I bought a little shelf at Daiso when we went to San Diego. And now it it's better organized, but it's still very crowded in my cupboard. <laughs> my mom and brother sent me chocolate abuelita. But I have no milk. Oh no. <laughs> Same though. We went to... We had to go to the doctor. A couple of weeks ago last month actually and we bought like this pack of abuelita chocolate and it came with the mug <laughs> but also it was like the whole thing and I I just ran out of milk so sad okay let us go here oh no where's all my sources Yes? No? There you go. Make you a little bit bigger. Oh. And then... You get to look at me! Isn't that great? <laughs> Rim has so many damn mugs. She's obsessed... She's obsessed... What? Me with mugs and has an entire cupboard for her mugs. Oh no! <laughs> I mean, same though, and my mom keeps telling me to like, I have too many, but like, I don't think that I do. Let's start the game. Um, let me just fix my windows first. Because... Okay, put chat over there. Put myself right there. Okay. Alright. New game. What is your name? What is your name? Let me just... Oh my god, my desk is a mess. Excited to see this game. Me too, actually. There is one game. Game? There is one relationship that I'm very curious to see how everyone is going to react. But yeah. Nemini. I was the one telling my mom to stop getting mugs because we had no space. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, when I was at my parents' house, there was like a whole shelf. A whole shelf dedicated for my mugs. And that's before I started getting more. But now my parents have like a little bookshelf kind of thing. Where they have their Keurig and like the second shelf is full of mugs. And I'm just like, great. Great. <laughs> Let me knee. Oh, there's my mouse. Enter. What are your pronouns? Aww. Um... I use multiple. Let's just go with she, her, it's fine. What would you like your job to be? Oh, I would like to be digital artist. Well, more mugs, a lot of mine broke during the move. Oh no, I'm so sorry. I know that can be difficult. I'm so glad that when I moved here, only one of my cups broke and it was like the Dollar Tree cup, which is fine, it was great. But, I hope you're able to grow your collection again. 
It's finally fall. Summer lasted a little too long this year. The lingering heat was starting to get stifling. Temperatures have cooled down. The leaves have begun to change. Pumpkin spice lattes are back in season. <laughs> wow, just like in real life. Thank the gods because your favorite coffee shop, Webby's Coffee and Fine Teas, has the best pumpkin spice lattes in town. Yeah, you know, pumpkin spice lattes are the most basic thing to be ordered at this time of year. But who can blame you? You've been waiting all summer for this. Just one pumpkin spice could be what stands between you and the coziest autumn of your life. Or something like that. True. Webby's is nested between a record store and a bread bakery. And it's the perfect spot for you to get some work in. You have your drawing tablet with you, and the cafe has always been one of your favorite spots to work on art commissions. You've got quite the queue lined up, so it's best to get busy. You walk into the cafe, your senses are immediately filled up with the smell of espresso, and the sound of milk being frothed at the steaming wand. There's a small group of people chatting in the corner, seated comfortably in some lounge chairs. It's all so familiar. You're honestly here a bit too much. Yeah. Relatable. The line for the register is short. It's your turn before you know it. Oh. Oh my god, how do I say that name? Bru Brulkia? Let's go with Brulkia. Hey, good to see you, Anemone. Good to see you again. Good to see you too, new hair? Yeah, I did it last night. Wanted to try something new, you know? It looks good. You picked a good color. Lavender looks great on you. Haha, <laughs> thanks. I think you'd look totally sick with some new color, too. You think so? I've never really thought about changing it up. You should go for it. What color would you like... What color would you do if you did? Um, obviously. Something bright and fun. I wonder if I can do it without the mouse, just keyboard. I think that would look great on you. You should definitely give it a shot. I would love to see it. Maybe I will. I'll have to work up the courage first. Well, I can't wait to see it if you do. What you getting today? Pumpkin spice latte, obviously. Ah, yes. Pumpkin spice latte. Very season appropriate. What can I say? I have to have at least one before I can really say it's fall. Fair enough. Haha. <laughs> That'll be down at the end of the counter for you in a bit. Thanks, Anemone. Spend a moment looking around the cafe for an open table while Brukia shifts the register to the espresso machine. Your gaze wanders to a little nook you often settle down in when it's not preoccupied, which it isn't right now. When for you? Lemony, I have your latte up here. Ah, thanks, Brukia. No problem. You're careful to make sure the mug is balanced on its saucer before you begin to make your way towards your table on the other side of the cafe. Oh, it's that kind of cafe. I haven't been to a cafe that, like, served your drink in a mug in a long time. It's gonna be so cute. I know, right? I love... Some of the reviews don't like the backgrounds because they're, like, blurred photos. But I think it really gives it more personality. It's really cool. Cinnamon dusted whipped cream sitting on top of the latte bobs as you move across the room. It's a bit quieter over here in your corner. It's perfect as it always is. You pull out your laptop, it's time to get to work. Wait, your latte! You absolutely have to have some before starting anything. It's critical to get in the mood first. You gingerly pick up the mug and lift it up to your lips. It's aromatic and sweet. It's aromatic and sweet. And the first sip you take is so warm and full of flavor that you almost pass out on the spot. <laughs> you ever had a coffee that's so good you almost pass out? Brilkia makes some of the best lattes, and this one is no exception. I enjoy the aesthetic of the background. I miss cafes with actual mugs and pastries. Yeah. The cafe that I go to downtown, they have pastries. I d obviously, they don't make them in there. It's downtown. But, like... They actually have pastries from, like, an actual bakery. They're really good. I love that. But yeah, like, a place with actual mugs. That'd be, that'd be pretty expensive, though, too. 
Boot up your computer, fueled and ready to begin work. Oh? Couple hours have gone by and you've made significant progress on your project. You're nearly done with one of your commissions and it looks awesome, obviously. Just a couple more finishing touches and it'll be ready to be sent to the commissioner. Your latte is down to the dregs now and you're half tempted to get another one. But you might start shaking if you drink any more caffeine today. <laughs> Relatable. Might as well start wrapping up here. Can't think of a cafe I went to in Mexico that didn't have mugs. Yeah, that too. When we went to... There's like a really cute breakfast restaurant in one of the malls in Mexico. I was about to say a city. <laughs> but there's a really cute breakfast restaurant. And they have mugs, and they have cutlery, and they have everything. It's so cool. I love going there. Might as well start wrapping up here. You start to pack up your things. Your coffee mug is supposed to go in one of the dish bins by the trash cans near the door to the back patio. So you shoulder your backpack, make your way over there. You set your cup down in the dish bin gently as to not disturb the other dishes stacked in the bin. Then turn to leave just as someone comes in from the back patio and... Oh! <laughs> you collide with them, stepping on the tips of their shoes. For a moment, it's just a twist of limbs as the both of you try not to fall over. And it's then that you feel the icky soak of iced coffee all over the front of your shirt. Oh no! <laughs> this is a boy, by the way. The other person swears under their breath. Um, apologize. Oh, oh shit, sorry! <laughs> the other person's fingers have iced coffee dripping from them. They look at you with a mix of emotion on their face. I feel so bad. <laughs> a plastic cup that had formerly housed their iced coffee is bent up in one hand. Ah, no, that's my fault. They look like they're at a loss here. Your shirt is only getting soaked by the second, and honestly, it feels really gross. Melted ice is starting to pool at your feet. There's another beat of silence. Sorry. It's okay. You're sort of lying. This is a really nice shirt. You're gonna look pretty stupid walking home like this. There's some napkins over by the... They're moving away before they finish their sentence, casting a look at you over their shoulder as they go. You're left standing by the back door with droplets of iced coffee dripping, slipping down your sternum under your shirt. Oh no, I hate that. You see, kind of smells good. A little bit like cinnamon. The stranger is coming back with a bunch of napkins in one hand. Their brow is pinched tight when they come it to stand in front of you. They seem to be conflicted between handing you the napkins and dabbing at you themselves. <laughs> because their hand is waving awkwardly between the two of you. You just decided to take some of the napkins from them and fruitlessly attempt to sop up what your shirt hasn't already. Sorry. I already said it's okay, trust me. But you're... Sure. Nothing a run in the wash machine. Washing machine won't fix. You're trying to convince yourself as much as you're trying to convince them. They don't appear to be particularly convinced. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. There's an awkward moment of silence as you... Uselessly try to clean yourself up. They're just staring at you. But when you look up at them, they look away. Embarrassed. I'm, I'm gonna get another coffee. You do that. <laughs> Once again, you're left alone by the back door. But this time, the stranger is over by the register. Talking to Brokia with the most resigned posture you have ever seen. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> it would be a bit funny if it weren't for the way the ice and coffee on the floor is starting to seep in your shoes. Oh well. It is what it is. You spend your entire walk home chilled to the bone. Your wet shirt doesn't seem to dry at all in the 15 minutes it takes to get to your doorstep. It feels like the cool autumn breeze froze your shirt instead of drying it. You're not even sure what you're going to do if the iced coffee stains the fabric. You'll deal with it once you do laundry. For now, you're just focused with getting into the apartment, to your apartment, changing clothes, and taking a nap. Ah, 
Ah, yes, the dawn of another week. It's time to start crunching on some more of your work. You can't keep your clients waiting forever, even if you really do want to stay snoozing in bed for the rest of the week. With not much ceremony, you drag yourself out of bed, begin to get ready to leave to go to Webby's. Which seems to be the only place you can get work done these days. If you try to do anything at home, you just know that you're going to end up turning on the TV, watching the shitty reality TV show you've been addicted to lately. That's true. It only takes 45 minutes to get showered and dressed for the day, and collect your things from your desk. Put on your backpack, then leave your apartment, and begin to make your way to the coffee shop. It's another nice fall day. Not too hot, not too cold. Changing leaves are starting to... Are you starting to collect in piles on the sidewalk, and your feet crunch on them as you walk? You can see the morning rush crowd inside. Webby's from outside... What? You can see the morning rush crowd inside Webby's from outside the cafe. Typically, you don't come here this early in the day because it gets pretty busy anywhere from 8 in the morning to about 11. But you need to get at least something done today. You can stand to be around the crowds for a little bit, just so long as you leave with something finished. The coffee shop is filled with chatter when you walk inside. There's a decent lineup by the register, and most of the tables are filled either by people working or waiting. The corner you always like to stay in is occupied, but there's an open lounge chair by a low table. It might be wise to get your drink first, because this line really isn't getting any shorter. But if you wait too long, the seat might be taken by someone who is notably not you. What do you want to do first? Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take my seat first. Go ahead and go over to the lounge chair and claim your place before anyone else does. There's a couple of other occupied lounge chairs surrounding a singular low table. But that doesn't matter. After about an hour or two, the other people sitting here are probably going to leave. You'll have a space to yourself. Mine is relatively long right now, and it'll be a little while before it gets any shorter, so you decide that it's best to start working before you hop into the line. Take your laptop and tablet screen out of your bag, hook them up, and pull up the last commission you were working on. Let's see if you can make a dent in it before you go and get your coffee. You work for about 15 minutes when you notice that the line has begun to die down. There are only three people compared to the ten people that had consistently been up there since you arrived. So you figure that now's probably the best time to go up and get yourself something to drink. But all your stuff is still sitting here. The interior of the cafe is still pretty busy and you're not sure if you're particularly comfortable with leaving all your things just laying out. But on the other hand, the line's so short that you'll be able to keep an eye on things the whole time, the whole time you wait. Asking someone else to do it might be awkward. What do you want to do? I'm gonna... I'm gonna leave my things for a minute. It's fine, I'm sure it's fine. You'll be fine. You've never had your stuff stolen from here anyway. Besides, the register is close enough for you to keep peeking at it while in line. Mine is only a couple people short now, so you step in at the end and get to waiting. After a moment, you move up a couple places in the line. You're not on your phone distracted by something highly amusing on your timeline. Oh, wait. You move up a couple places in the line, but you're on your phone. Distracted by something highly amusing on your timeline. You step just a little bit too far forward, and you step right on the back of the shoes of the person in front of you. Wow, I wonder who it is. Say sorry. You step back quickly enough so that you don't bump right into the back of the person in front of you. The big fuzzy black wings resting against their back twitch at your sudden movement. A fine dust drifts into the air. Ah, sorry. Person looks over the shoulder at you, red foam glasses slipping down their nose. Huh, they are. You're okay. <laughs> There's a beat of silence. A stranger looks over the shoulder at you again, doing a double take. Their body then then turns their body to face you fully. Oh, it's you. Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> we keep bumping into each other, don't we? Try to laugh as naturally as you can. Haha, <laughs> I guess we do. Line moves up and you two move up with it. There's another agonizing moment of silence. Stranger's cheeks color a deep scarlet. 
As I seem to remember the outcome of your first encounter. Oh no. <laughs> Sorry again about your shirt. I hope it is insane. You shake your head. No, I got it. I got to it quick enough, so I didn't. A stranger lets out a sigh of relief. It's kind of funny. What a weird person. What a coincidence. I know, right? Why is this so awkwardly accurate? <laughs> Where's my coffee shop, AU? Oh my god. Let me, uh, let me buy you something to make up for it. Since it was my fault and all. No, it wasn't your fault. It, it was both of our faults, please. You stare at them for a second and start shaking your head again. No, no, there's no need to do that. It's not that big a deal. But it is a big deal. I still feel bad. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let them buy me a drink. <laughs> I mean, what are you supposed to do? You have to let them buy you a drink. Come on. Alright, if you really want to. Oh, the stranger grins, pushing their glasses up their nose. Okay, sick. <laughs> it's only a little while longer until you and your stranger get to the register. And it's there. And it's there you once again find Brukia. She turns to the person next to you first. Hi again, Artemis. Good to see you. A stranger. Artemis, you suppose. Smiles softly. Hey. <laughs> this is so cute. Oh my god. Brokia turns to you next, grinning from ear to ear. How's it going? It's good. Just ready to get some work in today. You and me both. Lucky for me, I only have two more hours of this shift left. Oh, nice. Ah, uh, well, I hope it goes well. Me too. You two know each other? There's a weird silence after Brukia, Brukia's chipper question. Artemis seems embarrassed. <laughs> Not really. Brukia simply nods at the non-answer you give her. She probably gets stuff like this a lot. Cool. Well, what can I get for you today? I'll get a medium black iced coffee with a couple shakes of cinnamon. Brukia keeps nodding as she punches this into the register. Knowing smile on her face. So your usual. Once again, Artemis blushes, self-conscious. Based on what you're witnessing right now, you assume that Artemis is probably here as much as you are. But they're just wise enough to be sheepish about it. Ah, yeah. Yeah, my usual. Awesome. For you, Anemone. I want... Peppermint mocha, pumpkin cold brew, steam apple cider, black coffee, or an espresso macchiato. Well, out of these, I'd probably go with Peppermint Mocha, so let's go with Peppermint Mocha. Peppermint Mocha, good choice. It's pretty popular right now. That'll be $8.05. Wait, are you paying together or separate? There's a pause. Then Artemis speaks up, pulling their wallet out of their back pocket. Together. <laughs> Prokia goes back to nodding, then pushes a couple more buttons to finish out the order. You watch Artemis pay. Thank you. Artem smiles a little. No problem. That'll be at the end for you guys in a bit. Thanks. Both of you move to the end of the counter to wait for your drinks. It's quiet between the both of you. To be fair, you don't think there's very much for you guys to be talking about anyway. So, anemone, is it? <laughs> you look up at them at the sound of your name on their tongue. Oh. It's then you realize how much taller they are than you. They have a couple inches on you for sure. Kind of intimidating. Hmm. Uh, yeah. That's it. Your Artemis? They blush again. Okay. Not so intimidating. <laughs> yeah. I'm Artemis. They stick out their hand, clearly trying their best not to be stiff. You look down at their hand. Their nails are painted with chipped black nail polish. Shake their hand. <laughs> Fist bump their open palm. Should we do that? That'd be so funny. Gonna fist bump their open palm. You lightly angle your fist into their palm instead of shaking their hand. They stare at you. <laughs> you can't help but start to laugh, which makes them crack a smile after a beat. What the hell did you just do? <laughs> Gave you a fist bump, duh. Uh, that's not what I. Whatever. 
Whatever they were going to say is lost when you start to laugh too. They shake their head. Fluffy black hair swinging around their faces as they do so. You're still snickering. Okay, okay, hold on. Let's try that again. Make a fist. <laughs> Holding it out for you to bump. You knock your knuckles against theirs. Both of you dissolve into laughter. It's only a bit longer until the bar is still working. The espresso bar calls out your names and slides two drinks onto the handoff counter. Got a peppermint mocha for Nemini. Black iced coffee with cinnamon for Artemis on the bar. That's us. Before you even think to move, Artemis is already going to get your drinks. Shuffling over to the counter and picking them both up. They bring them back to you, handing you your drink. Take it from them carefully. Thank you. No problem. You linger there for a moment with Artemis, watching them sip at their coffee contently. You hear a phone buzz and almost go to check to see if it's yours. But Artemis hums and pulls their phone out of their pocket, their back pocket and takes a peek at it. This whole time, I've left my stuff on the table. Where, Where is my stuff? What's happening to my stuff? Their red eyes widening. Widen. Oh, I gotta go. Important business. You laugh and they smile at you a little. I'm sure I'll see you around. I'm here way too much. You'll definitely see me around. Oh, well, it was nice to meet you. They're already starting to walk away, lifting a hand in farewell. Nice to meet you too. See you around, Anemone. Someone has definitely swiped your stuff by now. True. True. You watch them stride out of the coffee shop. Fine dust from their wings trailing after them. They walk down the sidewalk, tapping away on their phone on one hand and holding their coffee in the other. You look after them until you can't see them out the coffee shop window anymore. What an interesting person. They're weird. It's kind of refreshing. Go ahead and go back to your lounge chair, where your stuff is waiting for you. Okay. <laughs> you sit back down, set your coffee on the low table in front of the chair. Just like you thought, your stuff is just fine. You've never had a problem here, so you're glad it's just like you expected. Well, that's good. You take a sip of your drink. It's so delicious that it gives you a jolt of energy that you need. You open your laptop, back up, and get ready to work. You can feel it. Jay's gonna be productive. I'm getting more concerned about the cafes in the US. <laughs> God, oh, it's not that bad. Like, if I were to go to the coffee shop that I go to at work... I don't think anything would happen there, you know? It's like bigger places like um, Starbucks or like a Dunkin' Donuts that I would be more concerned about. But like at a local coffee shop, I wouldn't be very on edge about that kind of thing. You know what I mean? Anyone else feel that way? Because I feel that way. After a fruitful week of work, you have $7 to add to your spending fund. You now have $13. Cool. Saturday night, your friend Odina has invited you on a, has invited you on a night out, which is something you haven't done in a very, very long time. You think that she probably has suspected as such, which is why she had asked if you're... And if you're honest, you're quite grateful that she did. You've been working yourself to the bone lately. You're ready to just relax and take some time to de-stress after all the work you've been doing. Athena's sitting on your bed right now, watching you struggle to pick an outfit for your night out. Oh? I think she's so pretty. Like, I love her design so much. Big cities are absolutely that bad, but local places are usually safe, especially in the Midwest. People would be like, hey, that's not yours, don't touch it. Yeah... Yeah, I don't really live in a big city, too. Which is probably why I feel... Safer, I guess. Keep back. Welcome back, Brooke. Yeah, I feel like in the Midwest and the Southwest, people are lo a lot more, like, watching out for each other. It's just from, like, what I've experienced. Because when I was living in Albuquerque, it was definitely like that. Nemini, come on. It's just live music at Webby's. No need to get all fancy. You gesture at Odina's very cute outfit. With a bit of exasperation, 
She's reclining lazily, as if she hadn't told you about the agonizing process that had been her picking an outfit. I at least have to look as good as you do. We have to be on the same level. You'll look fine with whatever you pick, trust me. You just need to hurry up because we have to leave soon, if we're gonna get there in time. You sigh deeply. Alright, fine. You've got three outfits lined up next to Odina's sprawled out figure. She's already given you her approval on all of them. So all you have to do is the hard part, picking which one you actually want to put on. Ooh, I get to pick! <laughs> First outfit is an oversized wheat colored t-shirt paired with rosy pink sweatpants. It's paired with a trusty pair of black combat boots. It has a relaxed, chill look. Oh. Second outfit consists of a poppy orange velvet mock neck. Mock neck, short sleeve, under a gray corduroy strap button-up dress. I didn't like reading that, but I like the descriptions. Because it makes the game more accessible, you know? There's a fluffy petticoat under the dress, and you'd be wearing stockings and platform jeans as well. The outfit has a bit of a casual Japanese Alita vibe. Why does that one get a bigger description than the first one? Okay. We don't even have to pay to pick! I know, right? <laughs> Third outfit has a violet short sleeve coupled with sage wide leg pants. You have a matching oversized violet button up cover and chunky green sneakers to finish it off. This look is bold but comfy. What would you like to wear? I kind of want. Kinda, I, I would wear the first one, like IRL. I'm gonna go with the first one. Pick the first outfit. You can never go wrong with sweatpants anyway. It's a casual outing, so there's no need to go over the top. I didn't know they were sweatpants. Oh no. <laughs> Pick the good outfit. Now put it on so we can get going. If we show up late because you couldn't decide what to wear, I will destroy you. Gods, I'm putting it on. Give me a sec. You begin to strip down. Odita respectfully averts her eyes to the ceiling. Two of you are pretty comfortable with each other, so you don't mind undressing in front of her. You still appreciate the fact that she never ogles, ogles you while you're changing clothes. You look like regular pants. I know, right? They look like pant pants. You've known each other for quite a while. You don't think that it would be that big a deal if she watched you change. But the sentiment is still nice. It's nice to know that she respects you and your body. You get dressed relatively quickly. You cross the room to your dresser to put on some accessories before letting Odina know that you're finally ready to leave. Okay, I'm ready to go. About time! Shut up. <laughs> Odina hops up from bed and smooths out the non-existent wrinkles in her cop top. She follows you out of the bedroom, turning the lights off as she exit, exits and is close and it's close on your heels as you go out the door. Odina's shoes, as well as the shoes you own, Odina's shoes, as well as all the shoes you own, are arranged by the front door, so you take your time in locating the ones that go with your outfit. Much to Odina's chagrin. Wow. You put them on, grab your keys, phone, and wallet, get ready to leave your apartment with Odina right behind you. It's only a 15 minute walk to Webby's. It's the route you know well. You weave through the streets with the practice ease. Odina's not this part of is not from this part of town. Even though she's ha Odina's not from this part of town, even though she had suggested this outing. So he has to stick close by you to prevent you two from getting separated. The fall air is crisp against your skin. The sun is just starting to set, dipping low on the horizon, painting the sky in vibrant blues and oranges. Street lights are turning on, and the roads you know so well feel so much cozier. Odina starts talking about something that happened at her at work today. The walk passes by quickly. Both of you make it to Webby's with little ceremony. It's a bit crowded on the inside, with what well, with the live music and all. And there's a decent amount of people milling about as the musicians get set up for the night. You're actually not entirely sure what kind of music is going to be played tonight. Oh, oh no, I didn't read it. 
On the far end of the coffee shop is the live music setup. It seems pretty robust. Looks like a band is playing tonight rather than just an individual artist. There's a merch table to the left of it, and the tables and chairs have been moved around to give space for all the people standing around. Coffee bar is in full swing. If you wanted, you could get a drink before the music starts. Tina's already looking around for people that she knows aside from you. She always seems to know everyone, so you could talk to her as well before she dips out to explore for a little bit. Could also find a seat. Seems people are starting to settle down as the music is supposed to begin in the next half hour. What do you want to do first? I think... And we'll talk to Odina. Odina hasn't left your side just yet, so you turn to her as you both watch the band set up. How did you find out about this first... How did you find out about this in the first place? I didn't peg you as the type to see live music in coffee shops. What? I love live music in coffee shops. You know, I tend to go to concerts with bigger artists more often. Smaller things are cute too, you know? Plus, I know you like this coffee shop, so I figured that we could make a night out of it. Really happy that you thought of me. I can't believe you remember if this is my favorite coffee shop, though. Adina laughs then, loud and sweet. She always laughs from her belly. Are you kidding? This is the only coffee shop I ever see you at. You're posting pictures of your drinks on your... And your flash pick story all the time. It's hard to miss. You flush without meaning to. Suddenly sheepish. Okay, but in my defense. Can't ever concentrate on my work. When I'm at home. Okay, but in my defense. I can't ever concentrate on my work when I'm at home. I have to be out. And this just so happens to be the best place to work at. There are like three other coffee shops in the neighborhood, Nemini. <laughs> but this one's the best. That's debatable. There's one right by my salon that has absolutely killer hazelnut macchiatos. Now, maybe if you had a car, you could come to that one and visit me while you're in the area. Gods, you know how I feel about driving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it's not economical and you can get into a car accident. She snickers as she says it, making quotes with her fingers. You know she means it lightly and you can't help but laugh along with her. Accidents are scary. If I'm on the bus or in a ride chair, at least I'm not the one getting in the accident. It just makes sense to swear driving off forever. It it doesn't. <laughs> but how are you how are you gonna get a manicure for me? Ride chairs are expensive and the bus takes like an hour to get from to get to my part of the city. Have to come in before my bookings are closed for the month, babe. An hour really isn't that long. Oh my god, for you maybe. Besides, you can give me a quick manicure when we get back to my place, I'm sure. I'm sure I still have whatever you brought over last time under my bathroom sink. Odina looks absolutely thrilled at the statement. She claps her hands together and grins from ear to ear. Yes, yes. You have to do we have got to do this. A new episode of Midwest Singles is also out tonight. We have got to watch it. Ha ha ha, sure. Sure, Dina. Whatever you want to do. That's what I like to hear. Okay, but now I need to use the ladies' room. We'll see you in a bit, yeah? Sure, I'll see you in a minute. Look, I have to buy a drink. You're at a coffee shop. You have to buy a drink. You decide that you might as well get something to drink while you're here. It's not a big line for the register, so you step away from Adina for a second and begin to wait. Oh? Who is this? After a couple moments, you're at the top of the line, standing at the register... Is a barista you don't typically see. His name tag reads Taz. He must be night shift. I like this char I like this character design. I like all of these characters. They're all so cool. Aren't they so cool? Like my OC fits perfectly in here. Hey, what can I get for you? Pumpkin spice, white mocha, hot peach tea. Ooh. Let's get the hot peach 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 tea. Yeah. This guy looks cool. Yeah! Hot peach tea? Cool. Hey, cause of the show, we're getting you out free strawberry scones. You want one? Oh, that'd be great. I've got another person with me, though, so do you think I could get two? Oh, it doesn't matter to me. You have five for yourself for all I care. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> You're not sure whether to laugh or not. Your facial expression didn't change at all when they said that. It was a beat of Taz tapping away in the register. 
and then he turns around to grab his clothes. He looks at you over his shoulder. I'm gonna warm them up and put them out with your drink, okay? Okay, thank you. You go to the end of the counter and wait over there, looking around the coffee shop aimlessly. The lighting is warm in here, and it smells like espresso and freshly baked strawberry scones. The chatter of the crowd over... The chatter of the crowd over by where you're setting up the band is noisy, but not too overwhelming. It's a perfect atmosphere. After a minute or two, Taz bring your, brings your scones and drink to the end of the counter. They wordlessly point at you. <laughs> Then point at your items and step back to <laughs> to walk to the register again. <laughs> That's totally something I would do if I was a barista. Just like, hey, your drink. <laughs> you go over and grab your stuff. This going smells so good. Odin is going to be thrilled. Find your seat. There's a money counter. I didn't even notice it. Might as well go ahead and find somewhere to sit before all the seats get taken up. You find Odina and ask her to help you pick a place to sit. Oh, I got you something. You hold out the plate that has the warm strawberry scones on them. Odina's eyes seem to shine and twinkle. She wiggles her fingers over the plate. For me? <laughs> yeah, for you. They're giving them out for free tonight. Odina eagerly grabs one scone and begins to nibble on it. Sighing with content as she chews. Oh my god, this is so damn good. Maybe you were right about the, this being the best coffee shop in the area. Of course I'm right, I'm always right. Dina laughs and shakes her head a bit. I wouldn't go that far, but maybe you win this one. Adina helps you find a seat further away from the stage, which is just a slightly raised part of the floor. The seats are sort of in a corner. But you're still able to see everything. There aren't as many people here as there are closer to where the band is, so it's nice. Kind of have this area to yourselves. You and Odina share some small talk as you nurse your drink. The scone goes perfectly alongside it. The show begins soon. Okay. You and Odina thin chat for about 10 minutes. Then you hear the sound check begin to start. I'm just starting! You direct your attention over the small stage. There's someone standing at a keyboard and a drum pad. There's someone else tuning a bass guitar. <laughs> You're so distracted by the dissonant sounds for a moment. You almost don't realize when Artemis steps on a stage with the guitar slung across them, tapping the mic on the grill. Ooh! Holy shit! Hey guys, thanks for coming out tonight. What? What? What are we holy shitting about? I'm sure we all know by now, but we're Point Pleasant. And we're gonna play a couple songs off our new EP, Terra. I know them! Oh my gosh, no you don't. Yeah, I do, I swear, we met here. <laughs> they spilled coffee all over me! I'm Artemis, I play guitar, and I'm lead singer. Nicole is on bass and does backup vocals. Ooh. Snake, I love it. Hi everyone. Now we've got Kuro, Kuro on keys and drums. Although our drums are in a little electronic device for tonight. Ooh, a little, a little Oni. I love it. Hey, if it works, it works. Well, wow, well, I almost wish I would have told you about them beforehand, because I'm sure I missed out on some gossip. OMG Snaker, I love. I know, so cool. It's not really much to say. We only met twice. With that, uh, enjoy the show. There's a decent smattering of applause. Whatever Odino is going to say next never leaves her mouth because Artemis is turning around to their bandmates to say something and then the music starts up crisp and clear. The music... What? The music has a big alternative pop feel. Full of catchy key riffs and gritty bass lines, Artemis has quite the singing voice. You're not really sure what they're singing about in most of these songs that they play, but the way Coley's tender voice underlays theirs at certain parts of some songs almost gives you chills. Before you know it though, it's already over. It was a 30 minute set, but it felt like 10. 
People are already starting to filter out of Webby's from both the front door and the back patio. But there's a decent cluster of people up by the stage and the merch table. If you want, you can check out the merch table and see what they've got. Odina also looks like she's got a bunch of things to say. You should can talk to her too if you feel like it. Alternatively, Artemis is talking amongst people up by the stage, so you can say a thing or two to them. I think I should talk to Odina first. Dina's basically dancing where she stands, her long blue hair bouncing as she moves. She was singing along with most of the songs the band played during the whole set. So it leaves you to So it leaves you to wonder where she knew of this band before she had even thought to invite you tonight. So did you know this band before tonight? Odina doesn't look like she registers what you're saying at first. And it takes a couple minutes of her staring at your face her to process what you said. Oh, oh yeah, I'm pretty good friends with both Kuro and Kolio. I've never met Artemis though, so it's funny to me that you know them. You know that Adina has popular, it's popular, but wow, sometimes it blows your mind when you think about just how many people Adina seems to know. She could probably point out at least seven people in the room tonight. Kolio is the one who told me about the show. She mentioned it to me offhandedly. To be honest, I didn't know she and Kuro had a band together, but like, it's cool, isn't it? I think they're pretty good. What do you think about the show? I thought it was pretty damn good, but I think I'm biased. I've been streaming her music for the past week and a half. Thought it was awesome. I love alt pop. It was good, but my kind of music, it's kind of music of my thing. I love alt pop. Ah, uh, me too. It's basically my favorite genre, so I'm so happy you like it too. Maybe I can try to see if there are more concerts like this that we can go to. I'd love that. Yeah. Odina claps her hands together. Ecstatically, obviously stoked. Awesome. Maybe I can... Maybe I can see if we can go to something a lot bigger. Damn it, now you've got me all excited. You're gonna have to give me a minute. I have to go... I've got to look at the ticket sales for this one concert I've been thinking about going to. Haha, <laughs> alright Odina. I... Do I wanna... <laughs> I'm so scared. I'm so scared to talk to him. Okay. Check out the merch table. Ooh. You head over to the merch table, interested to see what kind of stuff they're selling over there. At the table stands an extremely well-crafted and lifelike clay golem. It's kind of bizarre to see around these parts. On the table surface is an array of items. Stickers, buttons, and t-shirts. You approach the table, the golem sort of hums. If you see anything you like, let me know. Its speech is halted and slurred, but surprisingly coherent. You don't think you've ever seen a golem this sentient before. It's a bit disconcerting. Sure, thank you. What do you want to buy? Wait. I love all of this. Should I try to buy the t-shirt? What if I try to buy a t-shirt and I don't have the money? <laughs> what? What if I... Can I buy a t-shirt? Y'all think I should buy a t-shirt? <laughs> I'm gonna buy a sticker. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> should I buy the t-shirt? Should I try to buy the t-shirt? I think that might be- I think that might be too much. <laughs> you only have nine dollars! I know! But like... Okay, we'll buy- we'll buy a sticker. You wanna buy a sticker? That'll be two dollars, please. And the golem two wrinkly ones from your wallet. It takes it- it takes it with its sticky clay fingers and deposit it- deposits it in a- What? <laughs> then deposits it in a long lockbox next to all the merchandise. You take the sticker from the table. It now belongs to you. Nice. We're only gonna buy a sticker. I- I think it's too much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Have a good night. Oh god, I have to talk to them. I have to talk to them! 
you decide to say hi to Artemis, which you hope isn't awkward considering you've only ever encountered them twice. And both of those times have been in the past week. You're sitting on top of a table near the stage, talking to some other people, but it sounds like a conversation is nearly over. You hear Artemis say goodbye to whoever they're talking to. Those people start to walk away. Now's your chance. Hesitate for just a moment before going over. Artemis is sitting there, swinging their legs and staring off into space, <laughs> humming along to whatever music is currently playing over the speakers. Uh, hey Artemis. <laughs> Artemis startles and looks around for a bit. Then their gaze settles on you, their red eyes bright behind their glasses. A small smile stretches across their lips when they recognize you. Oh hey, Anemone, right? Yeah, it's me. Wow, I wasn't expecting to see you here tonight. Well, I did say I'm around here way too much. Artemis laughs at that. They swing their legs a couple more times and hop down from their seat at the table to stand in front of you. So did I. Glad you came, though. I can definitely say I'm pleasantly surprised. What do you think of the show? Their eyes are gleaming when they ask this. It looks like they genuinely want to know what you thought about their performance tonight. They smile. It was really good. You can sing for sure. Artemis blushes a deep scarlet and tugs on locks of hair that had fallen onto their forehead. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. Do you play a lot of shows? Now that I'm looking at you, you don't seem the type to have a band. Oh, you do seem like the type to have a band. Why can't I read? If possible, Artemis seems to grow even more bashful. <laughs> do I really? Band's sort of a neat thing. Just a little side gig. Well, the three of us figure out the rest of our lives. This is our sixth show? But the other five were in house parties, so I don't think that counts. No, they totally count. If people are watching it, I definitely think it counts as a concert. Yeah, I guess so, haha. Coley is trying to arrange for us to play some bigger show soon. Apparently it's hard to get into contact with serious venues when we're such a small group. Sounds like Coley is the ringleader of a band even though Artemis is the lead singer. The more you hear about her, the more you're convinced that she's the one running this whole operation. <laughs> Artemis is still talking, their gaze drifting up to the ceiling thoughtfully. I suppose I wouldn't be mad if we kept playing at house parties and coffee shops since the band is a side thing anyway. Don't really have much else going on in my life, so it would be cool to see where this thing goes, you know? Artemis fixes their eyes on you, then... Artemis fixes their eyes on you, then. And it kind of startles you. You were paying attention to what they were saying, but now you forgot what you were going to say. It's just weird to think about my life in the grand scheme of things. It would be cool to have this as a big part of my life, but at the same time... There are so many other things that I want to explore. Does that, make, does that make any sense? I feel like it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> There's a pause. Artemis seems to realize that they're rambling now. They begin to blush again, and then quickly look away. My bad. Not really sure why I'm telling you this. <laughs> it's okay, I think what you, may, what you said makes sense. You're a really interesting person, you know that right? I get it, I feel the same way. <laughs> <laughs> like... Why do these... Oh my god, my voice is cracking. Why do these characters talk exactly the way that I talk? <laughs> Why? Literally. You're a really interesting person. Artemis opens her mouth to speak, but then doesn't. There's another beat of silence. Mood. <laughs> Gotta redeem hydrate, thank you. I'll hydrate again. You're starting to feel like you made it awkward, but then Artemis kind of smiles. Tugging on that piece of hair again. You think so? No one's ever said that to me before. Take a minute to choose your words before speaking. Yeah, I think so. I've never met anyone in a band before, so I think you've defaulted to really interesting, regardless of what we talk about. Artemis snorts a little. They tilt their head and look at you in a way that sort of makes your cheeks heat. There's a pause, and then they smile. It's a soft one. I try my best to be interesting from now on. It's quite an expectation to live up to. <laughs> it's a moment before you realize that Artemis is implying you'll see more of each other. Ooh, ooh woo, ooh woo is right. Realistically, there's no way you won't. 
considering how both of you haunt Webby's like apparitions with unfinished business. <laughs> There's a very comfortable silence in between you two for a moment, then Artemis speaks again. No, maybe we should hang out sometime. You seem cool. Ah, <laughs> well, I try my best. Artemis goes back to tugging on that lock of hair resting against their forehead. Do you have flash pick? Takes you a second to realize that they're asking you for their flash pick account in order to get into contact with you later, to theoretically hang out. You haven't given someone your flash pick handle in ages. You're kind of bad at checking it, but you can always make an effort. Or you can just give Artemis your number which you're more likely to check, but that almost feels too personal, especially considering that you've known Artemis for all of three conversations. What do you want to do? I'm gonna give you my phone number. I have flashback, but I literally only check it once every three weeks. I have my phone number instead if you want it. Artemis kind of stares at you for a second, and then their brows raise and they seem to register what you're saying. Your mouth forms a little- oh. Oh, IRL. You just owed. Oh, man. And suddenly, they're digging around in their pockets for a piece of paper. Probably. You just give me your phone, you know? <laughs> Artemis pauses and nods. You're right. Besides, I never carry scraps of paper in my pocket, so I'm not even sure why I'm looking. <laughs> you know why this is so funny? Because I've literally been in this situation. <laughs> I can't. Oh my god. You laugh a bit, then take your phone out of your back pocket to hand to, hand to Artemis once you've unlocked it and opened a new contact. They type away on your phone for a second and hand it back to you. Artemis Scarberry. Contact reads their number is under it. So you quickly shoot them a text saying that it's you. Send a text. Don't forget to message me back, alright? I won't, I promise. Kuro has my phone, but when I get it back from him, I will. Put your phone back in your pocket, and you and Artemis change some more small talk before Dina comes bounding over, her hair a wave around her. No, neither you are. You turn from Artemis, shooting them something like an apologetic glance. Artemis smiles and shrugs. Sorry to interrupt, but if we don't leave now, we're gonna miss the premiere of the new Midwest Singles episode. There's a pause, then Artemis starts to laugh. They're trying to hide it, but not trying very well. Don't laugh! Midwest Singles is actually really good! Just that statement sounds ridiculous. You begin to laugh, too. Odina stands there, staring at the both of you, then shakes her head with her lips quirked up. Okay, fun's over. Say goodbye to your new bestie, because I have got to see who Kiana ends up choosing tonight. Dina comes over and places her hand protectively on your arm. And that almost sends you into another fit of laughter. I guess this is it, Artemis. Don't be so dramatic. <laughs> I'll, see you I'll see you later. I'll be here as always. As always, don't forget to message me back. Dina's already beginning to drag you away. Artemis waves, grinning, you wave back. I won't. Wow. Odina spends the entire walk home chatting your ear off about her Midwest Singles theories. You're not that big of a Midwest Singles fan, but Odina often gets you to watch the episodes with her, so most of you, most of what you know is about it about it is because of her. She's talking about someone, something regarding Kiana and her latest feud with fellow castmate Kathleen. Apparently, the two of them are fighting over this guy named Peter. It goes over your head. You missed this episode, but Odina is determined to catch you up on all the current Midwest Midwest singles drama. After working hard this week, you have eleven dollars to add to your spending fund. You now have eighteen dollars. I can buy the T-shirt now. <laughs> I can buy a T-shirt now. You and Artemis have been texting on and off all week. They're a really cool person, kind of awkward and stilted at times, but they have a lot to say. And a lot to do, apparently. Honestly, it feels like they have hundreds of hobbies that preoccupy them. Not even particularly sure if they have a job or not. <laughs> Me. You often just hear about them being roped into things with Kur Kuro and Kolio. 
about them and their new jigsaw puzzle fascination about them going around town with the camera. They do so many things, it's almost hard to keep up with them all. Your schedule and their schedule are on opposite ends because of this. They always love doing things at ungodly hours of the night, while you're trying your best to be productive during the day. Despite this, both of you managed to arrange a time to get lunch. This is exciting for you! I haven't really hung out with anyone new in a long time. The last person you became friends with was Odina, and she's taken up all your time since you first met. Not that you're complaining, though. So you think it's going to be fun to get to know more about Artemis? Two of you plan to meet at Webby's just a little after noon. Then go to this vegetarian restaurant Artemis suggested to pick food up. There was, a, there was talk of you two eating in the park, but you're not exactly sure if that's happening or not. It's a really nice day out today, so you don't, so you don't, so you don't think you'd mind if Artemis brings it up again. You're sitting in Webby's, waiting for Artemis to show up. You're scrolling through your social media feeds, but the smell of the coffee coming from the espresso bar is kind of tempting. You could go and get yourself a coffee if you want, but if you're still getting food later, but you're also getting food later. I don't know if I want the coffee. I don't think I need the coffee. You don't need it. Eh, you're gonna be getting food anyway. Might as well save your money while you're ahead. You can always get your coffee later, especially since you're around here so often. Artemis shows up five minutes later, breezing into the coffee shop with the ever-present trail of wing, wing dust floating behind them. Nemini, hey, sorry for being late. Not that late. I've only been waiting here for like 10 minutes. Stand up. Artemis looks down at you. You always forget how short you feel next to them. All of their height is in their legs, and it makes you feel rather small despite, despite your best efforts. Okay, so where are we going? Both of you begin to head out. Rukia is out in the cafe, wiping down some tables, and both you and Artemis wave goodbye at her as you walk out of the building. She waves back. The autumn air is crisp and cool when you step outside. The sun is shining in full force, only occasionally obscured by puffy clouds drifting around in the sky. It's perfect weather for walking. Restaurant is called Cilantro. Oh my god. <laughs> that name. It's only a couple of blocks away. Hopefully you're not adverse to walking. I walk most places. It's cool with me. I don't have a car, you know? Artemis looks at you for a second, then grins a little. Oh, me either. Never learned to drive either. <laughs> Never learned to drive? I know, I'm, I know, I'm like, grown. You'd think that I would know how, but I honestly don't see the point or the appeal. Because I don't think I can be trusted behind the wheel. You laugh. You're trying to keep up with Artemis as they walk. Their legs are long. So is their stride. You're almost struggling to walk alongside them. At least you're aware of it. Right? I'm proud of myself. <laughs> They're obviously joking because the smile that tugs at their lips then is so crooked and dorky that you can't help but smile a bit yourself. Proud of you two. Big steps. How about you? Oh, don't you have a car? Can't drive either, to be honest. I never really saw the need. I really can't really afford a car. I definitely cannot afford a car if I only have $14 to my name. I know how to drive, but money's too tight to invest in something like that. Oh no, yeah, I totally get that. A car is a really big expense. You've got gas, insurance, maintenance, it's way too much. Easier just to spend it on coffee, you know? <laughs> so true. The way they grin at you, then ha- The way they grin at you then has the corners of your mouth twitching up. I also can't drive no money. <laughs> Man, my parents pay for my car. I feel so bad, but, like, I need a car. Like, I live in such a weird city that, like, I need a car to get anywhere. The way they grin at you, then has the corners of your mouth twitching up? Yeah, way easier. A small talk you and Artemis share as you walk to the restaurant is comfortable. They're really easy to talk to, which is awesome. You're just glad that the awkwardness... That typically comes with hanging out with people for the first time isn't there. Artemis talks to you like they've known you for years. 
Okay, so the restaurant is just on the right here. Two of you turn a corner and cross the street. Then Artemis skips in front of you to lead you to the storefront. They hold the door open for you. Aww. They usher you in with an excited wave of their hand. That looks cute. It does. Thank you. You're welcome. The restaurant is a bit chilly inside, and you feel goosebumps begin to break out on your arms. Aside from the temperature, the establishment seems pretty empty at this time of day. There's only one person ordering at the counter, and the other three employees out on the floor are just smiling about... are just milling about talking to each other. It's a cute place, though. All decorated with whites and blacks and browns. Music. Pop music softly plays over the speakers. Okay, I know it doesn't look like much, but I swear it's one of the best places in town. I trust you. If it's bad, though, I'm gonna hold it against you for the rest of our lives. Ornaments laughs then, their eyes squinting into crescent moons. Sure, sure. I hope that's not gonna be the case. You know, it won't be. Since you're not very picky when it comes to food, but it's still fun to tease them. Two of you hop in line. The person in front of you is still ordering, so it gives you t gives you a chance to look over the menu before deciding what you want to get. You have a lot of different options, but a couple of choices stand out to you. What do you want to get? Burger, chipotle mayo veggie burger, mushroom pesto pasta, cilantro lime rice and black beans. Whatever Artemis is getting. I want the burger. Chipotle mayo veggie burger sounds really good. It comes with tomato, cucumber, and a mix of leafy greens on house-made wheat bread. Just as you decide what you want to get, you're up next at the register. Hey, what can I get for you today? I'm gonna get the chipotle mayo veggie burger, please. Cashier nods and punches some things onto the register screen. They look at you, then slide their gaze over at Artemis, who's standing right next to you. You guys together? You guys forget that people ask this question. I... I feel bad. <laughs> I feel like I have to pay for my own meal, right? Like, they already bought me a coffee last time. I'll pay for my own meal. Oh no, we're not together. Cashier nods their head again. Taps on a couple more things on the screen before looking back up at you. Okay, so I mean $12. You can put your card in the reader down there when the screen changes. Finish the transaction, the cashier hands you the receipt. You step to the side and Artemis takes your place in front of the register. They order pay and before you know it, you're sitting down in one of the booths waiting for food to come out. You and Artemis once again make easy small talk for the next 15 minutes as you wait for your food to be ready. Artemis is in the middle of rambling on about some sort of collection they impulsively started when one of the employees behind the counter calls out to you. You and Artemis are the only ones in the restaurant right now. Hey guys, got your stuff packed up in the counter when you're ready. Artemis springs to their feet so quickly that their glasses slide off the tip of their nose. You're closely behind them as they go over to the counter and peek inside the paper bag. Oh my god, it smells so good in here. Let's go before I become absolutely insane looking at everything. <laughs> ha okay, let's go then. Artemis looks up at the employees behind the counter. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Did you have a good one? Artemis hoists the bag into their arms and steps in front of you to push the door open for you with their back. Oh. It's also you thank them as you pass through and they nod their head at you with a smile. Two of you sort of stand outside the restaurant aimlessly for a second. So, where to now? Well, I'm hungry. There's another pause. Well, yeah, that's why we got lunch. What do you mean you're hungry? Do you want to go to the park? I remember you saying something about the park over text. Oh, oh yeah. I did say something about the park, didn't I? It's not too far from here, is it? No, I think it's only like two and a half blocks. It's close enough. Artemis takes a moment to mull this over. They don't move for very long, because shortly after you finish speaking, they're already shaking their head, yes, emphatically. Okay, let's go. I'm sure we can find... I'm sure you can find a place to sit down at the park. Okay, give me a sec. 
Hang on. Okay. Had to do something. Um, two of you begin to walk towards the park with you leading the way. After a couple long seconds, Artemis starts up again about the collection they'd been talking about inside of the restaurant. They've been trying to collect nickels for some reason. Nickels from every year they can find. Okay. <laughs> I passed the test though. That's good. I feel like it at least passed the driving test. Just like, regardless, you don't need a car. But like, you probably need to a license. <laughs> that looks so cute. It is so cute. What about quarters? Exactly! Like, quarters are so much easier to collect. There's more- there's more variations of quarters. Why nickels? I know! Why? <laughs> They're just so quirky. And cute. You listen to them as carefully as you can, as you direct the both of you to the park. How fast Artemis walks, with you desperately trying to catch up despite the fact that you're the one leading the way, to arrive at the park in no time. You entered from one you entered from one of the more secluded side entrances. So there aren't as many people as there typically would be. You're trekking on a thin path through a thick cluster of trees. You can hear the food bumping around inside of the bag Artemis is carrying. You've stopped talking now, just observing the lush greenery surrounding you as both of you walk along the worn trail. Trees open up in a clearing that's dotted with several unoccupied bark benches. It's quiet, and no one's here except for the two of you. Birds are singing in the trees surrounding the clearing. The sky is bright and blue above you. You don't realize that Artemis is standing in the middle of the path until you've already seated yourself down at one of the park benches. You expect them to be right behind you, but when you look back, Artemis is just looking around the bag, the bag of food in their arms, taking everything in. Aww. You good? Artemis seems to take a second to register what you said. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Just don't think... I just don't think I've ever been here. It's really pretty. They're walking over now, their long legs carrying them over much faster than yours ever could. It is. If it wasn't so far away from my place, I would be here all the time. It's always so quiet. Not many people are ever on the side of the park. I like it. We should come here again. We should. We should come here again. <laughs> you find yourself liking the way they say that. You smile. And pat the spot across from you at the table. Come sit. They do, setting down the bag in their arms and begin to take out what's inside. Hand you the container that holds your food. Then set some plastic utensils and napkins on top of the lid. Thank you. Artemis hums in response. They take their food as well. Take their food out as well. And fold the empty bag down and tuck it under their container. You assume they do this so that a stray breeze won't carry it away if one passes through the clearing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two of you begin to eat in silence. The chipotle mayo veggie burger you got is absolutely delicious and really filling too. You know just how hungry you actually were. After a bit, Artemis speaks. It's good. It's really good. Thank you so much. No problem. Just happy you like the place I picked. There's another content silence. The both of you are chewing. You know, I feel like we don't know much about each other. This has you pausing. You slowly finish chewing. Swallow before speaking. Yeah? Yeah. So, let's play a game. <laughs> a game? Yeah. You ask me something, ask me some questions, and then I'll ask you some questions just to get to know each other better. Veggie burger. Not veggie sandwich. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Veggie burger. It's a burger. It's not a bun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Questions? Mm -hmm, okay. Sounds like a good game. I'll have to think of what I want to ask you first, though. To your time. What do you want to ask Artemis? <laughs> Not this. What do you mean? <laughs> I think it's cute. If it's, like, a person that you're comfortable with. But, like, if it's not a person that you're comfortable with, just, like, asking questions feels like an interrogation. You know? But this is cute. I think it's cute. <laughs> about the band, ask about their latest hobby, ask about their family, ask about how they like the town, 
what they do for a living. When asked what they do for a living. The sandwich. Oh. <laughs> you know what? I, I would probably get a burger regardless of what it is, you know? Like, if it's a veggie burger, I'll probably get that. I want to try... I want to try all the burgers. Questions are okay unless it's out of context. Yeah. 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 You're gonna ask what they do for a living, because they, they have to have a job, right? Okay, this is embarrassing, because I don't actually do anything. Oh. Holy shit, how are you surviving? Are Miss Cheeks flush? They look up at the sky instead of looking at you. Really not sure. I do odd jobs in favor sometimes, like... Pay my neighbor's siding or mow a lawn or something. Sometimes I'll help out at the library. It's more like a volunteer thing, but one of the ladies that works there really likes me for some reason and puts me on payroll even though I work maybe like twice a week, four hours at a time. I like Beyond Beef Burgers. I haven't tried those. I think there's a place that... Yeah, there's like a burger bar somewhere downtown. I should go. I should go. <laughs> I feel like a volunteer thing. Payroll. I live with two other people, so we're splitting rent anyway, but to be honest, I'm just coasting. Color me impressed. Don't say it like that. I feel like a freeloader. <laughs> They're kind of smiling when they say it, so you suppose you didn't embarrass them too much by asking. Yes, you should. I should! Maybe... Oh my god, I'm gonna have to wait till I get paid. <laughs> I'm gonna ask about their family. Artemis doesn't answer for a while after he asks this. Oh no. Kind of starting to panic once the silence stretches for just a little too long. But then Artemis speaks. I mean, they're my family. Second thought, this probably was a bad question to ask. Sorry, I didn't mean to make you uncomfortable. Artemis shakes their head, shrugs. They move a half cherry tomato around in their salad with their fork. It's okay. Oh no! Oh no! You get the feeling that it's not exactly okay. Shit, you're making a mental note not to talk about this unless they bring it up first. Do you want me to change the subject? There's a pause that lasts a bit. Then Artemis nods. Thank you. Oh my god, I feel bad now. Ask about the band. The band? That's a good question. Man, well, to be honest with you, it's all Colia's idea. The more you hear about Colia, the more you suspect that nearly everything is her idea. All three of us already knew how to play instruments, you know? It just happened that Colia was like, Oh, hey, guys, let's start a band. For, like, fun. They laugh and shake their head, apparently recalling the situation. There's one thing you never do with Colia, and that's say no to her. Kuro has always been weak-willed, so he was the first one to say yes, and I figured that it wouldn't hurt to try it out. Artemis pushes a forkful of sal salad into their mouth and spends a moment chewing thoughtfully. Point their fork at you when they've swallowed. So far, it hasn't been bad at all. Crew and I mostly go along with whatever Colia says. She arranges the venues and the parties. And we go along with it. I love her to death, but even more so because I know for a fact Kuro and I would never be able to do half the stuff she does. It's only like a small thing of three of us. It's only like a small thing three of us do for fun and all. Not sure how long it's going to last, but I'm enjoying it for now. I think that's the most important thing. Okay. We asked about the town. Oh, the town's alright. I think it's not huge, but it's not as tiny as it is where I'm from, which is nice. I grew up in a small town, and this is, like, bigger than a small town? I don't think I would ever consider it to be a city. It's a nice, comfortable size, but I think maybe someday I want to get out of here. They're quiet for a moment, setting their fork down. I'm kinda tired of towns, you know? Everyone seems to know everyone here. And I think I kinda don't like that. Sometimes I think that maybe I want to move out of here and go somewhere where no one knows who I am. Where I can, like, start over. But there's so many people that I care about here. 
I don't think I could just leave like that. They shrug and pick their fork back up, stabbing a couple lettuce leaves in their salad. I don't think I like it here, but at the same time I don't. I don't know, I like it here, but at the same time I don't. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. It, it does. I, I feel that. Artemis laughs out loud when you ask them this. They plop their cheek into the palm of their hand. <laughs> their expression's soft. Because, you know, I have a kajillion hobbies. Yeah, I do know that. Damn, that's a good question. Well, I was telling you before about my new coin collection. It's kind of a mess, but I bought one of those coin, coin collector books. In fact, this is so dorky to talk about. Do you guys want to see my coin collection books? <laughs> do you want to see them, though? I can show you. The two of you share a laugh. Artemis tries to hide their face with their hand. No, no, keep going. I'm interested. Yes. Okay. <laughs> After this chapter. Yes. Okay. It's okay. It's really hard to collect coins. It seems easy, right? Like, all you do is find coins and put them in the coin collector book? I literally just pick nickels out of the change at the store or whatever, and then, like, organize them by mint date in the book. But I always have to stop myself from popping the coins out and using them to pay for bus fare. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh my god, it's Artemis. I've already done it a couple times. My impulse control is non-existent. I think I, I need to find a new hobby. You're done asking questions. Okay, my turn. I only have one question. Only one? Artemis leans across the table towards you. Your expression conspir conspiration conspir conspiratorial. Like they're going to tell you a secret. Yeah, it's a pretty critical question though. You're gonna have to think hard for the answer. <laughs> okay, what's the question? My band's gonna be playing at a party later this week. Do you wanna come? Oh? <laughs> I'd love to come to a party. <laughs> Parties aren't my thing, but I'll come see you for sure. Okay. I'm gonna pick the second one. Parties aren't my thing, but I'll come see you for sure. Any apprehension that was hidden in Artemis' face suddenly disappears as they brighten. Party time? I know, right? Wait, really? Did you think I would say no? No, well, I... Well, I don't know. I'm gonna come, so you don't have to worry about it. Artemis' cheeks go... A shade... A pretty shade of red. I smile at you, obviously a bit sheepish. They draw... They draw a random shape on the table surface with their finger. I'll, uh, I'll see you there, then. Text you the info. Smile back at them, then continue eating. Artemis watches you do so for a second, then dips her head to hide the smile on their face. <laughs> oh my god. The two of you eat in comfortable silence, the sun shining down pleasantly on you. Okay. You have $19 to spend on your spending fund. You have $25, yay! Okay, I'm gonna take a break. I'm gonna show you my coin collection, and then we'll get back to the game, okay? All right. Okay, BRB. Sorry that there's no music. I don't. I don't know what to do about that. The the game is paused.
Hello, I'm back, and I have, oh, I brought M&Ms. Welcome back, thank you. I also want to get more water because I'm dying. This is so much reading. Okay, let me show you. Sorry if you can hear me eating my M&Ms. Let me show you. My books. I have two of them. One of them is the 50 states quarters. And then the other one is the national park quarters. I'm going to show you this one first because I like this one. Ooh. So there's two places that make money. Does that make sense? Yeah. There's two places that make money. <laughs> Philadelphia and Denver is where money is made. So like if you look at a quarter on the part on the side with the face, there's a little D or a P and that's where the coin was made. And these are the state court quarters. Let me see if I can. <laughs> this is so okay. I can't. Okay, if you can look at them, they all have little 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 designs on them. Let me see if I can show you one of them. They all have little designs based on like historical. Well, this one is national parks and like monuments and stuff so like the one for South Dakota has Mount Mount Rushmore can you see it? I don't know if you can even see it <laughs> yeah you can see it right? totally 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 you have one from each place um I don't. There is, there exists one from each place, but I don't have a lot of them. Like, for this one, I'm missing... I'm missing 12. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I'm missing 13 for the parks collection. And then... For the other one, I'm missing like five. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I'm missing like five on this one. I had to sell so many of those books when I was stealing my great great grand's estate. I did not make very much money on them. <laughs> no, yeah, like these are relatively new. If you have um older coin collections, they. They're worth more value the further away from when they were made. is because a lot of these coins are still in circulation, and that's how I've been able to find them. And that's why they don't have a lot of value. But, like, in another 50 years, they're going to have at least a little bit more value. You know what I mean? And this is the state coins. One for every state. Stonks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let me show you. Which one is my favorite? That was one of these that was my favorite. I think. Okay, well, let me show you New York because it's cute. I see, so wait till we reach 100 plus. Yeah, exactly. This is a New York State Quarter. Oh my god, can you... Mm, there. Maybe? I don't know. <laughs> Just look it up yourself. Just look through your pockets and look at your quarters. 
this one I'm missing five. And they're really difficult to find because these are the ones that are starting to go out of circulation. Um, so I hope that I find them or else I'm just going to be very upset. <laughs> okay, back to the game. Go there and then PC game. Okay. Eh, don't mind me. Adjusting in my chair. Eating my M&Ms. I have $25 now. Yay. Let me mute, actually. I always looked at whatever was in my quarters. Yeah! I think it's so fun. You should post the ones you need in Discord so we can help you find them! Kat, that's so sweet. I think I will. Because I made a list of the ones that I needed. And I found a couple of them. Like, this past, these past couple of months. But, I'll post a list later. Haven't been to a party in what feels like forever. Standing outside of the house that Artemis has given you the address to is... Standing outside of the house that Artemis had given you the address to. The absolute swarm of people out of the front lawn kind of has you woozy. have no idea what the inside of the house is going to look like. You can hear the music from the street. Luckily, you're not alone. As always, Odina is with you. She is quite the house party connoisseur. You made sure you dress nice and currently is trying to tug you into the house. I mean, come on. You can't just stand outside in the middle of the sidewalk forever. I definitely can. Come on, at this rate, you're gonna miss Artemis. You feel something twist in your stomach. Ah, right. Artemis. That's why you're here anyway, isn't it? They asked you to come, and they had been so excited when you said yes. You're coming to see them, even though you don't particularly like or frequent parties. And it looked like they really appreciated that. You just hope that you don't pass out in the middle of the hallway while looking for a bathroom or something. Are you coming? Odina's voice snaps you out of your re reverie. She tugs on the hem of your shirt. The one she had picked out for you before you two had left your apartment. Taking a breath and let it out slowly. Yeah, yeah, I'm coming. Odina smiles softly at you. It's reassuring. You love her. Odina lets go of the shirt to wiggle her slender hand into yours and leads you up oh my god Odina lets go of your shirt and wiggles her slender hand into yours and leads you up the pathway into the open door of the house the music is loud you can feel it in the floor there are people everywhere standing around talking drinking dancing it's not as crowded as as you thought it was going to be but there's still a lot more than you expected not even really sure what whose house this is. Artemis didn't say, but it's pretty spacious. The image, I know, right? You think that you still have a while until Artemis band plays. So maybe you can take a look around and see what's up. Dina hasn't wandered too far off, so you can talk to her if you want. You can see if you could try to feel try to get a feel for the house. Trying to find a bathroom would also be a good idea as well. You can see if you can find a good snack in the kitchen. Or, you can just try and find a place to sit for a while. That'll pass the time. What do you want to do? I'm gonna wander around first. I'm gonna wander around. I can't just go straight to the snack table. What do you mean? That's not, that's not socially acceptable. I can't just go straight to the snacks. I want to know how they got this image. I feel like... I feel like they're staged. You know, because, like, they had to have the rights to any of these images to be able to put them in the game. Right? To be able to monetize all of them. So I feel like this is staged. This is literally the developer's friends. Then they're just, like, pretending to have a party so that the developer can take... Take pictures. 
I would go directly to food. I can't do that. <laughs> We're gonna wander around for a bit. You do a little bit of wandering around the house, trying to figure out what room needs to wear. It's a little quieter the further away you get from the living room where the music is blasting. It feels like this house is wrapped around like a maze. You're not really sure what what's what. All the noise and all the people around definitely does not help. This is an interesting picture. After going in what feels like circles, you end up in one of the quieter hallways. You're about to pull out your phone to see if you can text Odina and figure out where the hell she's at now. When someone drums their finger on your shoulder. You violently shiver, whipping around to see who touched you. It really could be anyone since there are so many people here. But why on earth would someone... Oh! Nemedy! <laughs> oh, it's Artemis! You came! A smile on their face is radiant. They're really happy to see you. Honestly, you're happy to see them too. Hug. We're, we have to hug them. You have to. You have to do it. Hey guys, could you dress up and pretend like you're dancing? Yeah. 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 That's, that's totally how it went. <laughs> of course I came. I would have missed it. Something pleasant flickers onto their face. You open your arms for a hug. Artist file grows, and for a second, they're everywhere. You're shorter than them, so they're blending down a little to meet you. It's only a little bit awkward. You don't think you mind. I feel like... I feel like their wings would wrap around me too. Right? Your face is removed. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably it. Right? Wouldn't their wings like also wrap around me? Wouldn't that be so cute? <laughs> Artemis is warm. They smell like cinnamon and fresh soil. Which should be an odd combination. But it's quite nice. You know you have their wing dust on your hands when they pull away from you. But that's another thing you don't think you mind either. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I just, I know you said you didn't like parties. I said I would come though. Yeah, yeah, you did, didn't you? How are you liking the party so far? Really only just got here. I was with Odina, but she vanished off somewhere. Odina is that friend of yours, right? She is indeed. Very close friend of mine at that. Artemis kind of grins when you say that. Seems like she's a very close friend of everyone's. I heard Colia talking about her today. Yeah, oh my god, she's friends with Colia. She knows everyone. I wasn't expecting it. I was. Colia knows everyone too. It's a perfect match. Both of you share a laugh. I'm excited to see you and the others play tonight. Artemis instantly perks up, their eyes sparkling behind their glasses. Oh my god, yes, I'm so excited too. You're finally going to see us in our natural element. Wait, what do you mean? You know, like, we had to tone it down a bit for the coffee shop, since it's coffee shop. Right? You'll see what I mean. Oh. This feels almost ominous. Erdogan smiles at you anyway, and nudges their knuckles against your shoulder. I should probably get going, though. Gotta meet up with Kolia and Kuro before we start the show. Oh, I'll see you in a bit, then. I'll see you. <laughs> okay, let's go to the snack table. Float around the house until you find the doorway that leads to what you can assume is a kitchen. There's a couple of people in here. Most notably a cluster of people talking by the stove. They don't pay you any mind as you peek around the room. Kitchen Island is stocked with snacks of many kinds. There are vegetable platters, char charcuterie boards, and a bunch of bowls filled with chips and crackers. It looks like people have gone to the food before you did, which makes sense. But there's still a lot of food left. You didn't eat anything before coming, so Sodina was rushing you out of the house. So you shuffle over to the island and begin picking out what you want to eat. Could have cleaned a bit for the pick. I think they did it on purpose, because, like, at a party, it's going to be a mess, you know? There aren't any plates, probably to discourage people from taking food out of the kitchen. So you just start snacking. You feel a little silly, especially knowing that the group by the stove can see you acting like a grazing farm animal. <laughs> but the snacks are definitely tasty, and they're starting to fill you up a little. After a while, you're beginning to get embarrassed by how... By the way, you can feel the group of people behind you staring at your back as much as you munch. <laughs> Me at a party, though. You decide to grab some more grape. You decide to grab one more grape, and slink out of the kitchen as slyly as you can. 
We're gonna talk to Odina. Odina hasn't gone very far at all. Seems that she's trying to stay around you to make sure you don't get yourself lost or something. Have you been here before? What? It's loud in here, with the music combined with all the talking and laughter from the people around you. You find that your voice kind of get, kind of gets drowned out. You beg and Odina closer as she sa siddles up to you. You lean in toward her. Have you been here before? It feels silly to be shouting right in Odina's ear like this. She stares at you for a moment for registering what you said. She grins and nods her head. Yeah, I have. Twice, actually. Oh. Really does feel like Odina is everywhere at all times. You're not sure how she does it, but you're more or less convinced that she personally knows everyone in town and has been to everyone's houses and everyone's parties. You suppose that being a social butterfly has its perks. Do you know whose house this is? Odina thinks for a second. You can feel the bass of her music with her stomach after beat. Odina purses her lips and shakes her head no. I think it's a friend of Kolia's. I've only ever come here when Kolia invites me. Carry I keep hearing so much about Kolia. I swear she orchestrates everything. Honestly, yeah, she does. I wouldn't be surprised if she was orchestrating this conversation right now. This talk kind of freaks you out. You know that it's not possible to do to do that anyway. But with the amount of things you hear about Kolia, you don't think that it's too far off. Looks like Odina can see the conflict working through your expression because she looks at you, leans back, and then laughs. Oh my god, you should see her face. Are you seriously believing it? Stop, it was just a fleeting thought. It was definitely not a fleeting thought. I know a fleeting thought from you when I see one. You change the subject before Odina can tease you anymore. How do you know Kolia anyway? You always talk about her. For some reason, this makes Odina's cheeks flush a little. She scratches her arm and leans back in towards you. Well, actually, we went on a date a long time ago, but it didn't work out. We're just friends now. Oh, You what? <laughs> you had no idea that Odina was out in the dating scene? It's either happened before you two were friends or she never told you about it. Which feels hard to believe because Odina literally tells you everything that happens to her at any given point. It was a low-key thing. We didn't click like that. It's nice to be her friend, though. Wow, I had no clue. When was this? Like, maybe two months ago? You guys were definitely friends two months ago. That's crazy. Well, I'm glad you two are friends still. What? Well, that's crazy. Well, I'm glad you two are friends. Maybe it'll work out romantically later on. This makes Odina's face go scarlet. You suspect that she's thought about this at length. Oh. <laughs> maybe. I don't know. I should probably go find her and say hi. I'm gonna get something to drink. I'll see you in a bit, okay? Okay, be safe. Okay, gotta look for the bathroom. For a bit, you decide that you want to find the bathroom. You don't particularly need to use it right now. I have a feeling that you have something stuck in your teeth. You've probably just been paranoid, but it doesn't hurt to take a look to be safe. Do it on the bottom right of the screen. Has some, has some elfy looking ears. Oh man. <laughs> Those are very elfy. <laughs> it's okay. The thing about that is that all of the characters are like non-human, right? But then the pictures, they're all human. So there's a little bit of a disconnect, even though I do like that um, they use real pictures that are like watercolor affected. But there is that kind of a disconnect there. Best bet is to just be amble around aimlessly until you figure out where you're going. Past the main hallway is what appears to be a sitting room. Spacious and seems to be where the band is going to be playing for the night. If the instruments and huge speakers are any indication. Yeah, it's not consistent with the story. Yeah. To your left is a staircase that leads to the second floor. It doesn't look like anyone is going upstairs, though. Considering the steps are filled, people sitting, standing, and talking. You're about to turn around and go back to where you came when you spot not one, but two people that look familiar on the bottom of the stairs. I wonder who. You've only seen them once before, but the writhing snakes for hair and huge red horns aren't something you'd forget. You... 
You worm your way through the people around you to get to the foot of the stairs. I like the style, but it feels like they could have put some effort into the pics instead of grabbing them off a random person's Facebook. I don't think it was a random person, but yeah. They do look like Facebook pics. They, they do look like Facebook pics, but... I don't think they could just take Facebook pics, you know what I mean? Like, just for, like, copyright issues. Coley and Kuro are leaning, lean towards each other, talking, and you feel a little awkward to interrupt. Oh, uh, hey guys. Kuro's the first one to look up at you, and then Coley follows. Has a several snakes staring you straight in the eyes before she even lifts her face. <laughs> oh, they look so done with me. Your stomach kind of squirms. There's a silence. Kuro squints his eyes at you, several different expressions cycling on his face. Kolia is unreadable. Who are you? Okay, this is embarrassing. <laughs> Back of your neck grows warm. I'm, uh... I think this is Artemis' friend. Kolia is mostly friend, mostly talking to Kuro when she says this. But she's looking right at you. They both stare for another moment. Then Kolia addresses you, speaking a little louder. Are you Artemis' friend? I mean, I, yeah, yeah. I'm Artemis' friend. Friends with Odina, too. Kolia looks at you really hard then. It feels like her snakes are doing the same. Is it true that gorgons could turn people to stone? You think you're gonna be sick either way. There's another long moment, then you then you analyze looking What? There's another long moment, then the analyzing look on Kolia's face disappears. It's instead replaced with recognition. Oh, Oh, you're an Emini, aren't you? You flush at the sound of your name coming out of Kolia's mouth. Yeah, I'm an Emini. Kolia turns back to Kuro, who is looking at you thoughtfully. Feels like the two of them are scrutinizing you, but you're not not—you're not sure if you like it. You're the one Artemis is always talking about, huh? Oh, oh are they talking about me? <laughs> they talk about me? Here's another silence. Kolia sort of nudges Kuro with her shoulder. It's something sharp in her expression. You don't think you want to dive any deeper into this conversation. Oh. Oh. Oh, it's right. Um. I was wondering if you guys knew where the bathroom was. Oh. Oh? What's that supposed to mean? Browse? <laughs> it's obvious that Kolia and Kuro are on a completely different mental wavelength than anyone else in this party. It's past the stairs and turn right. Thanks. You nod your head once at the two of them and promptly make your exit. Maybe the next time you encounter them, it'll be less awkward. But then again, maybe not. I'm gonna find somewhere to chill out. I thought there was gonna be a bathroom scene. This place is making you remember exactly why you don't like coming to parties. You feel insanely out of your element, and that isn't really a nice feeling. Dina vanished off to God, God knows where. Which is normal. But now you're alone in the middle of this huge party. You're not sure when Artemis is going to start playing with the band. I think that maybe your best bet is going to find somewhere to sit down until Odina finds you. Or until you can definitely tell that Point Pleasant has started performing. Right now it's just all loud dance music and thumping bass. It's a bit disorienting. You weave through the house, ultimately arriving at the back door. It leads out onto the back patio, and it looks like there are several people out here. Not many, since the evening has gotten that autumn chill. But you decide to exit the house and step outside. Oh. The night is crisp and clear. It's a lot quieter out here. There's a couple sharing a cigarette against the patio rail. Two small groups of people sitting on the grass in the backyard, but otherwise, it's just you out there. There are a couple unoccupied patio chairs. You take a seat in one, take a deep breath of the night air. You feel yourself relaxing already. You're sitting out on the back patio for a while. You've been scrolling on your phone and waiting for time to pass. We're not exactly sure how long it's been. Hydrate, thank you. Oh, it's been two hours. Doesn't even feel like two hours. Hmm. 
The smoking... The smoking couple has gone back inside. The group sitting on the grass haven't, and you'd be lying if you said that you weren't eavesdropping on their conversation a little bit. Going through your flashback feed when you hear... Nemini! I've been looking for you everywhere! You turn towards the patio door. Odina is leaning out of it, music loud at her back. How... Why are you out here? You set your phone down your lap as Odina comes out onto the patio, holding a can of what looks like hard lemonade. I just needed some fresh air is all. Oh, okay. Party too much for you? Chew on your lip. Odina settles herself down on the armrest on of your chair. The whole thing's... The whole thing tilts some. No. Odina peers at you. Yeah, a little. Odina sighs affectionately, tapping her can of lemonade against your forehead. Leaves cold droplets on your skin when she pulls it away. My bad. I should have left you alone. It's not your fault. Odina looks down at you, conflicted. Her brow, her brow is drawn tight over her eyes. No, I always end up leaving you alone in places like this. I shouldn't do that. I'm sorry. This takes you by surprise. You have to admit, though. Adina does tend to leave you alone in most social situations. It makes you feel like a fish out of water, but you're never really said anything because that's just... that's just Odina. You've gotten used to it over time, but maybe that's not a good thing. Thanks for apologizing, I forgive you. The way Odina smiles and makes your stomach melt. You're pretty sure you could forgive her under any circumstance. There's a content silence, then Odina speaks again. Do you want anything to drink? I can go and get something if you want. I would like... Whatever Odina has. What are you drinking? Just hard lemonade. I have one of those two, please. Okay, give me a sec. I'll be right back. She gets up from the armrest and disappears through the back door for a bit. You're left alone again. A couple minutes later, Odina comes back onto the patio, holding a can that looks just like the one she's holding in her other hand. She settles back down onto the armrest, handing you a sweating can. It's like you just pulled out... What? It's like she just pulled it out of the cooler. Thanks, Dina. No problem. You know, Dina spent some time... Spent some more time on the patio together. Talking and talking in the fresh air when you hear a voice boom over speakers in the living room. It echoes out of... Out of all the open windows and you can hear it perfectly from outside. Odina immediately seems to forget what she's saying, both of you looking over your shoulder to stare at the back door. How's everyone doing tonight? <laughs> you can hear the cheers from where you're sitting. Oh, it's Artemis. She should probably go in now. Yeah, probably. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gotta, gotta go watch, gotta watch them. You're a little reluctant to leave your peak spot on the patio, but you did come here to see Artemis and their band after all. What's the point of coming to a party if you didn't dance? Dina leads the way back to the house. It's extremely loud and insanely packed in the living room now that Artemis, Kuro, and Kolia are all set up are all set up at their instruments. There are people in the hallways, people standing on the stairs, people crammed into every nook and cranny to see the band at the back of the room. Kolia is playing a sickening bass line, and Artemis addresses a crowd. Kuro is flipping his drumsticks into the air, repeatedly catching them with a the practiced ease. You guys ready to go fucking crazy? <laughs> the crowd cheers again. Holy shit. You weren't expecting the energy to be like this. Coffee shop. Coffee shop show is so different. The red dot. Oh. What? What is that? <laughs> is this what Artemis meant when they said they had to tone it down for Webby's? How much did they expect exactly tone it down? Because this is leagues above what they performed at the coffee shop. Artemis drums a chord on the guitar that seems to shake the room. His first song is called Harbinger. Kuro counts down the song, and then the song starts. All gritty guitar chords and fast drums, and Artemis gravely singing... Oh, there's music. Kuro counts down the song, and then the song starts. All gritty guitar chords and fast drums, and Artemis gra gravely singing voice. It's then you realize that Point Pleasant isn't all pop. 
They're fucking punk rock. The performance is insane. It's aggressive. It's loud. It's every noise at once turned into a single harmony. Artemis sings like the like their life depends on it. Kolia is enthralled in the background. Kuro is tearing up those drums. Everyone is dancing. I think someone spilled something on the top of your shoes, but there's too much going on for you to pay attention to it. After three upbeat electric songs, the band plays a silver one. One that you remember hearing at the coffee shop. Remember the melody and none of the words. But the way Kolia leads into Artemis' chorus has you hooked. The show lasts so long, but simultaneously ends so quickly. It's a blur of music and bodies and dancing. So much, so much, but not enough at the same time. Odina's been right next to you the whole time. You didn't even realize that she was there until everything begins to die down. When the band finally start, when the band finally shouts thank yous to the crowd, and the punk music is replaced with the bumping dance playlist, it's like your ears are stuffed with cotton. Someone grabs your arm. It's Odina. Spill my lemonade! You look at her, taking a moment too long to process what she's saying. After a second of staring, it hits you. Your lemonade? She gestures at the wet tops of your shoes. Ah, I'm sorry. Wait, no, it's okay. Let's just go get another one. But your shoes! You're not sure... You're not sure how many of those hard lemonades that Odina's had. You do know that she's a lightweight, and you can tell that she's just a little bit more than tipsy by the swimming look in her eyes. You grab her by the hand that's not holding the remains of her drink. Blood dry, come on. Two of you weave through the crowd and squeeze through the hallway that goes from the living room to the kitchen. Odina seems to know her way around the kitchen, so once the both of you arrive there, she sets to digging around the fridge around across the room. It's quieter in here. Not a lot of people in here either. Just two or three groups lingering by the island that somehow still is stocked with food to slay into the night. You stand there waiting for Odina to get done rummaging through the fridge. Nemini! Sound of someone calling your name has you looking over your shoulder, eyes wide. There's a beat. And then Artemis bounds up bounds up to you after warming through the people standing outside the kitchen door. You feel yourself perk up. Artemis, the show was incredible. Artemis looks breathless. Their hair mess around their face. Their cheeks are red with the healthy flush. You saw? Their voice is husky, deeper and rougher than it usually is. Probably due to all the singing. It's nice, you think. Albeit a bit shyly. Yeah, of course I saw. I was there the whole time. You're fucking electric. A smile that breaks their face is blinding. I'm so happy you saw it. Gods, this is just... There's so much lemonade! You and Artemis turn to look at Odina, who's bent over the fridge. She straightens, and you see... You see her nearly hit her head on the handle of the freezer door. Oh, did she say there's a lot of lemonade, or there's no more lemonade? I'm gonna give her my lemonade. Here, you can have mine. Wait, seriously? Yeah, I can just get something else later. Dina looks like she's about to start crying, <laughs> which makes you smile a little against your will. You hand her the lemonade. She takes it from you like it's made of gold. Thank you! After Odina's strength the situation is sorted out, you're about to turn back to Artemis to finish the conversation when someone else walks into the kitchen. Ooh. Kolia. Artemis! There you are! Oh! Huh? Oh, hey! Hi, Odina. Hi! Kolia turns to Artemis, but her snakes are still peering at you and Odina. Freaky. We're gonna have to pack up the instruments soon. People are gonna start to fuck with them the longer they're out. Okay, do you want to... Do you want to do that in the next 30? Freaky. Next 30 sounds good. I can help, but I'm not doing anything. Oh, I can help, I'm not doing anything. Kolia smiles fondly at Odina. Odina beams back at her. Sure, that'd be great. Do you want to help Kuro and I pack some things right now? It's not going to be too much work. Odina goes to nod, but then side-eyes you. As if she's asking for your permission. Right, she has just been apologizing for leaving you alone at parties. You, should pre you appreciate her hesitation this time around, but this time you're with Artemis, so you think you'll be okay. 
You can go ahead. I'm gonna be here with Artemis. Tina gives you an enthusiastic thumbs up. Okay, I'll text you in a bit. You got it. You got it. I was about to say you got this. What? She falls into step with Colia. The both of you, both of them leaving the kitchen, leaving you and Artemis behind. What do you want to do with Artemis? Um, <laughs> many things. Ask him if they want something to drink. Do you want anything to drink? Since we're here? Artemis seems to think about it. Probably should get something. I sound like I'm dying. <laughs> this makes you laugh, which makes them laugh too. A laugh is thrilling and warm. You don't... You don't sound like you're dying. You sound like... Like you're old. Like I'm old? Somehow it's even worse. I cannot stand for this. I'm gonna get them something. Here, what do you want? I'll get you something. You pause, recalling Odina's despair at the lack of hard lemonade left. Just not any lemonade. Artemis snorts with laughter. Oh, that's a shame. I really wanted some lemonade. Their tone is... Their tone is... What? Lilting? Their tone is lilting, teasing. You lightly sock them in the shoulders. Artemis grins at you. They shake their hand out of their eyes. They shake their hair out of their eyes. No, seriously, what do you want? Honestly, a water would be great. I drank a shit ton of that punch earlier, and I think I might be sick if I don't drink any water. <laughs> They're referring to the punch in the back corner of the kitchen. It's an alarmingly bright shade of red. The ladle that was set out to serve it is half sunk in the massive bowl. Gross, you can't even begin to imagine what's in there. <laughs> Water's good. Water is definitely better than whatever that is. Actually, not that bad. But I do know that I'm going to end up feeling the the effects of whatever they mixed into it when I leave here. You go over to the cooler sitting on the floor next to the fridge and crouch down next to it. There are a bunch of beers in there, but after sticking your hand into its freezing depths, you manage to procure an ice-cold bottle of water. You get up and present Artemis with it. Thank you. Of course. If you're being honest, you're getting kind of sick of being inside the house. The party's fun and all, but you're genuinely ready to sit out in the back patio again. Maybe Artemis will want to join you? Do you want to go outside with me? I feel like a child asking their friend if they want to go out, s look out and play, but she makes your ears heat embarrassment. Artemis is in the middle of sipping at their drink. When they swallow, they nod. Sure, I think I spent too much time in here. Fresh air would be nice. So much quieter once you get outside. Just like before, you can still hear the music through the walls of the house, but it's fainter. The groups of people that were sitting in the grass before aren't out here anymore. There's a new group playing a small game of beer pong. Someone must have dragged a table out onto the lawn close enough to the patio that the porch light illuminated the game. You settle down the patio chair. It had been sitting in about an hour ago. Artemis drags another chair from the other side of the patio over to you, then plops down in it. Two of you sit in silence for a while. The autumn air is cool. The night sky is clear. So much less stimulating than the entire party. You appreciate that. It was a good idea to take a step back out here. Suddenly, Artemis speaks up. Hey, thanks for coming tonight. You look over at them. The warm patio light Lights cast shadows across their face. Of course, I had a lot of fun. Artemis goes quiet for another moment, tracing some random shape on their thigh. I just, I just appreciate it. Not many people like to come to these shows and stuff. My, uh, my ex didn't even like coming to them. And, I don't know. Just nice that you're here. Oh. Well, I'll come to all your shows as long as you want me to. Artemis looks at you then. Their brow is drawn tight over their eyes. They're biting their lips so hard that their surrounding flesh is going white. Oh no. I would like that. Okay. I promise. You stick out your pinky. They stare at it. After a beat, they crack a smile, exhaling a breath of shaking, shaking their head as if they're trying to clear their mind. They lift their hand, sticking out their own pinky to hook around yours. You squeeze their pinky firmly before letting go. Pinky promise. That's so cute! Oh my god! 
Oh my god. <laughs> After a busy work week, you have $19 to add to your spending fund. You now have $44. Nice. That's so much money. We could buy two shirts. I'm so tired of talking. <laughs> so cute, I know. It's so cute. It's another week. As it always tends to be. It's a warm afternoon. Warmer than it's been in a while. With all of these lower autumn temperatures. They're cautious though. You know that the temperature could plummet at the drop of a hat. You're in Webby's, as you always tend to be. It's become not only your workspace, but also a consistent Artemis meetup spot, which happens to be the case today. Artemis had texted you at one in the morning talking about at one in the morning talking about some sort of surprise outing they wanted to take you on. You'd been half asleep when you received the text, barely able to respond with a properly spelled okay. They had proceeded to send you three more texts with details about the surprise outing, but you passed out before reading them. Meet me at Webby's at three. I texted, also bring spare change. Okay. You had listened to their instructions, or at least all the ones you could remember. You're here at Webby's, just past three. There's a cluster of quarters tucked into your wallet. You're hoping that Artemis hadn't told you something else aside from these things, because you definitely forgot if they did. You haven't been waiting here very long, but the temptation of the coffee bar is poking at your brain. You know you should save your money for whatever Artemis is having the two of you do today, but... I, I kind of want to get the drink. Let's get the drink. Do it. Do it. Coffee addict. Okay, fuck it. Might as well get something while you're here. What's the point of sitting in a coffee shop if you don't order any coffee? You go ahead and stand in the line, pondering what you're going to get. Maybe you can get Artemis something too? I'm gonna get something. I'm gonna get something for both of us. <laughs> because I have to. I have to get them something. Come on. Payback for the drink that they spilled because of me. <laughs> You think that maybe Artemis will appreciate you getting them something to drink. It will make up for all the kindness they've provided you since you met, but it's definitely something. Besides, you think you remember what their favorite coffee is. You don't think you could ever forget after they spilled it all over you a couple weeks ago. <laughs> oh, it's that guy again. Nice shift versus Taz is at the register when you walk up. He's on his phone and doesn't realize that you're standing there until he does a double take. I love his design so much. This is such a cool character. <laughs> I love him. Hey. They move their phone to the side of the counter, pushing their bangs out of their eyes. What can I get for ya? You've noticed that Taz isn't exactly one for small talk. Sweet iced tea, coconut milk latte, latte. What's a doppio con panna? What is that? Does anyone know? Hot chamomile tea. I'm gonna get a coconut milk latte. Coconut milk latte sounds good. Could I also get um medium black iced coffee with some cinnamon powder? IDK? I IDK either! <laughs> Man! Taz not slowly pressing some buttons on the register screen. Yeah. Once he tells you the price, you go ahead and pay. That'll be down at the end for you in a bit. Thank you. Taz nods Id idly in your direction and you go down to the end of the counter. You pull your phone out of your back pocket to keep yourself distracted while you wait, but you're only on it for a minute before Taz calls your drink and Artemis coffee out to the cafe. Gotta Google it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't remember what it was. Topio Campana? <laughs> I think. You go up to the handoff counter and pick up both drinks then go back to the table you were sitting at previously to wait for Artemis you're not waiting for much longer after about 5 minutes someone raps on the surface of the table you're sitting at with their knuckles you look up to see Artemis gazing down at you with a grin 
Hey, stranger. <laughs> hey. Got you coffee. I hope you're not already caffeinated. Artemis' eyes go wide. Their cheeks flush a pleasant pink color, and they smile. Aw, did you? You push the iced coffee towards the edge of the table. They look down at it, sticking their bottom lip out in a pout. That shouldn't be as endearing as it is. Yeah, I did. Black iced coffee with cinnamon, right? Artemis looks like they're going to either start to cry or spontaneously combust. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Thank you. You smile up at them. They shyly smile back at you, face red. You're welcome. It's no biggie. Yeah, no, I have $40. I have $40 in my bank account. I, 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 I bought you a coffee. <laughs> the way they're looking at you definitely shows you that they absolutely think it's a biggie. But they don't say anything else, simply lifting the iced coffee to their lips and taking a long, satisfied sip. They nod happily once they swallow and you feel your smile grow. Get up from your spot at the table and smooth out a few wrinkles in your shirt. Artemis watches you do so. 40. Yeah, 40 now. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. Alright, cool. Let's go. Artemis leads the way out of the coffee shop. With you close on their heels. You honestly have no idea where you're going. So you hope... You hope that Artemis has a clue. The afternoon is clear and bright. The sun barely masked by the clouds. Shines hot down on the sidewalk. You're walking alongside Artemis in comfortable silence for about a minute before your curiosity gets the best of you. You know that the whole afternoon is supposed to be a surprise, but really this is killing you. Where are we going? Artemis casts you a sly smile, their eyes lighted. They take long strides when they walk. It's almost a struggle to keep up. A surprise! I told you over text. Uh, I know, but where are we going? Artemis reaches out and nudges their knuckle against your cheek. You flush and bat them away, trying not to smile. <laughs> told you, it's a surprise. You'll see when we get there. Ah, uh, but I'm so impatient. Get patient, then. <laughs> Two of you playfully bicker back and forth until Artemis stops abruptly in the middle of a sidewalk. You skid to a halt, confused. Oh. When you turn back to them, they simply point at the tall steel sign sticking up from the sidewalk. It's a bus stop. Oh. A bus? Can't drive, remember? We can't drive. You remember, you stifle a snicker. Artemis stares at you, but it... But if the twitching of the corners of their mouth is any indication, they're not as irritated as they try to make themselves out to be. Hey now, I know you take the bus too, so I don't want to hear it. I didn't say anything. I can read your mind anemone. Special Artemis powers. <laughs> you laugh out loud despite your best efforts. Artemis has a crooked grin on their face. Okay, I suppose I'll believe you. You better. They say it as gravely as possible, schooling their face into something expressionless. You sock them in the arm, and whatever lingering seriousness they're trying to hold on to crumbs into a brittle cookie. You're such a dork. They laugh, hair falling over their brow. You laugh along with them, until it lapses into another comfortable silence. Put this back on my lap. You make small talk with them until you can see the bus on the horizon. You haven't taken this line a couple times before. You, you've taken this line a couple times before, but you're not exactly sure what's on this route. One thing you do know is that the bus is $1.75. Luckily, Artemis had you bring spare change, but honestly, you would have brought it regardless. Bus rolls up to the curve, stopping right in front of the both of you. Artemis gestures for you to go ahead of them with a wave of their hand. Oh. You dip your hand in thanks. You dip your head in thanks, stepping onto the bus and feeding your quarters into the coin dispenser. The first machine beeps and you walk down the aisle and find a first pair of seats. Artemis follows after beat. Settling down next to you, the door is closed behind them and the bus begins to rumble down the street. I have no clue where Artemis has you going. You have no clue how long this bus ride is going to take, either. Doesn't seem that Artemis is going to tell you anytime soon, because they're simply gazing down the aisle and out the windshield. 
Maybe you can make the time pass with a little small talk? Okay. Ask for a hint on where you're headed. Ask about coin collection. Ask about their ex. I, I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> ask about their day. Ask about their day. So how was your day today? Artemis looks over at you and smiles. That's a cute question. You flush. <laughs> Stop. Oh my god. Just answer the question. I'm trying to be polite. <laughs> Artemis laughs out loud. Their glasses slipping down their nose. And they tilt their head to the side. A thick lock of their hair falls onto their eyes. Oh god. History. Right? Okay. Return. Yeah, but it's still cute. I gotta say, you've hit my sweet spot with that one. Wow. They are so coy for literally no reason. It's times like these where you think you might hate Artemis. <laughs> Answer the damn question, Artemis, or I'm going or I'm never gonna be polite to you ever again. Oh wow, that's a loaded threat. <laughs> you thump your fist against Artemis' leg in exaggerated frustration. Artemis laughs again. My day's been good. I slept until about an hour before I met up with you at Webby's. Right, they have an absolutely insane sleep schedule. With all the night owl activities they partake in, you're almost surprised that they're not completely nocturnal. That sounds very productive. A crooked grin that Artemis flashes you then is very endearing, even if you don't want to admit it. Hell yeah, it was. Sleep is one of the most productive things ever invented. Never mind, you're already tired of them. <laughs> this is so funny. Ask, ask for a hint on where you're headed. So, Artemis peers at you from over their glasses. They hum in acknowledgement. You smile as charmingly as you can. Can I get a hint? Artemis shakes her head and smiles, amused. No, you can't. You poke Artemis's arm repeatedly. You turn your voice into a pouty whine. Oh, come on, why not? It'll ruin the surprise, silly. Stop poking me. No. Can I phone a friend? This makes Artemis snort. What friend could you possibly phone? This was my idea. No, actually, I'm gonna phone someone right now. Turn your hand into a phone. Sticking your pinky out. Oh my god, I'm pretending that... <laughs> it's a voice receiver. Artemis stares at you. Seemingly trying to keep from laughing. Yeah. Hey, hello. Artemis Scarberry on the line. Oh my god. <laughs> you pull your phone from your face, covering it with your other hand. Pick up the phone. Artemis scans your face, fighting a smile, then sighs, forming a phone with their other hand. Hello? Yes, hello. I'm calling to phone a friend about a hint as to where we're going. Artemis is silent for a moment. They look so silly with their hand phone up next to their face, and you start to laugh without meaning to. Artemis' expression cracks. They dip their head, laughing softly. Well, unfortunately, I have no hints for you since it's a surprise. <laughs> you drop your handphone from your face, your mouth opening in disbelief. Artemis grins, shielding themselves with their arms when you start poking them again. Artemis! What? It's a surprise! Not just one hint, just a little hint. No, Anemone, I will not give you a little hint. You'll see when we get there. You sigh dramatically, flopping against the bus wall. You suppose you can wait to figure out where you're going. At least you tried. Okay, I have to ask. <laughs> ask about their ex. Can I ask you a weird question? Artemis quirks up an eyebrow, sliding their gaze toward you slowly. Feel your neck prickle a little. Sure, what is it? I'm trying to get shy. It's probably a strange question to ask. Kind of personal. Let me know if it makes you uncomfortable. You're not really setting this up very well. Your cheeks go hot with embarrassment. My bad. I was just- you talked about your ex at the party. A little bit. About how they never came to your shows, and I- I don't know. I was just curious about them. I'm sorry if that's weird. There's a silence. From the look on Artemis' face, it's obvious that they weren't expecting you to ask them this. Artemis looks back out the bus windshield for a moment. Then they look back at you, something unreadable on their face. Um, well, yeah. Never went to any of my shows. It was when the band had just started out. So we only played at house parties, like, once every month. Artemis scratches her cheek, averting their eyes. 
it was okay, you know? Like, I loved him, so I told him that it didn't matter. Besides, he, he didn't like punk rock too much. <laughs> You're not sure whether to laugh long or not. You elect for the latter, keeping quiet as Artemis continues. But it does suck, though. It's the same feeling as when you're a kid and your parents never show up to your recitals or your basketball games or whatever because they're busy. And you excuse it because they work hard for you and because you love them. But you know it's painful to look out in the crowd and not see their faces. Dating Al <laughs> Albie, okay. Dating Albie, that's his name, Albie. Dating him was a lot like that, except he wouldn't go to things because he didn't- he just didn't want to. That is fucked up. <laughs> Man. I mean, I can't blame him. But it sucks to be scared shitless before your first show and not see the only person that tends to keep you calm. Artemis hesitates and shrugs. He's pretty hot, though. Hot enough that I let too many things slide. Even when I should have said something. Your mouth tilts up at the corners when they say that. They go silent again. But this time, something fun crosses their face. He was tall, like taller than me, super hairy, and his beard always scratched my face. And he always kept his hair long. But he had a nice smile and he gave good hugs. Is it? Is that? Is that Bigfoot? Is your ex Bigfoot? <laughs> is your ex Bigfoot? I need to know. He had a huge shoe size, though. I guess that comes with being insanely tall. It was Bigfoot, wasn't it? Oh my god! Oh my god! Thank you for the hydro, Brooke. <laughs> it was Bigfoot. It had to have been Bigfoot. I'm gonna eat my m ms now. Tall, hot, big feet, and hairy. It was Bigfoot, okay? It had to have been. Color? What do you mean color? Color of what? <laughs> color? Brooke? Color? What color? I'm confused. M M. Oh, it's red. Also, they're M M minis. I like the minis. I don't know why. I like them more than the regular ones. They're like crunchier. That was like a year ago, and I haven't talked to him since we broke up. So, wow. Well, you know what they say about people with big shoe sizes. Artemis just stares at you for a second. What? Oh, oh, yeah, no. What they say is, um, it's definitely true. <laughs> Good to know. Despite your best efforts, you start to laugh awkwardly. Artemis has the audacity to blush, covering their face with their hands. Can't believe that's your takeaway from all this. <laughs> Minis are superior, they are. I'm sorry, I couldn't help it. I'm gonna ask about your coin collection again. Are you still collecting those coins? Questions seem to take Artemis by surprise. The coins? The... It takes you a second to remember what kind of coins they had said they were collecting the other week. The... Nickels? Artemis peers at you for a moment, squinting their eyes as they seem to try to remember what on earth you're talking about. You watch them cycle through several different emotions before something... dawns on their face. Oh, the coins. Yeah, whatever happened to those? There's a pause, and Artemis turns an absolutely astonishing shade of pink. They start picking at the loose threads on their shirt sleeve, averting their eyes. Well, I just use them. <laughs> I had to think about this. Then you realize they used the coins they were collecting for bus fare. There's yet another beat of silence. You step a little laugh, disguising it as a cough. Artemis flicks you on the thigh. Oh no. <laughs> Shut up. My impulse control is awful. 
<laughs> so no more coin collecting. Artemis shakes her head, their cheeks still flushed red. No, no more coin collecting. You look so embarrassed about it that you start to laugh again. You don't bother to hide it with this time. I guess we're done asking questions. You, you let the next couple moments pass in silence. Artemis still hasn't told you anything about just how long this bus ride is supposed to last. So figure that you should figure out a way to preoccupy yourself until you tell... Until they tell you that it's time to get off. You've never ridden this far on this lane before. Spend some time gazing out the window examining your surroundings. But after a while, you start to feel yourself getting restless. Those rest your hand on their thigh. Mm. <laughs> Too far. Uh, share headphones. You had been listening to music on your way to help Webby's. On your way to Webby's earlier this afternoon. You think you still have your earbuds wound up in your back pocket. I never really like doing things in silence, so maybe time will pass a little quicker if you put something on. You fish your headphones out of your back pocket and plug them into your phone. You pop one earbud in, then look over at Artemis, who's scrolling on one of their social media feeds. You nudge them with your knuckles. They look up at you, their eyes big and red. You offer the other earbud to them wordlessly. They blink down at it, then blink up at you for a moment. But they end up taking the earbud and putting it in. What do you want to listen to? You open your music library and begin to scroll through it. Artemis watches you do so. Mm, well, whatever you want to listen to, I guess. Typically, I listen to all pop. That's cool with you? Anything's cool with me, I trust you. It's an offhanded comment, but it makes your chest a little warm. You find yourself trying to pick the very best music from your library, hoping that Artemis likes it. When you find them bobbing their head to one of your favorite songs, you have to hide a smile. The bus rumbles on, passing by stops and buildings, and suddenly Artemis speaks. Could you pull the cord? It's the next stop. Oh, what? Pause the music slowly registering what Artemis has said. Did we miss the bus stop? Did we- Did we miss the bus stop? <laughs> oh, yeah. Reach over and pull the yellow bus cord. Yellow cord hanging from the ball, a ding sounds throughout the bus, signaling a stop has been requested. The bus rolls to a stop, Artemis gets up and beckons you to follow. You go out the front set of doors, passing by the driver as you leave. Thank you. Thanks. Always say thank you to your bus driver. The driver sort of nods their head at you, and then the both of you disembark and stand on the sidewalk. The sun is out from behind the clouds, basking everything in light and warmth. Behind you, the bus continues to rumble down the street. You take in your surroundings, eager to see where on earth you are now. It's not a familiar area, but it looks like you're at the base of a hill. It's a neighborhood, tightly packed with modern-style buildings. It looks pricey. Where are we? Be patient, we're almost there, come on. They beckon you again. With a sweeping wave of their hand, you follow them, trying your best to keep up with their long strides. How do I know you're not taking me to get murdered or something? <laughs> this makes Artemis laugh. You don't think you don't think they realize how fast they walk. You almost have to break into a jog to walk alongside them. They cast you the coyest grin you've ever seen. They have a mischie mischievous twinkle in their eye. Trust me, if I was going to murder you, I would have done it already. You're not sure how you feel about that one. It effectively shuts you up. I mean, it's true, though. I'd let them murder me. <laughs> you follow Artemis for about five minutes, taking the turn and trekking up the hill. Once you reach the top, though, you're blown away by the view. The hill overlooks a vast park in the entirety of the neighborhood. You can even see the distant city on the horizon. It's beautiful. You can't help but take your phone out to snap a picture. Oh, wow. Hey, <laughs> come on, it's this way. There's more? Do you really think I made you get on the bus for 35 minutes just to look at a view? Well, well, I don't know, Artemis. You would do that. Artemis chuckles. The breeze blows their hair away from their face. They're almost as pretty as if you. Yeah, I would do that, but not this time. Come on. 
Artemis leads you towards a set of concrete stairs and you begin to travel up. A canopy of trees around you cool down the sidewalk. Once you get to the top of the stairs, you see a large parking lot filled with cars and from a massive Greek Revival style building. You recognize it from pictures on Flashpick. It's the art museum! Oh my god, so we're going to the art museum? Good surprise, huh? I've never been to the art museum. Wow. I reach out your phone to take another picture. This time, of the front of the art museum. Artemis is in the frame. You don't think they realize that they're in the picture, but they look like they're part of the scene, so you don't say anything and just smile to yourself instead. Ooh, I know! Oh my god, this is so cute. Oh my god. <laughs> I love it! Wait. <laughs> Click. You wanna go in? Are you kidding me? Of course I do. Alright then, let's go then. Two of you trek across the parking lot and towards the front entrance of the museum. You skip up the front steps, pass through the metal detectors at the door, and walk inside. It's so cute, I know, right? I love a museum date. You're greeted with the bass, a vast foyer with a glass ceiling that shines sunlight down onto the guest services desk and the gift shop, which is to your left. To your right is a large arch... Large arch... Art... Art... <laughs> to your right is a large arched doorway and stairs up to what looks like the second and third levels of the museum. You're looking around at everything, trying to observe it all. It's an incredible piece of architecture. Artemis has to put a hand on your back to get you moving. Their touch lingers just a bit too long, but you don't have time to dwell on it. Instead, you go up to one of the big standing posters displaying next to... Instead, you go up to one of the big standing poster displays next to guest services in the middle of the foyer. The map of the museum is shown here. There's so much, I don't even know what I want to go see first. Turn to Artemis, who's just watching you take everything in. They smile down at you. What do you want to go see? They shrug in that carefree way of theirs. And it's cool with me. Wherever you want to go is fine. Just glad you're here. You're already enjoying yourself. You blush happily. Dipping your head to hide it. I've just never been here before. It's exciting. I wasn't expecting to come here today. Well, you know what they say. Always expect the unexpected. That wink. Oh my god. <laughs> they do not say that. They totally do. It's Oscar Wilde. Had no clue that Artemis read Oscar Wilde. Maybe reading Victoria era Asted plays or a past hobby of theirs. You decide to pay Artemis no mind for the moment, instead observing the map of the museum. On the ground level are the ancient African, Asian, and Islamic exhibitions. On the second level are the American and European exhibitions. On the third level are the modern and contemporary art exhibitions. Where would you like to go? Let's go to the third level. Let's work our way down. Third floor sound good to you? Yep. Alright, let's go. The stairs lead you right up to the third floor, which is laid out completely different than the rest of the museum. This floor is sleek and modern, designed in subtle neutrals. At the center of the contemporary art exhibit rests a massive abstract sculpture that appears to be made out of multicolored PVC pipes. The entire floor is filled with intriguing conceptual and representational work from practicing contemporary artists all around the world. You find that a lot of stuff displayed in the gallery goes way over your head. But it's all fun to look at. The bright colors and interesting human forms catch your attention and definitely leaves you thinking as you move through the rooms. After a bit of wandering, you and Artemis pause in front of a massive painting that's twice your size. The canvas is painted a clean shade of blue with one perfect red circle in the very center. It makes, frankly, no sense. What do you think it means? Artemis is silent for a while, tapping their chin with their forefinger. Can't tell if they're messing around or being serious. It's 
probably a metaphor. Yeah, but a metaphor for what? Um. The red circle? Hmm. I had a thought, but I don't think it's correct. Okay. Artemis squints at the painting as if there's something hidden that they're missing. It looks very intellectual. Maybe it's a metaphor for when you only have one more chicken nugget left. <laughs> oh my god. You start to laugh. It echoes throughout the rooms, and you rush to muffle yourself. Artemis snorts. The two of you stand there in front of the painting for a long beat, struggling to keep quiet. You know, some of the older patrons walking around are staring at the both of you. <laughs> no, yeah, that's definitely what the piece is about. I, I just know it. I'm telling you, I'm good at this stuff. Second floor. Let's go up to the second floor. Got it, boss. The two of you walk over to the polished stone staircase and begin to make your, the trek up. At the landing, there are two doorways. One on the left and one on the right. The left doorway seems to lead to the American, right to the European. Turn to Ar Artemis, who is looking around the space. Where do you want to go? Artemis swivels their gaze to you, then to the doorways. Other visitors mill around you and you start and you have to move out of the way so people could go down the stairs. Anywhere you want to go is fine. You can't... What? Sticking your bottom lip out in a playful pout. You can't, your head. Ew, American. <laughs> no, seriously, you pick. You watch Artemis flush a little. They look over at the doorways again. Well, we can start at your paint art side. I think the whole exhibit circles around, so we'll end up in the American art side when we're done. Clap your hands together brightly. Sounds like a plan, let's go. Two of you pass through the early European section, taking time to pause in front of many different artworks, ranging from sculptures to paintings to recovered slabs of temple reliefs. It's all very beautiful. You find yourself snapping pictures that you know you'll let sit in your phone library once this day is over. Passing through one of the Renaissance art rooms, when you discover that Artemis has lingered behind you, you double back, seeing them paused in front of a large oil painting. It's a painting of a woman dressed in flowing white robes. Red hair gathered up in an elegant twist. She stands barefoot in a small clearing surrounded by trees and foliage. She holds a massive bow and arrow, and at her feet lays a slain deer. Oh, you sidle up to Artemis. What you looking at, Artemis? Oh, you peer at the drawing, and then peer at the information printed on the wall next to it. It is indeed a painting of Artemis, the Greek goddess of the hunt. Were you named after her? Yeah, I picked it. Oh, you did? Oh, my god, because they're non-binary. <laughs> of course they did. Oh, you did. Artemis just nods, looking pensive. You gaze at their side profile for a moment, taking in the shimmer of their eye of their ear jewelry and the fluffiness of their hair around their face. It's a really good name. Artemis looks at you then. There's something swimming in their eyes. The red frames of their glasses shine under the gallery lights. Thank you. You smile, and smile back, suddenly sheepish. Two of you spend some time studying the paintings before Artemis touches you lightly on the shoulder, indicating that they're ready to move on. You make your way through the rest of the rooms on the second floor in content silence. You feel like you're leaning more... You feel like you're learning more about Artemis this way. In the way they look at art, in the way they look at you. Ground floor. Let's go to the first floor. Sounds like a plan to me. You nab an informational pamphlet from the guest services desk before trotting off towards a large open arch. I feel like... Okay. <laughs> it's like weird little things like this that take me out of the immersion. I feel like we should have gotten the pamphlet regardless of which floor we picked, right? first. And then also at the party, when I didn't talk to Odina first, 
I talked to her later. But, like, it says that she never left your side. She never left my side when I was, like, wandering around the, the house. You know what I mean? But still. Yeah. Yeah. You now have an information pamphlet from the guest service desk before treading off towards a large open arch. Leaves into the foreign art exhibit halls. Artemis follows behind you. After leading the way for the better part of the afternoon, I suppose that it is your turn to give the orders. You don't mind this at all. Like, see, that's something that would have been in, like, the first... whatever first choice I picked. You take your time going through each of the gallery halls. You like to read all of the plaques and stare at all of the pieces for extended periods of time. Artemis does the same, wandering around the rooms while waiting for you to get finished. While traveling from the African art exhibit to the ancient art exhibit, you decide to ask Artemis a question. Do you like art? Two of you pause in front of a selection of Western... The two of you pause in front of a selection of West African sculpture, safely protected inside of a glass case. Artemis gives you a confused look. I mean, yeah. What do you mean? Like, do you enjoy this kind of thing as something you do for fun? You gaze up at them. They meet your eyes. With wonder, you watch their cheeks color. Scratch the back of their head. Ah, well, I mean, mostly came here today because I thought you would like it. Oh, that's sweet of you. Artemis goes even redder, tilting their head to the side and averting their eyes. They don't say anything, but it makes you grin. You nudge their arm while your shoulder... What? You nudge their arm with your shoulder a couple times before leaning against them, as you observe the sculpture in the glass case. You're done. I guess we're done. You decide that you've seen everything that you've wanted to see here with an amazing way to spend the afternoon. You're milling about the ground level foyer again with Artemis by your side. Is there anything else that you want to see? If you're done, then I'm done. This answer doesn't really satisfy you. You stop walking, forcing Artemis to stop too. Artemis, seriously, I don't want to leave if you're not ready to leave. This makes Artemis go red. You're discovering that they go red very easily nowadays. <laughs> Trust me, I'm fine. You peer at them. They turn their face to evade your gaze. There's a pause, but then Artemis speaks again. I really just wanted to spend the day with you, so I'm fine whenever you're fine. Your stomach turns to mush. Aww. <laughs> Artemis. Artemis covers her face with her hands. You laugh softly. Oh, don't be embarrassed. It's really kind of you. Thank you. Artemis didn't say anything after that. Just tuck some hair behind their ear when they move their hands from their face. You smile. Affection warm in your chest. The feeling takes you by surprise. You try not to think about it now. You'll save that for when you get home. You start walking again. Artemis quickly falls in a step behind, beside you. Coming around towards the gift shop. You pass the gift shop. Just past the gift shop is the exit. Do you want to shop? Yes. Always go to the gift shop. Hey, wait, let's stop in here before we go. Alright. You walk into the open glass door of the gift shop. It's bustling in here, full of visitors and staff. There are so many things in there. Trinkets, prints, magnets, tableware, postcards. Everything you can think of. Artemis follows behind you as you explore, picking up and putting down things of their own every so often. Spend a little bit gazing at a framed reproduction of a classic painting. After a while of looking around, you're torn between a couple items that piqued your interest. There's a cute little glazed clay bowl with the house sitting on a raised island in the middle. A couple of pins with designs of pieces on, with designs of pieces in the museum's collection, and a pretty art book for your coffee table. You're only gonna pick one thing because you're really trying to cut back on your spending. Sure, I'm I'm really trying to cut back on my spending. So what do you want to get? I like 15, 10, 20, 25. Like, I want to get the pins, right? But 
What happens if I get the painting that he was looking at? It's $25. I have $36. What do y'all think? Also, I forgot that I had coffee until I just looked at it. <laughs> Twenty-five. That's expensive. It is, but when we went to the Getty, I got these like postcards. They were like five dollars each. <laughs> Don't mind me while I readjusted my chair. I think I'm gonna get the the painting. I have to check my phone real quick, so I'm going to turn my camera off. Don't mind me. BRB real quick. I'm back. <laughs> and then my phone. Yeah. I'm really scared that Be Real is going to go off while I'm streaming. And then I'm going to have to like... <laughs> but I was getting a lot of notifications and I was like, well, maybe it's my parents. But it wasn't. It's fine. Everything's fine. Okay, we're going to get the... We're going to get the art print. I had a feeling... <laughs> Yeah. Hey, did you want that painting? Artemis is looking through a shelf of art books right now. And they pause, meeting your eyes. Huh? The one you were looking at earlier, the one in the frame. Oh, um, yeah, I did. But I figured it would be best to keep my money in my wallet. <laughs> you laugh along with them, casting them an easy smile. Hey, I'll buy it for you. Artemis goes wide-eyed. They shelf the book they were leafing through, turning towards you to give their full attention. You you don't need to do that. But I want to. It's my gift. It's the least I can do after you planning such a thoughtful afternoon. Artemis chews on their lips, suddenly shy. I'm not gonna take no for an answer. Go get it and bring it here. Artemis looks at you real hard for a moment, hesitating. You nod encouragingly at them. Feeling the bum of their gaze in your chest. Go on. With that, Artemis shuffles past you to retrieve the painting. They're back in a moment, handing you the picture frame like it's something invaluable. Take a look at it. It's an extremely high quality print set inside a frame. The print is of the Artemis oil painting the two of you had seen on the second floor. No wonder Artemis wants it. It's obvious that they have a soft spot for the piece. Alright. Let's go to the line. Artemis nods curtly, following you to the checkout line. Oh my god. Try not to like drop anything. Wait, wait, oh my god. <laughs> Try not to drop anything. Trying to move my keyboard. Okay. You only wait a couple moments before you reach the register. Transaction goes smoothly, the attendant carefully packing up the print and putting it in a bag for your convenience. Once everything is done, hand the bag to Artemis, smiling brightly. 
Here you go. Artemis takes the bag from you. Their cheeks flushed, and their brows drawn tight over their eyes. They're gnawing on their bottom lip, and for a moment, you fear that they're about to start crying. Thank you. They say it quietly. Like if they say it any louder, they might break. Your heart suddenly begins to ache. But not in a bad way. You're welcome. You and Artemis go ahead and leave the museum. It's almost six, and sun begins to set in on the horizon. You stand on the big steps for a moment, breathing in the fresh air. You're not really sure where Artemis planned on taking you next, but you assume that it's back to the bus stop. I want to take you to one more place, okay? It's like they read your mind. Kind of freaky. Where? Artemis begins to walk down the steps, beckoning you to follow. You rush after them. Just follow me. It's not far from here. They can be so vague. Kills you inside, but you follow them, trying to keep up with their stride. It's quiet as they... It's quiet as they lead you down the winding sidewalk. Can you hear the siren? Can you hear the ambulance? Can you hear it? <laughs> Very curious. It's quiet as they lead you down the winding sidewalk towards the backside of the museum. Birds are singing above you. Once again, you have no idea where you're going. Nope. Okay. Thank you, Brooke. Thank you, Gato. Because there's like a fire station right behind my house. <laughs> you know that if you ask... Not like Wobo. Oh my god. <laughs> that was so funny. A Wobo stream. <laughs> it was so loud, too. <laughs> oh my god. Anyway. You know that if you ask, Artemis will give you another non-answer. So you figure it's best to simply follow them and hope they're not leading you to your death. Sadwa makes a sharp left. You're effectively behind the museum now. You're about to ask if going this way is even allowed. But then you see where Artemis is taking you. Wilbo is an icon. Truly. Truly an icon. Wilbo is a national treasure. <laughs> You come up on a quaint outdoor flower garden, all surrounded by tall, neatly pruned hedges. There are hummingbird feeders set up around the premises. As you get closer, you can see them flitting around between the feeders and the copious amounts of flowers in the garden. Oh, wow. From beside you, Artemis grins. Cool, huh? It's beautiful. How'd you know this is back here? It's gonna sound crazy, but... Oh, no. Artemis socks you gently on the shoulder, pretending it's sulk. You laugh. They lead you off the sidewalk and into the grass. Garden is much bigger from up close. It smells amazing. Anyway, as I was saying, I used to actually volunteer here at the museum. Not often, since, since it was just a side thing and all. But I used to be here all the time. Sometimes they hold events out here. You really have done everything, haven't you? Artemis grins, then licks her lips. <laughs> Everything and then some. You smile at each other, albeit a bit dorkily. Artemis continues to lead you down into the garden, weaving through the foliage and flora, until you reach a clearing that houses several ornate wood benches. Artemis settles down in one and paths the spot next to them. You sit down, taking in all of your surroundings. Once again, you take out your phone and begin to snapping pictures, enraptured by the beauty around you. You turn your phone towards Artemis, but you pause, lowering your hand. Let's take a picture together. Artemis' brows raise, almost like they're surprised. Then their expression softens. Something in their face makes your chest hurt. Sure. You scoot closer to them, so close that your thighs touch. You lean your head in towards theirs and lift your phone to take a picture. You smile, and so do they. You can't help but look at their face in the camera preview. As you take the photo, the shutter goes off. You bring your phone down to see the results. You pull up the picture. It's a nice one. You look good. You suddenly realize that Artemis has leaned in 
to see the photo. Their cheek, close to yours. You seem to feel feel you looking at them, and they lift their gaze to meet yours. The distance between you start startles both of you at the exact same moment. You both scoot away from each other. <laughs> can I kiss him? Can I can I can I kiss him? <laughs> please! Send me send me a picture when you get a chance, please. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, of course. You brush you brush hair out of your eyes, setting your phone down in your lap. There's something like an awkward silence between the two of you for a moment. Thanks for today. Artemis looks at you. You watch them process the words. They smile. It's bashful. It's nothing. I'm just glad you had a good time. I had a great time. It's really thoughtful of you. Artemis blushes harder, biting back the grin threatening to take over their face. Just looking at them makes your own face heat, and you're not sure why. That's awesome. Maybe we can do more stuff like this? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'd like that. You smile at them. They smile back at you. The sun is warm on your face, and the flowers are beautiful around you. And you can say with confidence that this is the best day you've had in a while. Ooh, so much ooh. -woo. <laughs> After grinding away at all your work this week, you have $17 to add to your spending fund. You now have $28. Cool, 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 cool. My heart. <laughs> I can't take it. <laughs> this is so cute. Also, don't mind me, like, leaning back in my chair. Don't worry about it. Don't, just don't look at me. It's fine. After finishing up some work today, get a different sort of text from Artemis than you usually do. Typically, they text you at the most ungodly hour of the morning, with elaborate plans for plans to visit around town. But this time, you get a text just past noon. You good? I'm good. <laughs> I'm fine. It's fine. Just past noon. Artemis. Wanna come to my place for a movie? A movie. Right. Right. A movie. <laughs> You look at the message for a very long time, processing the words. Artemis has never invited you to their place before. You've only heard about it in passing conversation. I remember hearing about their roommates and splitting rent, and that's about it. The whole concept of Artemis' living space is an elusive one. Movie, right. <laughs> but here they were, asking if you wanted to pop by for a movie. A sweet thought, and honestly, you're extremely curious to see what kind of place Artemis is shacked up in. Sure, send me an address, I'll be on my way. Artemis replies seconds later with the address. It's like they were sitting there, phone in hand, waiting for you to reply, which is rather endearing, if you think about it. You plug the address into your navigation app, it's not too far away. It's about a 20 minute walk and a 10 minute bus ride. You don't mind either way of getting there. You have to let Artemis know what time you plan on arriving regardless of what you end up doing. I think we should take the bus. The bus is quicker. Plus with one look at the transit app on your phone, you discover that the bus comes in about 5 minutes. There's a bus stop just outside your apartment, so if you gather your things quick enough you'll be able to make it. Grab a light jacket before going through your mental list of essentials. Keys, phone, wallet. Okay, you should be good. Pull your phone out, out to text Artemis about what time you're planning on getting there. Hey, I'm leaving now. See you there in 15. Once again, Artemis respond comes instantly. Sounds good. Oh my god, it's a winky face. <gasps> oh my god, it's a winky face thumbs up. Oh my god, I love it. <laughs> See you there. You find yourself smiling at the text as you leave your apartment. Artemis has an affinity for text emoticons and they never fail to make you smile. <laughs> they are just so cute. You never pegged Artemis to be this type to use text emoticons, but now that you know them better, you're starting to realize that they're exactly the type to text with little faces. You head out of your apartment and trot down the stairs to the ground floor. You step out onto the sidewalk and walk down the streets to the bus stop. Wink, thumbs up. I know, right? <laughs> also, I can't see the emotes. It just says wink, thumbs up. 
man. You take the transit app again. You have three minutes to spare. You go ahead and take your fare out of your wallet as you wait. The bus comes just a little bit after, rolling up to the curb and rumbling to a stop in front of you. You get on, pay your fare, and find a seat. Artemis lives in a part of town that's close to one of the biggest neighborhood markets in the area. You know you've gone to that market on several previous occasions. It's been a while though. You have to stop your phone every so often to make sure you're not missing your stop. After about 10 minutes, your navigation app says that you're approaching your stop. You pull a signal cord, a ding echoing throughout the bus. The bus comes to a stop at the curve and you briskly disembark. Thank you. Always thank your bus driver. The bus driver nods at you and then drives off, leaving you on the sidewalk, trying to orient yourself. According to your navigation app, Artemis places down the street and to the left. It's not a long walk. You're able to make it there in a couple minutes. You arrive at Artemis' doorstep a short while later. They live in a rather quaint neighborhood. And their house is one of those skinny but tall types. At least two levels. You knock on the door without a second thought, almost a bit more preoccupied with looking around the neighborhood than you are with waiting for someone to answer the door. You're watching a dog and its walker pass down the sidewalk behind you. When the front door opens, oh, Kuro, oh hey, you circle around, coming face to face with Kuro, Artemis' bandmate, huh, you didn't know they lived together? Oh, hi Kuro, is Artemis here? Kuro peers at you, his gaze is so strong, it makes your stomach swivel nervously. Yeah, yeah, they're here, give me a sec. You're fully expecting Kuro to close the door and retrieve Artemis from wherever they are in the house, but apparently... That apparently is not the case. Instead, Kuro leads back into the house and proceeds to yell. <laughs> Artemis! <laughs> wow. You stare stupidly at Kuro. His voice echoes out onto the street. You hear Artemis' voice faintly from the depths of the house. What? Your friend is at the door for you! My what? Your friend! Come to the damn door! You think you hear Artemis grumbling as they come over to the front door. Kuro begins to drum his fingers on the door pa impatiently. He looks at you, brows raised. <laughs> oh, I know, right? He seems almost apologetic. They're coming. Ah, okay. There's a moment of nothing, then you hear Artemis speak again. Closer now. Dude, what the fuck is your problem? <laughs> Your friend's here. He gestures over at you. You smile meekly and wave. The exasperation on Artemis' face is wiped away so quickly, it's almost like it was never there. It looked genuinely happy to see you. Oh, hey, Nemini. Hi. Okay, I'll leave you two weirdos to it. Kudos smacks Artemis on the shoulder as he dips back into the house. Artemis smacks him right back, sending him a nasty look as he walks away. Oh. Sorry about him. He's annoying. I think it's kind of endearing. Artemis laughs. You hold the door open for you, indicating that you should come in. Yeah, daring is one way to put it. You step inside the house and Artemis closes the door behind you. It's warm in here. You think you can hear someone watching TV in the other room. The walls lining the entryway are filled with picture frames, posters, and small shelves stacked with trinkets. It's maximalist to the highest degree literally my house you're not really sure what else you were expecting from artemis's house this trend continues as artemis leads you from the entryway to the living room where a girl is reclining on the couch in front of a very large television mordag oh i love her the girl mordag apparently diverts her attention from the tv to curiously eye artemis and you by extension Oh, who's this? Mordag's gaze is hypnotizing. She doesn't have any pupils or irises. Just swimming blue sclera that seem to swirl. This is my... This is anemone. <laughs> my what? My what, Artemis? <laughs> you notice Artemis' initial hesitation, but don't say anything. You pocket the moment for later. Hey. 
Something giddy dawns on Mordag's face. She looks between you and Artemis excitedly. Oh, so you're the anemone I've heard so much about. You turn to Artemis a bit confused. What? Artis Artemis suddenly goes scarlet. They grab for the hem of the shirt sleeve, pulling you along through the, through the house. Okay, let's go. Wait, what is she talking about? <laughs> Artemis doesn't answer, tugging your past, tugging you past the dining table and into a cluttered kitchen where Kuro is making a sandwich. It seems like Artemis fully intends to drag you all the way to the stairs at the back side of the kitchen. But when Kuro speaks, they skid to a halt. You guys want sandwiches? Kuro standing at one of the counters and assembling his sandwich, looking over his shoulders at the two of you. Artemis appears to consider this, and looks down at you. You shrug, like, why not? Uh, sure. Thanks, Kudo. Kudo hums. He pops two slices of bread into the toaster next to him. No problem. Thank you, Kudo. Kudo looks over to you. Eyebrows waves with passive interest. His fierce gaze makes your spine crawl. Why does Artemis have such freaky roommates? <laughs> no problem. There's a beat, then Kudo hands a plate with the sandwich that he just made to Artemis. Two of you stand there uselessly for several minutes before Kudo finishes making a second sandwich, <laughs> which he hands to you. You nod gratefully at him. Like... <laughs> this is so funny, because we're just staring at him making sandwiches. Why? We didn't just, like, go sit down or something? <laughs> you know? After a moment, he nods back. Kudo begins to make a third sandwich, one you presume is for him, when Artemis nudges you with their elbow. Let's go to my room. Okay. Why not? But, Brooke, that's so awkward. <laughs> you're just watching this man make a sandwich, and then you're just watching him make another sandwich. Like, damn. Artemis then leads you through the kitchen, towards the stairs without a word. He casts a look over your shoulder at Kudo. He's dutifully making the sandwich without a care in the world. The stairs are just as cluttered and decorated as the rest of the house. Out of season Christmas lights are strung on the banisters, twinkling in resin greens. I would like a sandwich. Can they make me a sandwich? Food, I would like food. Yeah, but like, if someone's making you a sandwich, are you just gonna stare at them? While they're making it? Like, what? <laughs> That's so awkward. Stairs are just as cluttered, right, right? The wall next to the stairs is covered in photos and art prints. So you have to step over a couple stacks of books. And some the steps, you wonder what belongs to who. At the landing, Artemis steps into an open door on the left. You're quick to follow, careful to make sure that your sandwich isn't slipping off your plate as you walk. Once you're inside... Artemis gently pushes the door, just shy of closed. To put it frankly, Artemis' room is like, well, it's like the rest of the house. <laughs> Every single wall is covered in something. Tall shelves crammed with books, posters tracked up next to countless sticky notes. Leafy plants hanging from the ceiling, guitars hung on the wall. It's an amalgamation of colors and patterns. It suits every single one of Artemis' tastes like nothing else could. Cool room. It's a genuine statement. Artemis' cheeks are rosy. Sorry, it's kind of a mess. No, you're fine. I don't mind. I have a lingering suspicion that they tried to tidy up before you arrived. The thought warms your heart. There's a beat as Artemis settles down on the bed, setting their plate on their sheet. On the sheets. None of the sheets match with any of the pillowcases, and every single fabric item on the bed is wrinkly, but you suppose it's part of the charm. There's more than enough space for you to accompany them on the bed, if you wanted to. On the other hand, you can sit at the dark desk to your right. The surface is a little cluttered, but if you push a couple of things out of the way, it'd be perfect. I'm gonna sit on the bed, please, come on. You decide to sit on the bed next to Artemis, careful not to jostle your plate and scatter crumbs everywhere. You're sitting with a decent amount of space between the two of you, but you're watching Artemis grow shy after you sit down. 
Can't help but find it endearing. Looks like Kuro had made quite the sandwich. After a bit of investigating, you discover that it's red leaf lettuce, tomato, cucumber, black forest ham, mayo, and what looks like everything bagel seasoning. That, that is a sandwich. <laughs> you suspect the meat is vegetarian. You don't think you've ever seen Artemis eat any meat. It looks delicious. You'll have to thank Kuro again. If you can work up the courage. <laughs> Kuro is like, so intimidating, but I feel like he's so nice. You know? Eating in silence is a bit awkward though. So maybe you can make some small talk to pass the time? You've got quite a few questions now that you're here at Artemis's place. What would you like to talk about? House, Mordag. So ask about Mordag, your other roommate that I've heard nothing about. <laughs> so who's Mordag? She's just one of my roommates. She's insane like Kuro. <laughs> and insane like you. Artemis laughs and throws a little piece of bread crust at you. <laughs> Hits you on the cheek. Yeah, yeah, whatever. If I'm insane, then you have to be too. Sure, I'll take it. Two of you smile dumbly at each other before going back to eating. There's a beat. What do you mean? When she said I'm the anemone she's always hearing about. Artemis pauses in the middle of chewing. Their face is playing brief panic before they manage to school it, in school it into nonchalance. You watch this amuse, they swallow, then clear their throat. I just, I wish, I just talk about you, that's all. That's, that's what friends do, right? You smile, it's reassuring. You see some of the worries seep out of our Mrs. face. Definitely. Ask about Kuro. I didn't know you lived with Kuro too. Artemis nods. Oh yeah, we've lived together longer than we've been in the band together. That was a later thing. How do you guys know Colia then? Artemis' freshening goes thoughtful. He scratched the back of their head. Ah, uh, well, that's a good question. I am not completely sure. You're not sure. She's sort of always been there? I know Kuro and Kolia knew before Kolia knew me. But one day she was just there. Um, freaky? Why is everyone Artemis associate Why is everyone Artemis associates with so scary? Kudo's a good roommate, though. He's a nice guy after you get to know him a little bit. Artemis lifts up their half-eaten sandwich as if that exemplifies it. Right. Kudo had made the two of you sandwiches. It'd completely been a sweet gesture. Ask about the house. Got a really cool place. Artemis looks up from their food to peek at you. You think so? Yeah, it's very... Very personalized. Artemis snorts and takes another bite of the sandwich. They shift the food to the side of their mouth when they speak again. It's a mess, you mean? <laughs> no, 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 I think it's great. Eclectic decor is always good. Eclectic! I mean that in the most positive way possible. Artemis laughs and shakes her head. A thick lock of black hair falls into their eyes. I'm just teasing. I do know it's a mess, though. Kudo, Mordag, and I are all pretty cluttered people. And it definitely shows in how we decorate the house. It used to be, um, rather tame. Then everything sort of exploded out of nowhere. I know it's gonna be a pain in the ass to move out of here when it's finally time. How long have you lived here? Oh, just over a year and a half now. Not long. I still live by myself in a shitty studio apartment. But I don't think living alone is my thing. You get lonely? Artemis flushes, averting their eyes. Yeah, I do better with people around, if I'm being honest. If you're being honest, you've always seen Artemis as a lone wolf type. But this changes things. That is so relatable. Two of you finish eating relatively quickly. Artemis takes your plate from you and stacks it on top of theirs, putting it on the night table to deal with later. Artemis reaches towards their nightstand again, this time grabbing a remote control. Pointed towards the television across the room, turning it on. Oh right, you were invited here in the first place to watch a movie. <laughs> a movie! See, a movie! Right. Right, the movie. 
You sit in contempt silence for a little while as Artemis pulls up Crypt Flicks. <laughs> Crypt Flicks. And starts browsing the suggested movies and shows on their feed. With amusement, you notice that Artemis apparently watches quite a bit of reality TV. So what are we going to watch? Artemis clicks through a selection of newly released romantic comedies. They peek over at you. A slight smile on their face. <laughs> I don't know. What do you want to watch? Cool with whatever, honestly. Let's watch Ms. West Singles, then. You're mostly joking. But you would have sworn that you saw this show on their watch list just a few seconds ago. You watch Artemis' cheeks color. They elbow you in the ribs. It doesn't hurt. Okay. When I said I was cool with whatever, that's not what I meant. Yeah, you're all, you're literally already watching it. Let me guess. You're on season 5, episode 14. Artemis goes a little bit redder. I smack you in the leg with the TV remote. <laughs> season 5, episode 11, actually. Can't help but laugh at their ex expense. The face they make when they're embarrassed. Just too cute. Oh my gosh, shut up. <laughs> Can't believe you watch Midwest Singles. So do you. What is that even supposed to mean? You're the one who caught, who's caught up. But I have a, a good excuse for watching it. Odina makes me. That is not a good excuse. I bet you watch in your free time when no one is around. That's actually a very true statement. And with singles has become something of a guilty pleasure. That's not something you're proud of. You're not willing to admit it either. That is definitely not true. You are totally lying. I can see it in your face. You, in fact, are totally lying. <laughs> but Artemis can't know that. Oh my gosh, just pick a movie. Artemis simply casts you a sly smile, then continues to click through the movie catalog. You know what they think... You know that they think they, they've won. You're not about to say anything that'll further incriminate you. <laughs> it's about a minute of silence as Artemis browses crypt flicks. And then they sigh, handing you the remote... Okay, I can't pick. You pick. Guest of Honor. The Guest of Honor? Oh my god. You snort and take the remote from them. They stretch their arms over their head, leaning back against the pillows. You try not to stare. They are literally all limbs. <laughs> you browse the catalog for a bit, trying to decide what you would like to watch. You probably narrow it down by genre first. My heart is scary... Exciting. Let's go with scary. It's fall, which is a perfect time for spooky movies. So, you have to pick something scary. Got a couple of favorites that you know are in Cryptflix, so you begin to search for them. You're typing in the title of one of your favorites, Basement, when Artemis picks up. Uh, what are you pulling up? A movie? Artemis socks you in the arm. Don't be a smartass. Is that a horror movie? Perhaps. Yes. Oh no. Does, do, do they not like horror movies? No. <laughs> Artemis didn't say anything for a sec. You turn to look at them. A wolfish grin on your face. Are you implying that you're a scaredy cat? The flush that rushes to Artemis' face, then, is too priceless not to laugh at. They sock you in the arm again. You smack their thigh with the remote. I'm not a scaredy cat. If I put on basement, will you start crying? <laughs> you're not- you're just trying to get a rise out of them now. If a scar on their cheeks is any indication, it's definitely working. No, I won't start crying. Scary movies just- they just freak me out, okay? Oh, oh it's okay. I'll protect you. <laughs> Please. Artemis groans, they pull a pillow out from behind them and bury their face in it. Yeah, you know, that basement is a perfect choice for this afternoon. The movie begins to play and you sit back against the pillows. <laughs> Ready to take it all in. I do not miss being so desperate to physically touch my guns <laughs> before to play full punches. I mean... <laughs> Artemis is still clutching that pillow. Even though the opening credit the credits just started. You're gonna have to keep an eye on them. The movie really is one of the 
one of your favorites, so it's easy to get into it as soon as it starts playing. You've seen it as you've seen it a considerable amount of times. You know the plot like the back of your hand. It's even better that Artemis hasn't seen it. Because that way you can just spend time peeking at their expression during all your favorite parts. You first peek over at Artemis about 15 minutes into the movie. They don't notice. I'm gonna- I'm not- nope. <laughs> you spend a decent portion of the rest of the movie next to Artemis, and it's nice. It's comfortable. But, you know, Artemis isn't really watching the movie. Because you can feel them looking at you. When you turn your head in their direction, you can see them quickly look away. You smile. When you turn your head in their direction, you see them quickly look away. Okay, you said that already. What? Your voice is soft, almost like if you raise it any, you might scare them. Artemis slides their gaze back over to you after a beat, their cheeks scarlet. Nothing. <laughs> you have a feeling that it's not nothing. No, what is it? There's another long pause. Artemis chews at their lip. <laughs> they sort of dip their head towards you, hair falling over their brow. I just... Nobody... I... <laughs> a hard and quick knock sounds at your door. Oh, sounds to your right. Both you and Artemis jerk your heads up at the noise. Oh, man. <laughs> Please. <laughs> hey, just so you know, we're... Moradak peers into the room. Several expressions come onto her face the span of a moment before settling on something that looks like a pleasant surprise. <laughs> you feel your face burn. Artemis is an intense shade of red you've never seen before. <laughs> Mordag drums her fingers on the doorframe, a smug smile tugging at her. At her mouth, she clears her throat. We're leaving. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Mordag leads her into the room. Artemis hides her face in their hands. Did I interrupt something? She's teasing, you can tell from her shitty and green and grin and raised eyebrows. <laughs> but embarrassment rushes hot through your veins, even though she didn't walk in on much. <laughs> no. Oh, I see. Well, I'll see you later, Artemis. Bye. <laughs> nice meeting you, Anemone. <laughs> you too. With one last nod of her head, Mordak dips out of the room, pulling the door closed behind her. <laughs> There's a long silence. The movie is still playing. Artemis won't look at you. Their eyes and cheeks bright pink. <laughs> but they're still here next to you. So you suppose that everything is alright. After working really hard all week. You have $21. Oh, nice. That's so much money. I think I, I, think I need to take a break. <laughs> Tired of sitting. Okay. Okay, bye. BRB. <laughs> Where? There it is. Okay. It's been three hours? It's been a lot. Kato, it's been a lot. Stretchy time. You're supposed to stretch every 45 minutes, okay?
Hello, I'm back. I think pizza is worth going outside, Brooke. I, I think you should get the pizza. I'm gonna eat my donut. I just remembered. This is a great time to do the polls while I eat my donut. Look back, thank you. So there's this TikTok trend. There was this TikTok trend of like, ew, going outside, I know, right? But like, it was basically a poll. It was like, what would I be according to my whatever? And I thought it'd be cute if I did that, but like, what would I be according to my chat? <laughs> so if anyone is lurking, now would be the great time to participate. Not that I mean to call anyone out of lurk. Let me see if I can find my list. I get pizza when we're done. Yay! Okay. Hi, lurkers. Hello. You don't have to participate if you're just, if you're just lurking or if you're busy, okay? Just just letting you know. <laughs> I don't actually mean to call anyone out of lurk. But if I was a color, what color would I be? Okay, wait. First, everyone say hi to TikTok. Everyone say hi to TikTok. <laughs> Thank you for the highs. Okay. Now, if I was a color, what color would I be? There is one correct answer. Seems like there are multiple correct answers. Those are two very good answers. Thank you, Kat. Thank you, Caro. Also, I still have coffee. It's very cold. Wait, what was the question? The question was, if I was a color, what color would I be? Second question is, if I was a food, what food would I be?
Okay. Thank you for your answers. <laughs> if I was a flower, what flower would I be? Is that a trick question? As if I would ever trick you. Okay. Next question. If I was a time of day, what time of day would I be? <laughs> yes, what do you mean yes? I would never. I would never trick you. Okay, I love your answers. I almost spit out my coffee. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Next question. If I was an animal, what animal would I be? <laughs> Some of these do feel like trick questions, which I think is so funny, but like, it's cute, okay? Anyway, if I was a drink, so you could date, <laughs> so you could date Mothman. Cat, have you seen the little art that I made? It's my OC and Mothman. <laughs> Isn't it so cute? I love how it came out.
They're so ooh, they are. All right, what drink would I be? Coffee, but strawberry Fanta is a strong second. Yeah, I think those are two good choices. Hmm, we'll have someone else be a tiebreaker. Strawberry frap, oh. That's a good in-between. I do love a strawberry frap. Something with strawberries, wow. <laughs> I don't know what I was expecting, but I'm glad that you all associate me with strawberries. Okay. Drink. Okay, if I was a season, what season would I be? Extra whipped cream. I actually don't like whipped cream in my frap. I feel like... It's just too much. But I do like whipped cream on other things. That sounded worse. <laughs> that sounded better in my head. Um, Don't clip that. You can't clip on YouTube. Ha ha ha. <laughs> Fall, autumn. Nice. I like whipped cream in my coffee. Coffee. Not so much in like my frap. Oh, don't owe me. <laughs> Fall, autumn, okay. We can though. No, 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 you can't. I, you can't do that on YouTube. We can clip it. I see it right there. No, no, you don't. No, you don't. There are clips here too. No, there isn't. What do you know? <laughs> There's no clips here. Okay. Since I don't have any other ideas for these. So you do want to clip? No, I don't. <laughs> Next question. Anyway, if I was a place, what place would I be? Hmm. This was kind of a weird one. Like, when I was looking at videos for this trend, like, they get into, like, really specific ones. And I didn't want to go, like, that... that specific, so we're only doing a few of them. It's hard. Too many places. There are a lot of places in the world. We can change place though too. Wait, I was clipping and I missed a question. <laughs> Cat, no! <laughs> 
the question was, if I was a place, what place would I be? Poggy's cat. Make sure you share it if you can. <laughs> I just thought of one, but I don't remember. I just thought of another question. You would be a local cafe in the southwest of the US. Man. <laughs> Small south western cafe. Okay. Um, you know what? If I was a breed of dog, what breed of dog would I be? What kind of dog would I be? That's a that's a weird one. <laughs> OG cozy Barnes and Noble. Ooh. Australian Shepherd. Ooh, those are cute. I'm trying to think of a couple more questions. Small but stubborn. <laughs> Accurate. Yes. Big doggo vibes. Hmm. Yeah. I already asked for a color. I already asked for an animal. I feel like, okay, because some of the questions... Oh, I know. Oh. Oh. Um. Yes. Because some of the questions on the trend were like, geez, I forgot the breed. What what kind of breed was it? If you can explain it, maybe you can help. Some of the questions on this trend were like, what what temperature would I be? And I'm just like, what is that? That makes no sense. That's a weird question. <laughs> okay, let me let me let you look at me again. Hi. <laughs> I ate my donut. Um. You can't see my plate. Okay, that's good. I forgot the breed. It's a really tall dog. Oh my god, wait, wait, one sec. It's a really tall dog that likes to snooze on the couch, but the legs are too long. The one with the big, big mouth, big snoot, that kind of dog. Because I don't know what those are called either. A Dane. Aww. When I was in Girl Scouts, we volunteered at a Great Dane rescue. A Great Dane, rather. Yeah. We volunteered at a Great Dane rescue, and, like, I just really like big dogs. I think they're sweet. Great Dane. I'll write it down. I'm gonna have to, for those that, like, when you gave me multiple answers, I'm going to have to pick one. <laughs> so I'm sorry in advance if I don't pick your answer. For the video. Um. What else? You know what? If I was... 
If I was a Sanrio character, what character would I be? Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Last one. Because we have to get to the... We have to get back to the game. No, no, you tricked us with the questions. <laughs> I'm offended in advance. No! <laughs> I didn't trick you on purpose, okay? Like, it's part of the trend that, like... You have to pick questions that are obvious. You know? Batsmaru. No. I love Batsmaru. There's a Sanrio raccoon? What? There is? I don't know about this Sanrio raccoon. Who is it? Gato, who is it? Who's the Sanrio raccoon? Landry? I have not heard of them, but I will write it down. And Google later. Okay, thank you for answering my poll questions. We will go back to the game now. Ooh, where is it? PC. No. <laughs> okay. $21. You have $49 now, yay. Oh, where am I? You're in the middle of washing up after lunch when you hear your phone ring on the counter beside you. You peer at it, your hands submerged deep in warm, soapy water. It's Odina! You take your hands out of the sink and wipe them quickly on the front of your shirt, reaching over to grab your phone. You answer the call, tucking your phone between your cheeks and your shoulder and try to find... I forgot my camera wasn't on. Yeah, you can see me again. You answer the call, tucking your phone between your cheeks and your shoulder. Try to find a towel to probably dry your hands with. Hello? Nemni, hey! Hey, Odina, what's up? You grab the towel hanging from the oven door handle. Once you're done drying your hands, you toss the towel over your other shoulder, moving back towards the sink to finish up the dishes. On the other side of the line, Odina speaking. Lots of stuff. I could talk for hours, honestly. But let me get straight to the point so we can talk about the big thing first. Okay. So I just got off the phone with Kolia, right? Right? And she was telling me that she's planning this day trip of town, right? Okay, right? What about it? It's gonna be her and Kuro, Artemis, and then this girl named Mordag. I don't know her, but apparently she's Artemis and Kuro's roommate or something. Oh yeah, I know her. I met her last week at Artemis' place. Dina hums long and low. You're not sure what it means, but you go ahead and continue with your dishes. Dunk your hands back in the water. Okay, cool, that's great, because this place that everyone is going to is Mordak's hometown. Her parents live in a house by the lake, and it's this whole cute lakeside town a couple hours away. Coley asked me if I wanted to come, and she also asked me to ask you if you wanted to come too. For some reason, you have a feeling that Odina asked if you could come rather than Coley asking Odina if you wanted to come. You get the impression that Kolia knows that you're more than a little intimidated by her. No matter, though. The offer is still sweet, regardless. We would drive up this weekend in my car and meet up with the others. It's gonna be real cute. Do you wanna come? Please say yes. I would love for you to come. The way Odina says that... The way Odina says that has her heart... Has your heart melting. You don't think you could say no to her, ever, even if you wanted to. Sure, I'll come. Why not? Odina cheers on the other side of the line. You laughed. Yay, it's gonna be so fun, I promise. If I pick you up at 9 in the morning on Saturday, is that okay? It's a two hour drive, so Coley asked me to get there with enough time to still do some things during the day before sunset. 9 is fine with me. Okay, awesome. I'm so excited. It's gonna be great. But, but in other news, you will not believe what happened at the salon today. Tell me what happened. 
At your encouragement, Odina derails the subject to her favorite topic, gossip. Lucky for you, her gossip is always very entertaining. So a phone conversation keeps you engaged and interested while you finish cleaning up. Saturday rolls around a lot faster than you expected to. The next thing you know, you're in your living room trying to remember what the hell you're forgetting to bring with you. Odina texted you about 10 minutes ago saying that she was on her way. So you have to get... You have to be quick. If there's one thing you know about Odina, it's that she's... She speeds. Man. You figure that you should take something with you to keep you occupied on the drive over. Odina's driving, but the drive is going to be just over two hours. Maybe you can keep something to keep your mind busy for all that time? What do you want to bring? Book, video game, headphones. What do we want to take? I feel like on a car, a book would make me nauseous. And like, I can't really concentrate <laughs> in a car, which is weird. Like, I couldn't even concentrate on the plane when I had to take a plane. I'm gonna bring my headphones. Bring your headphones with you everywhere. It would be a crime not to bring them with you in this car ride. Same though. Yeah. You're sure that Odina will have something playing over the car radio, but you know that if you turn your volume on your phone up loud enough, you won't be able to hear it. Can't read or watch anything in a car. Yeah. Airplane is okay though. Besides, one of your favorite artists just put out a deluxe version of one of their best albums. You've been streaming it on repeat. It'll be a great way to pass the time. Just as you're packing away your source of entertainment in your bag, your phone vibrates in your back pocket. You take it out. Notification on the lock screen indicating a text from Odina. She must have arrived. Hurry up, Slowpoke, I'm here! <laughs> a little face. Scramble to text back, shouldering your bag and moving toward your front door. Hey, I'm coming. Give me two seconds. Dina's reply comes heartbeats later. Park so badly right now, you better walk fast down those stairs. You snore to yourself, pocketing your phone and looking around for your apartment keys. Find them with a bowl by the door, where they always are. You look out on your apartment in a moment of thought, just to make sure that you haven't forgotten anything. You stand there uselessly for a second, and then shrug with a sure nod. You think you have everything. It'll be fine. You leave your apartment, locking the door behind you. And set, and set to going downstairs to the ground floor. You take them two at a time, hands sliding down the railing to make sure you don't fall with how fast you're going. See Odina's haphazard parking job through the glass window, through the glass front doors of the apartment before you even get out of the building. She's parked in the middle of two parking spaces with the tire rolled inelegantly up onto the curb. Oh my god. I would die. <laughs> <laughs> I would die if someone was, like, picking me up like that. Any further ahead and she would have nudged the bumper of the car in front of her. You trot up to the car, pulling open the door and hopping in. Nice parking job. Padina makes a face at you, already putting the car in reverse in an attempt to wriggle out of her parking spot. Yeah, okay, hello to you too, Anemone. Hope you're doing lovely. The whole car bounces as Odina rolls her tires off the curb. Love you, Odina. Love you too, loser. Ready to be trapped in the car with me for two and a half hours? I've never been more ready for anything in my entire life. Odina laughs. It's warm and sweet. She pulls out onto the road and merges seamlessly into traffic. You doing good? Sleep well? Yeah, I slept okay. Got a lot of work done last night, which is great. That's great. I'm not sure how... You have so much self-discipline. If it weren't for the fact that the salon would literally fall apart without me, I think I would just never do anything ever. Doing nothing is always a good thing. If I didn't have to pay bills, I would definitely do nothing. Mood. Odina laughs, strumming her fingers against the steering wheel. I think I just might do nothing anyway. Salon can wait. Odina's phone is resting in the cradle of the phone mount attached to her windshield. The automated voice speaks out in the next direction. 
Turning left at the falling light, over the car's Bluetooth radio. Silent for a couple moments, but... Silent for a couple moments, you have a feeling that this drive is gonna feel quite long. Maybe you should try to preoccupy yourself in the meantime. What would you like to do? To retain yourself with what you brought, talk to Odina, text Artemis, snap. We're gonna talk to Odina first. You excited? Have you ever been to look for? Odina looks over to you, diverting her attention from the road for a moment. She grins brightly. I'm so excited. I haven't been on a trip like this in forever. I spent so much time at work, it's so nice to be able to get away. Haven't been a lake haven't been to the lake though. No, this will be my first time. Me too. It's so close. But I've never thought about going. Odina Cassio looks that's more than a little dubious. You've never gone because you don't have a car in Emini. <laughs> that is true, I don't have a car. Reach over and flick her on the shoulder. She flicks you right back. Yeah, okay, I know. But we're going now, which is gonna be fun, right? What is there even to do by the lake? Lots of things, I think. I know Colia mentioned that the lakeside town is pretty cute. Also, little storefronts and stuff like that. I think the whole plan is to go around the town for a bit until it starts to get dark and have dinner at the lake during sunset. Oh, that's so nice. I'm so I'm excited. Thank you so much for asking me to come. Dana smiles softly, her cheeks going rosy. Your heart hurts. You love her so much. Oh, of course. It really is the, la the least that I could do. I love doing things with you, you know? Time spent with you is my favorite time. Odina! You're gonna make me cry! <laughs> Odina laughs. She puts her hand over the console between the seats to pat your thigh affectionately. You cover her hand with yours, feeling the chill of her rings against your palm. You think that, maybe, she is the best friend you have ever had. Okay, now we're gonna text the moth. You are so curious to see what Artemis is doing right now. Especially since the both of you are going to the same place. Are they in the car too? Or are they already at the lake town? Besides, you haven't tested them yet today. And you think you're starting to get withdrawals or something. <laughs> Take your phone out and unlock it. Navigating to your text messaging app. You've gotten a couple unread messages from some other people, but you can always check those later. Type out a quick message. OMG, are you excited for today or what? It's not even 30 seconds after you send the text before the typing bubble pops up on the left side of the screen. Artemis always texts back so quickly. It's almost a little funny. Um, yeah! I'm in the car right now! A smiley face. <laughs> Me too! I love being a passenger. <laughs> okay, right? Nothing beats sitting in the backseat doing absolutely nothing while your friends drive you around being unable to drive has its perks. I mean, true. I would definitely agree with you on that one. You sneak a peek over at Odina, who's paying so much attention to the road that you think she's forgotten that you're there. Can't help but crack a smile, looking back over at your phone. Have you been up to the lakeside before? Yeah, I have. Just once, though. Mordag invited Kuro and I to her parents' place for her birthday this past May. It's a pretty cute town. I think you'll like it. I bet I will. Just excited to hang out with everyone. Although I'm not sure if Kuro and Kolia like me very much. Oh, do you don't say that. Two of them are just weird. They're warm up to you, don't worry. And honestly, I think you would know if they don't like you. They definitely don't not like you. That's that's reassuring. This is a scary thing to think about. Relieving, but scary. You don't think you ever want to experience what it's like to be disliked by Kuro or Kolia. You'd think you might just evaporate into thin air if they ever did so much as glare at you. Okay, this does make me feel a little better. Good. <laughs> a face with the nose, oh my god. There's a pause between this message and the next, a bit longer than all of the others. You watch Artemis begin to type, then stop, then begin to type again. I'm excited to see you. You stare at this text for a second. Your ears grow a little hot. Your thumbs hover over the screen for a moment. I'm excited to see you too. It's gonna be a great day. Definitely will be. There's another pause, then another text comes through. A 
Okay, I've got to put my phone down. I'm starting to get car sick. Oh, <laughs> I'll see you when we get there, okay? Okay, see you soon. Entertain yourself with what you brought. Oh, duh, you literally brought something to turn yourself with during the drive. Might as well bring it out now. You're so glad you remembered to bring your headphones with you today. You don't think you'd go anywhere without them. They're simply too integral to your entire existence. Plus, you know, what do you know won't mind if you put something on and zone out for a little while? Grab your headphones out of your bag on the floor, untangling them and plugging them into your phone. You pop the buds into your ears and begin a browsing music library for something to listen to. You've been listening to the same album on repeat for the past couple of days, and honestly, you can stand to listen to it again. But you figure that it's probably a good idea to switch it up. Navigate to one of your favorite playlists and put it on shuffle. You promptly check out You promptly check out of reality. Music streaming into your ears. I guess this is where we take a nap. Embarrassing as it is, you've always had this childlike tendency to fall asleep when you're in a passenger in someone's car. Not sure if it's because of your shitty sleep schedule or if your body just likes falling asleep in cars. But the longer Odina drives, the more you feel like nodding off. It doesn't help that you were up so late last night working. At least you know that you'll be safe from, from Odina taking pictures of you sleeping. Because she's way too preoccupied with driving to bother blackmailing you with cringy photos. Your eyelids begin to grow heavy. Before you know it, you're fast asleep against the car window. Okay. Okay. You're awoken by a tapping on your shoulder. So light you can barely even feel it. Nemini, hey, we're here. Mm hmm? There's another beat. And you feel Odina poke your cheek. I'm gonna leave you in the car if you don't wake up, sleepyhead. You groan, lifting your head from the window. There's a wicked crick in your neck now. It's gonna be a pain in the ass to deal with for the next couple of hours. Get out of the car. Odina, not far behind you. Once you're outside, you take a moment to look at your surroundings. You're parked right in front of a house that's painted a soft blue. Foliage around the porch is lush and green. Large trees hanging over the lawn, spilling leaves all over the grass. Houses next door and across the street have the same lakeside charm. It's warm out right now. The sun is shining fiercely down onto you. But you're sure that as the day drags on, It'll start to get exponentially cooler. Especially since you're by the water now. The driveway is another car. This one being one you think you might have seen when you visited our Mrs. Place last week. There are stickers and decals all over the back of the car and a scratch on the bumper. It's definitely their car. It looks a lot like a car Artemis would drive, but they can't drive. If you're not sure whose car it is, actually, it is in actuality. Dina's on the sidewalk now, shouldering her purse that she has retrieved from the back seat. She's beckoning you over. Come on, we can't stand outside forever. Wait, I forgot to get my stuff too. Give me a sec. You dip back into the car to grab your bag as well, and then lead back out, shutting the door, moving to stand next to Odina on the sidewalk. Do we just go in? Whose house is this anyway? It's Mordag's parents' house, apparently. But her parents are supposedly away on holiday right now. So we have the place to ourselves. I just noticed that Odina has a little cloud over her head. That's so cute. I don't think we're going to get... Going to be here... F ah. I don't think we're going to be here a bunch today, though. I'm pretty sure we're just here to meet up with everyone and then go out into the town. Oh, well, that sounds okay with me. They're all inside, though. Medina pulls her phone out from her back pocket. She must have taken it out of a She must have taken it out of the phone holder in the car when you weren't paying attention. And she had a clown in the beginning? I did not notice. <laughs> Oops. You watch her tap through some notifications and text messages. Her expression is thoughtful. But after a beat, it brightens. Yeah, yeah. It looks like it. Colia texted and said that everyone's been here for about 20 minutes now. Let's go ahead and go up. 
Odina begins to walk over, walk up the sidewalk to the front porch. We scramble to follow her. Over her shoulder, you can see her texting someone. Probably Kolya, if you're being honest. The front door swings open before the two of you are even up the porch steps. It startles you, but Odina just whips her head up, taking her attention away from her phone to direct it at who's at the door. Her blue hair seems to float around her face. Kolia! Dina! Odina gallops up the remaining steps, Kolia, at the door and holding it open with her shoulder. But it nearly closes on her when Odina goes in for a big hug. You watch them hug for a moment, going up to the porch at a much slower pace. When Kolia and Odina pull away from each other, Kolia's eyes are carefully. Kolia eyes you carefully, seemingly taking you in from your head to your toes. Oh my god. <laughs> Do not perceive me. I feel like... I don't like being perceived. Please. It makes your face flush. You're not sure if it's because you're embarrassed. Hey, Anemone. Um, hey. Good to see you. Mmm. Mood. <laughs> Is everyone inside? Kolya's expression softens when she turns back to Odina. It's kind of sweet. Yeah. Here, come in. Kolya pushes the door open more with her shoulder, coaxing the two of you in with the wave of her hand. Odina bounds into the house, and you're not far behind. The inside of the house is just as idyllic and charming as the exterior. It's filled with whites, grays, and blues, and decorated like a family had been raised here. On some of the walls, you can see pictures of what appears to be little Mordag and her parents. Aww! Kolia cuts in front of both of both you and Odina, leading you through the entryway and through a narrow hallway that opens into the living room and the kitchen. At the kitchen island stands Kuro, Mordag, and Artemis, all of them laughing about something. Artemis is the first to notice the three of you come into the door, come into the room. Their eyes meet yours and you watch them light up. It does something funny to your chest. Oh. Hey guys. Hey Artemis. Hi! Good to see that you got here safely, Kuro. What? Good to see that you got here safely. Kuro got us lost. I did not get us lost. You guys wouldn't shut up while the direction thing was speaking. <laughs> you got us lost, man. I was even telling him where to go, too. It's my house, after all. Shut up! Shut up, all of you! You're lucky I didn't drive a stupid car off the highway and into the trees. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Mood. Last time I checked, the stupid car is your car. Look at his little... <laughs> That's so cute. Kuro punches Artemis a couple times on the shoulder. Artemis puts Kuro in a headlock with what looks like practiced ease. But like... The horns. <laughs> Kuro clauses Artemis' arm pretending to choke. Oh my god, so you're killing him. Good. <laughs> Do you guys have any snacks in this joint? I'm starving. Yeah, there's some stuff in the pantry. Come over here and we can make take a look. Kuda has escaped from Artemis' headlock and is now wandering over to the couch where Kolia has settled down. Odina follows Mordag to the corner of the kitchen, leaving Artemis standing at the island. Everyone seems to be winding down after long car rides. It's only just past 11.30, so, so it seems like everyone wants to relax a bit before heading out into town to hang out. Might as well do the same, but you don't have to do it alone. Who do you want to talk to? Who do we want to talk to? Because, like, I want to talk to Artemis, but I want to talk to Odina, and I feel like I should talk to Kuro and Kolia. Let's talk to these, these guys. I decide to sit down in the armchair next to the couch that Kuro and Kolia are sitting on. Which is a bold move considering that the two of them sort of still scare you shitless. That's why you need to talk to them! There's no way to get over that if you don't try to talk to them, right? Yes, exactly! You're sure that Artemis would be proud of you for at least getting this far. 
When you sit down in the chair, you feel the back of your neck prickle. Don't mind me adjusting. You feel the back of your neck prickle when both Kuro and Kolia slide their gazes over to you in unison. Oh god, I'm so scared of them. They're not talking to each other, just sitting beside each other while on their phones. It still feels like you interrupted something. Kuro looks at you for a moment, longer than Kolia does. He's the first one to speak. So you and Artemis are close, huh? Look at that. Look at that grin on his face. Oh my god. The glare that Kolia whirls onto Kuro is so vicious that you think you might melt even though you're not the intended target. Kuro! Kuro sighs, exasperated. What? I'm just asking. There's nothing wrong with asking. Kolia grumbles something under her breath at him. Kuro grumbles something back, elbowing her in the ribs. All of Kolia's snakes hiss at him simultaneously. You watch it all with a terrified fascination. Um, I wouldn't say that we're close, but I'd like to say that we're good friends. Kuro looks like he wants to mention something really badly. You don't know what it is, but you're kind of glad that he doesn't. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, sure. You're not sure what that's supposed to mean. Ignore him. He's annoying. You remember Artemis saying something very similar when you went over to their place last week. <laughs> no, it's alright. There are a lot worse questions that he could have asked, I guess. Oh yeah, a lot worse. <laughs> a lot worse! He says this with something of a maniacal smile on his face. Coley smacks him on the arm. You are rather certain that you do not want to know what other questions he has to ask. Okay, we're gonna talk to gonna talk to Odina now. Dina's sitting at the island now. It seems that Mordag has helped her find a snack of cracker rounds and hummus. She's gonna talk She's going to town on them right now. <laughs> so much so that you're pretty sure she doesn't notice when you first sit down. She only looks over at you when you reach over to grab a cracker of your own. Hey! Hi! You dip the cracker in the container of hummus by Odin's hand and pop it in your mouth. Seems like the hummus is out. It's of the olive tapenade variety. Which happens to be one of your favorite hummus varieties. Interesting. The two of you eat together in silence for a long moment before Odina taps you on the forearm with the knuckle of her first finger. That's so specific. Did anyone tell you anything about what we're doing? Shake your head. Nope. Okay, good. Now you can hear from me first. So what I'd heard from Kolia was that we're gonna chill here for a little bit. And when everyone starts to get restless, which is probably gonna end up being soon, we're gonna head on to town. This town is kinda small, but there's not a ton- But there's a ton- What? This town is kinda small, so there's not a ton of stuff to do. There's definitely a bunch of cute things that we can do to occupy ourselves before it starts to get dark. When it starts to get dark, we're gonna head over to the beach. You know, it's funny because for some reason I was under the impression that lakes didn't have beaches. One doesn't typically associate a beach with the lake. No. So I see where you're coming from. Right? Like, beaches are such an ocean thing? Why are there beaches at lakes? Is this lake even that big? It's one of the biggest in the area, Odina. Okay, but... But why? Why does it have a beach? It's just weird and suspicious to me. <laughs> Relatable. Local pizza isn't open. I was gonna try to get a pie and pick it up. Oh no, I'm sorry, Brooke. Maybe you can try tomorrow? Today is Sunday. So, maybe you can try tomorrow, though, hopefully. You're trying really hard to keep a straight face right now. I think the only way I'll be able to rationalize it is if I tell myself that all lakes are just mini oceans. <laughs> That makes sense, right? I mean, I guess, when you put it that way, it sort of makes sense. A lot of sense. Don't mind me checking my phone. Don't mind me. I'm getting worried about being real now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can, you can go tomorrow. I mean, I guess, when you put it that way, it sort of makes a lot of sense. 
Okay, great, because I think we should start a petition to rename every lake Mini Ocean instead. At this rate, you don't think you're going to end up hearing the rest of the day's itinerary. Okay, let's talk to Mordag. Now that Mordag has helped Odina obtain a snack from the pantry, he's hanging out over by one of the counters on the far side of the kitchen, munching on a snack of her own. Looks like she's eating salted seaweed squares. What are you eating? Mordai looks up at you, wide-eyed. Part of the seaweed snack is sticking to her bottom lip. She looks down at the package, seemingly investigating what she's eating as if she's... As if she hadn't exactly looked at it before. Oh my god. Seaweed snack. She holds the package out to you and raises her eyebrows. You don't think you've ever seen seaweed snacks before. And it feels almost rude to decline food in Mordag's own home. Thank you. Reach out and take a few. You can feel the tiny gradual salt on the tips of your fingers. Mordag nods idly. She's watching you look at them. Of course. Put one to your lips and take an experimental lick. You see Mordag's mouth quirk up at the corners. They're good, I promise. Feel your ears grow hot. It's always embarrassing when someone watches you eat. Push a whole square into your mouth. Tastes exactly how you would expect it to taste. It really is just salted seaweed. It's kind of odd. It's not bad at all. Actually, quite good. Mordek watches you cycle through these thoughts for a solid several moments. Her smile grows. You like them? You know, yeah, I do. They're pretty good. Mordek smiles for real this time. Your heart jumps in your throat. You swear... That... She has multiple rows of razor-sharp teeth. <laughs> Something you don't think you've noticed until now. Take some more. She holds a package out to you again. You're pretty sure that you cannot refuse. Take a couple more squares, adding to the ones already in your hand. Mordag comes in approval. I think there might even be more packages in the pantry if you want to take a look. Hesitate for a beat too long. Mordag smiles again. But I'm okay with sharing. We can take the rest back that's with us to Lakeside tonight. Oh yeah, the lake. You almost forgot that going to the lake was the whole purpose of the trip in the first place. Sounds like a good idea to me. Mordag munches a little more on another seaweed snack. Looking thoughtful, she raises a finger. Her eyebrows lifting again. That reminds me. We need to come up with a list of snacks to bring with us to the lake tonight. She peers at you. It almost feels like she's looking right through you. The lake, the lake. Artemis seems to trust you quite a bit, so I suppose I'll trust you too. Do you want to help me make that list? The way she said that has you struggling not to flush. What has Artemis said about you to her? It's like she she's always mentioning what Artemis says or thinks about you. And your curiosity is kind of killing you. It's definitely... Definitely killing. Love how you raised your finger. <laughs> it's so difficult to like not read these things and like do them. But like <laughs> it's so immersive. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate your feedback. <laughs> um sure, I'd love to help. Where Dad grins again, flashing those horrifyingly impressive teeth at you a second time. All right, awesome. Two of you spend the next... Two of you spend the next bit creating a list of snacks for later tonight. On Mordak's phone, she insists that the two of you put the seaweed snacks on the list. You agree. It was mostly for her sake than for yours. That word is just in my head now after last night. <laughs> oh my god. Honestly. Okay, talk to Artemis. You settle up to Artemis at the back side of the island, nudging, nudging their upper arm with your shoulder. They're looking at something on their phone. But they slide their phone to the other side, to the side when they notice that you're there. They look down at you, corners of their mouth tilted upwards. Hey. Hi, how's it going? You nudge Artemis again. They nudge you right back. Good. I'm excited for whatever we're gonna end up doing today. This neighborhood is cute, so I'm excited to see what the rest of the towns look like. 
It's really nice. The sunset is also really beautiful. It's gonna be a good day. Artemis sighs suddenly. The shoulders slump a bit. I do wish we had a couple more days out here, though. Nice to get away sometimes. For some reason, I feel like I really need it, even though I know that I literally never do anything. Mood. No, you do a lot of things. Artemis scrunches their mouths to the side, averting their gaze. No, I really don't. I do, like, three things tops. I don't even have a real job. They laugh then. They laugh then. It's Rai. Oh god, no. They laugh then, it's Rai. Okay. Oh my god, go back. There's nothing wrong with that, I think. Don't exactly have a real job either. Gig economy isn't exactly the most friendly one. Besides, if you never do anything, then what do I do? I'm very certain that you do about 10 times more things than I do. I'm the one who doesn't do anything. You need time away from everything more than I ever would. Well, there's something wrong with wanting a break, you know? Even if you do nothing. Having breaks is good. Yeah. Artemis sighs again, but this time it's lighter. There's a ghost of a smile on their lips. Yeah, you're right. We both deserve this. Yeah, we absolutely do. Maybe we can have a longer break another time. You pull out to pat Artemis's hand reassuringly. It's a mindless gesture, and you don't think anything of it. But when your palm touches the back of their hand, Artemis looks at you in a way that makes your heart kind of stutter. You watch their cheeks color, which makes your cheeks color, and you pull your hands back shyly. Artemis turns their face away from you, their lashes dropping over their eyes when they dip their head. They're chewing on their bottom lip. You're trying to make sure that no one in the kitchen just saw that. You make direct eye contact with Kolia, who's just... <laughs> who's just starting to rise from the couch, and it makes your heart seize in your chest like something... Like someone grabbed it by the neck. You try to school your face into indifference, but thank God, it doesn't seem like... She saw any of whatever that was. <laughs> okay, is everyone ready to bust out out of this joint or what? Yes. Hell yeah. Awesome. Okay, so I'm not sure if everyone knows what's going on. So I'm gonna let everyone know. Capish? Capish, boss. <laughs> More deck snorts. Colia continues talking. Short version is that we're going into the town until it gets dark, and then we're gonna see we're gonna go see the beach and watch the sunset. Sound good? Dina flashes Kolya a corny little thumbs up. Winking and peeking out peeking out her tongue. Oh. Sounds good. Sounds good to me. From the couch, Kuro speaks up. What are we gonna do in town though? Just stand around until the sun starts setting? There's a bunch of stuff to do in town. You can just walk there and check check it out. Then see what everyone wants to do. Or get split up if people want to do different things. Yeah. Yeah, what she said. Anyway. Does everyone want to get a move on? Because I want to get a move on. I have a cheesy tourist shopping itch to scratch. <laughs> it's crazy because so do I. I really have the urge to buy the shittiest t-shirt possible. <laughs> There aren't that many cheesy tourist shops here. When we came for your birthday, we visited at least five cheesy tourist shops. I think it's, that's quite a few. Mordek sighs dramatically, but she's smiling. Okay, fine. Maybe there are a couple. I suppose we can go visit those. Honestly, we can sort out where we're going when... Honestly, we can sort out where we're going when we get into the town. I'm sure there are going to be several places you guys are going to want to stop by. Is that good with everyone? Yeah. Yep. It's cool with me. Okay, sweet. I'll lead y'all to where you need to go since I'm literally the only one who knows how to get around this place. <laughs> the group exchanges a couple more words before everyone begins to collect their things in anticipation to leave. You didn't bring a whole bunch of stuff, just a single bag. You shoulder it and follow the others 
as they begin to filter out the front door. Mordad leads the group, going down the porch steps and trailing down the sidewalk. The rest of you are close on their heels, on her heels, looking around the neighborhood as you travel through it. It feels like you don't walk for very long, with all the chatter surrounding you. You don't think you've been in a crowd of people like, like this in a while. Typically, it has always been you and Otina, and Artemis too nowadays. But this is nice, you won't lie. Being surrounded by so many people feels good. I feel like you're part of something. Before you know it, Mordag has led everyone into town. She's excitedly telling some story about some freak accident she had as a child. But if you're being honest, you're not exactly paying attention. You're not paying attention to her freak accident? What do you mean? <laughs> More you're more occupied with taking a look at the quaint little downtown area that Mordag has brought everyone to. You wouldn't practice consi you wouldn't particularly consider it to be a downtown per se. There are several streets filled with tightly packed storefronts and restaurants. It's definitely small and definitely geared towards tourists, but it's cute. Just like the others has said it would be. Mordag seems to be done with her story now, as everyone else in the group is looking around at the surrounding buildings. Oh wow, it's small. Well yeah, it's a small town. It's nice though. Like, this is adorable. We have so many cute pictures to post on Flashback later. She's already pulling out her phone. Her eyes are sparkling. Just because it's small doesn't mean there's not stuff to do though. Trust me, there's stuff to do on literally every corner of this town. Imagine that. Do you want to split up? What for? Kolya pauses, her bottom lip sticking out. Yeah, never mind. It'll be more fun if we do everything together anyway. Besides, I'm sure Kuril will get himself lost. And we'll have to ditch the entire afternoon to look for him. Oh no. <laughs> You're here, Adina Snicker. And you struggle to stifle a laugh of your own. Next to you, Artemis is biting back a grin. What the fuck? I would not get myself lost. I think you would. Unfortunately, I would have to agree with the others on this one. Since the direction is the worst I have ever seen. <laughs> Kuro points fiercely to everyone in turn. His teeth bared. Artemis <laughs> Artemis starts to laugh. Coley and Mordag aren't far behind. None of you bitches are gonna make it home. <laughs> oh my god. Nimini and I drove my car here. So I think we're gonna make it home just fine. Kuro appears at Odina then. Seemingly leaving, leveling her with his stare. I suppose I will allow you and an enemy to arrive home safely. <laughs> Odina snorts her mouth, tugging up the corners. She shares an amused look with you. Thank you, kind sir. <laughs> we appreciate your mercy, oh my god. Kuro turns back to the rest of the group, waving his hand at you and Odina. See? This is what I'm talking about here. You guys need to talk to me like this. Like we're serfs working on your state, my lord. <laughs> Quite. Alright then, my liege. Do we have your permission to pick somewhere to visit first? Your loyal serfs are getting a little tired of standing around in the middle of the street. Yes, I think that'll be fine. Look at that little pout. That's so cute. <laughs> okay, good. Because we've got options here. The farmer's market is going on right now. Since it's the weekend, I know people sell other wares over there too. There are those shitty tourist shops you guys were talking about earlier. There's one combined with the thrift store. Ooh, that I think is worth checking out. Has some of the most cursed items I've ever seen. <laughs> nice. We could also get food if you guys want to. My favorite ice cream parlor... Ever is only two blocks from here. We used to go there all the time growing up and would love to take you guys. Mordag definitely Mordag is definitely right. You've got plenty of options. You have until it starts getting dark to linger around the downtown area, so you might as well pick a couple of things to do before everyone decided to head down to the lakeside for the sunset. Where do you want to go? I would like to go to this thrift store. If everyone else wants to go to the thrift store, I'd be down. Oh my god, it's me. I want to go. 
Me too, are you kidding? I really just need to buy something so awful. <laughs> Laughter ripples through the group. You guys are so bizarre, but I get it. Like, let's go. It's not far from here at all. She waves at everyone to get them to follow her and begins to walk down the street. Even though she's short, she moves fast. And the group has to almost pick up the pace to keep up with her. She leads you down the street and turns a couple corners until you arrive at a thin building crabbed between two restaurants. In the window displays... In the window displays are filled with every item imaginable. You can only assume that the inside is the exact same way. You can see those tacky tourist t-shirts that everyone was talking about earlier. Hanging up on the top of the displays. Gods, this is going to be so interesting. All of you filter into the store. The place is quite literally bursting with stuff everywhere you look. There are clothing racks scattered around the place. Towering displays of sunglasses, buttons, magnets, snow globes, t-shirts, sim suits hanging from the walls. It's an amalgamation of every single possible store. You wouldn't be surprised if they had a freezer with ice cream for sale in the back somewhere. <laughs> I mean, you gotta make your money somehow. Artemis and Colia are already vanishing into the depths of the store, talking energetically between each other. Odina is looking at a precariously stacked shelf of shoes. You're not sure where Mordag and Coral went. But you're sure they're around here somewhere. Kinda looks like a gift shop. Yeah. Might as well get to looking at some stuff too. Maybe I'll find something that catches your eye. Try to take a look at some of the thrifty items out on the floor. There are racks of shirts, jackets, pants, skirts. They have it all. You begin to sift through the rack of pants. You can't help but get distracted by a painfully tacky shirts hung up on the wall. <laughs> on the other side of the store are several tables are several tables and racks filled with these absolutely shitty shirts. <laughs> Artemis and Colia are over there. Curious, you wander over to them to see what finds they're discovering. Find anything good? You assume yes, because the two of them are completely hysterical. <laughs> Artemis is laughing so hard, they're gasping for breath. Colia is holding up a shirt of her chest, tilting her chin up at you, struggling not to laugh. Look at this. The shirt is plain black, but... <laughs> oh my god. But emblazoned on the front of the series is a series of texts that reads, I support LGBTQ. Liberty Guns Bible Trucks Barbecue. <laughs> I hate that so much. <laughs> oh, I hate that so much. You bark out a stupid laugh. Oh my god, it's what? It's good, isn't it? Wait, wait, wait. Look at this one too. She tosses a shirt she's holding over her shoulder and picks up another one from the table. When it unfolds, your jaw drops. Oh god, what is it? <laughs> it's another black shirt. But this time it has a graphic of Naruto wearing gold grills and holding a bottle of expensive cognac towards a viewer. <laughs> it's unreal. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay, but I need that one. <laughs> no, I saw it first. I claimed it. That is such bullshit. Trapping Naruto is mine. <laughs> Trapping Naruto. <laughs> Coleus snorts, her face pinching up. And she starts to laugh again. Artemis is already gone. Their cheeks are flushed. You can't help but laugh along with them. Nemini, there are so many more. You have got to get one with us. We can match with the shittiest shirts possible. <laughs> Artemis turns to, to you then. Their eyes wide and pleading. You have to pull a face to keep from laughing again. <laughs> oh my god, please. <laughs> They're stupidly cheap too. Only ten bucks. What's not to love? Oh my god. I, we love... Cheap $10 shirts, you know that they're good when they're less than $15. I would literally love you forever if you buy a dumb shirt with us. Silly, but you feel your face heat when they say that. You grin, unable to deny them. Okay, okay, let me look at them. Yes, oh my gods, we win. <laughs> look at their faces, they're so funny. <laughs> I've officially secured the bag. Haven't you even looked at anything yet? 
Colia is already handing you shirts to look at. Artemis hovers right over your shoulder, peeking at everything Colia gives to you. The three of you look at these stupid shirts for way too long. They're all just so awful. It's incredible. After a while... Oh my god. After a while, you've collected three shirts. First one is a black shirt that says simply says, MILF HUNTER in white text. Another one says, I'm the proud son-in-law of a freaking awesome mother-in-law. Yes, she bought me this shirt. <laughs> the last one features Mickey Mouse glove hands from your heart, which has a weed leaf inside. The text below the graphic reads, I love smoking weed. Oh my god. Artemis and Colia want you to pick something. Pick between the three. They've already settled their trapping Naruto dispute after the heated three rounds of rock, paper, scissors. Colia got to keep it. <laughs> Artemis is going to get the LGBTQ shirt. Which one do you want to get? <laughs> I kind of want MILF Hunter. I want MILF Hunter. <laughs> I have $49. MILF Hunter choice is the obvious choice here. Like, it literally just says MILF Hunter on it. It's perfect. This one. This... This one is the one. Oh, hell yeah. Love MILFs. <laughs> totally. Good pick. I was partial to that one anyway. Nice. <laughs> you like MILFs? Who doesn't? They're right. They are indeed right. Three of you head over to the cashier with your shirts in hand. There's no line, so you go straight to the counter to check out. Check out a speedy. And three of you trot over to the front of the store, where the others are. One shitty shirt richer. <laughs> three of you walk to the front of the store. Kuro, Mordag, and Odina are clustered around by a display of souvenir magnets. Oh, they're back. What's up? You guys done? Hell fucking yeah, dude. Colia brandishes her newly purchased shirt. Flashing trap in Naruto for everyone to see. The collective stares that come from the other three has laughter threatening to purple up your throat. <laughs> oh my god, what is that? It's Naruto. I know that, but why is he gangsta? <laughs> why not is the real question. I'd have to agree with Cole. <laughs> What's the harm of trapping Naruto? Trap in Naruto? Where Dag looks so shocked that it makes you laugh for real this time. Artemis and Kolia aren't far behind you. Kolia already looks like she's about to double over. Dino starts to giggle. Can we continue the trapping Naruto? This course outside, it's hot in here. Anything for you, Kuro. Can it? <laughs> Everyone begins to migrate out of the store, which is probably. Probably for the best, as this trapping Naruto conversation is starting to get heated. Farmer's Market. Let's go to Farmer's Market. Farmer's Market seems fun. I'd love to see what they've got there. Me too. Maybe they'll have cute jewelry like the one back home does. They do. I think one of the ladies I used to buy jewelry from here, from when I was a kid, still sells stuff. I think you'll like a lot of stuff that they have here. BRB, have a good BRB, Brooke. Does the farmer's market sound good with everyone? There's a positive hum around the group. Yeah, sounds good to me. Yep. Good to me too. Maybe you can pick up snacks for tonight too? That's what I was thinking too, same brain. Come on, it's pretty close by. Just down the street a little. She beckons everyone to follow as she begins to walk down the sidewalk again. I have a feeling that you're going to be walking. That there's going to be a lot of walking today. Mordag leads everyone down the street and takes the left at the crosswalk. You can see the farmer's market. She's talking about even from here. At the end of the street is a long row of pop up can canopy tents. Vendors have set up shop under each tent. And even from where you're standing, you can see a variety of wares being sold. As you get closer, 
They can see everything from house decor to fruits and vegetables to candles and soaps. I was about to say soups. But they're soaps. <laughs> there are many people milling around as well. And you're certain that the market stretches all the way down to the end of the street. There are many things to look at. It's almost overwhelming. Six of you more or less scattered between vendors, peeking at things at their at your own paces. You have some money to spend and you're itching to to spend it. Especially now that you're surrounded by so many things that seem to be calling your name. But should you spend your money now? Or should you spend it on something else later? I I have so much money. I have so much money though. I'm glad we've been saving so much money. Um, let's not spend anything, though. You and the others spend almost an hour and a half wandering around the farmer's market. So many things to look at and to buy. Even though you aren't buying anything, it's still so fun to look at. To look. Plus, you get to weigh in on everyone else's purchases if they ask you to. You're happy. You would love to do something like this again sometime. Ice cream. Ice cream sounds so good right now. I'd love to go. Love to go there if that's cool with everyone else. Yes, it's the best ice cream in the world. You ha we have got to go. Best ice cream in the world? I'm sold. If it's even slightly mediocre, we're gonna have problems. <laughs> kind of problems? You're gonna start crying? I hate you so much. It was one time. Oh my god. When did he start crying? I have to know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's what? Kuro turns on Kolia. His expression dangerous. If you had a little less self-preservation, you might have found it funny. Nothing. It's nothing. Oh my god, he is a sweetie. I love Kuro. <laughs> I think I missed this, Mordag. Clue me in. Mordag, do not clue them in. Mordag taps her chin. Her lips pulling up to reveal a deep smile. Kuro looks like he's about to pop. Okay, under one condition. You buy me whatever ice cream I want when we get to the parlor. Kuro looks like he's about to vehemently decline, but then his gaze flicks between Artemis and Kolia. He look extremely interested. <laughs> he folds his arms, averting his gaze. Fine. Blackmail? More like efficient bargaining. Compromise, if you will. Mordak's voice is smug. Kuro is pouting. <laughs> the group begins to move down the street at Mordak's direction, following her to the ice cream parlor. Parlor is not far away. Maybe only a five minute walk from where you guys were in the town square? The place is quaint. The exterior painted in stripy resin plates. Through the big glass window, you can see a small line of customers. Mordag is the first to get to the door and she holds it open for everyone else. Doing silly mock bows as each <laughs> as each of you pass by. Goosebumps raise on your arms once you're inside. It's freezing in here. Which is to be expected. But you weren't prepared for the temperature drop. Looks like a couple of others weren't ready either. If their change imposter is any indication. Kolia is rubbing her arms like she just stepped into the snow. Because of the line at the front of you, you have plenty of time to skim over the menu and see what you want. I have so many flavors, but it's a pain to choose which one you want. There's a beat, then you feel someone tap on your arm. One tap becomes a drumming on a fingertips. Since it shivers up your spine and you try not to stiffen, Looking over your shoulder to see Artemis behind you. What you getting? You smile a little, directing your attention back to the menu boards. Not sure yet. Have you decided? Artemis hums. They touch your arm again with the lightest brush of their fingers, before withdrawing their hand. You're hyper aware of their presence behind you. It's a tie between pistachio chip and raspberry sorbet. Ooh, sounds good. I might get one of those too. Salted caramel truffle one sounds good though. I'm torn. Rightfully so. Choices are hard. Line is starting to inch up. 
you make your decision quickly. Which ice cream do you want to get? I want, kind of want the raspberry. I want the raspberry. I have to go with raspberry sorbet. It's delicious and dairy free, which is a perfect combo. The line crossed forward, but after a couple moments, your group arrives at the register. Mordag and Kuro order first. His Kuro is paying for both of them. It's Koli and Odina next. On two separate transactions, and after that is you and Artemis. Artemis gestures for you to go ahead of them, so you do, approaching the register. Hey, what can I get started for you? I'll get a single scoop of strawberry sorbet and a falafel cone, please. Sounds good. There's a moment as the cashier goes about scooping your ice cream. Hand oh my god. <laughs> They hand it to you over the glass before going back over to the register to, to ring you out. You take an experimental lick of what you got. It tastes so good, you picked well. I need it. Okay. We're good. It's fine. Cashier is in the middle of ringing you out when they peek up at you again. Are you... Are you and... They point their finger between you and Artemis. Ah, this question again. They don't have to finish their sentence for you to understand. I... Should I pay for them? I mean, they don't have a job. I feel so bad. <laughs> I'm gonna pay for them. I have $40. Yeah, we're together. Artemis sort of startles. Wait, what? <laughs> Go ahead and order, I got it. Artemis's face goes soft. They stick their bottom lip out. Oh, Nemini, you're too sweet. You playfully stick your tongue out at them, closing one eye in a wink. Artemis' expression grows even fonder, if possible. You feel something happy in the pit of your chest. It's my pleasure. Thank you. They direct their attention to the cashier then. I'll get the pistachio chip, please. One scoop and a sugar cone is fine. Awesome. Give me a moment. Cashier dips away from the register again, scooping Artemis's ice cream and handing it to them after a beat. Once Artemis has their ice cream, they finish bringing out the purchase. Alright, it'll be $10. Hand over the money, thank the employee, then go over to where all the others are waiting. The room by the door now, where Daga dresses the group. Everyone good? Yep. Affirmative captain. Where Daga snorts at that one. If she had irises and pupils, she'd probably be rolling her eyes. Alrighty then, troops, let's head out to our next destination. I guess we're done. Looks like everyone is tuckered out from walking, walking around so much. You ended up hitting a couple of other spots that More Daga was really excited about. As well as some other shops that piqued everyone's interest as you were walking around. It was an afternoon full of events. Personally, you're ready for the sunset. The town was fun to walk around and explore, but you're excited for the main event. The beach. Odina had told you that the sun is supposed to be so pretty when it sets over the lake. And you've honestly been ready to see that since you got to town. Everyone is heading back to the house now. The sun is already starting to dip down in the sky, but it's not quite dusk yet, just yet. It's beginning to get cooler. Hopefully, it doesn't get too chilly when it's finally sunset. After about a 10 minute walk, you've arrived back at Mordak's house. She leads the procession, pulling her keys out of her bag and unlocking the front door for everyone. She holds the door open as the group filters back inside the house. She's off, please. Where did I come on? What kind of hooligans do you think we are? <laughs> Seems like the unspoken plan for the next while is to prepare snacks to take the lakeside. To take to the lakeside. At least that's the vibe you're getting from Mordag, who marches in the kitchen like she's on a mission. <laughs> Me. You watch her begin to unload items from her tote bag on her arm. Looks like... She had gone a bunch of things from the farmer's market earlier. Oh, 
She's got slices of meat, fruits, vegetables, and chocolates. It doesn't end. When you think she's hit the bottom of her bag, she keeps pulling out more things. Do you need help with the food? I would love help. Cool. Just let me know what I can do. Mordak has you help her set up two different charcuterie boards. There's a lot of careful arranging involved. <laughs> but they turn out beautifully all. I sealed in containers to make it easier to move them from the house to where we're going to be hanging out for sunset. Two of you pack some other snacks when Koro and Artemis wander into the kitchen. Mordak sends both of them on a mission to find some blankets for you to sit on. Before long, everything is ready. Everyone's gonna have food for days. Mordak basically bringing the entire pantry with her. I'm so scared that my B-reel is gonna ping. And I'm gonna be live. It's starting to get a little darker outside. You can see it through the blinds on the kitchen windows. The others start filtering into the kitchen as you and Mordag are packing up all the food into reusable grocery store bags. Artemis and Kuril arrive with blankets all bundled up in their arms. Mordag begins to beckon people forward, pushing bags of food into her arms for them to carry. Once everything is distributed evenly among the group, Mordag claps her hands excitedly, her grin bright. Is everyone ready? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes, thank gods. How far is the lake again? It's basically the backyard. Wait, what? Mordak sort of laughs to herself. Starting to walk across the house, she beckons everyone to follow. Come on, you'll see what I'm talking about. You and Odina shared a wide-eyed look and get to fo following Mordag. The others close behind. In the living room, there's a glass door that leads to what seems to be the backyard. Mordag opens it up and goes through, trotting out onto the back patio and then down the stairs into the path of the grass. If you look past the fence, the lakeside is literally right there. Mordag wasn't kidding. Oh wow, it's close. See what I mean? You don't have to walk long to find a good spot. The fence gate sort of leads out into the back road of the, to the beach. Must have been nice to grow up so close to the water. Oh yeah, it was awesome. I do miss it a lot. The closest thing we have back in town is a public pool. That's just nasty. <laughs> I hate going to the pool. Mordag leads you to the backyard through the gate and the fence. She waits for everyone to filter through before she closes it. She's almost too short to reach over the gate and lock it. Kolia has to help her. <laughs> oh my god. You start to walk towards the lake. You walk on a shiny little path through the canopy of trees. Shiny. You walk on a skinny little path through the canopy of trees, and slowly, the grass underfoot becomes sandy and scattered with little rocks. You're on the beach in moments. Okay, let's go by a good spot. Beach is pretty much flat, so you'd think that basically any spot would be a good spot. But right here, it's right in the middle. Mordag looks around, observing the location, even though every single place around you looks the exact same. <laughs> yeah, this is great, perfect spot. Everyone begins to set down what they're carrying. Odina starts to take off her shoes. Artemis and Kuro team up to unfold the blankets and lay them down. It's still light outside. But the sun isn't as high in the sky as it had been when you had been walking back to the house earlier this afternoon. Once the blankets are laid out, Mordag starts to take the food out of the bag she'd been carrying. She delicately sets it down a charcuterie board and some sliced oranges she'd prepared. Kolia is the one that has to the bag with the drinks. It's apple cider, very seasonally appropriate. You're carrying a bag with some more food. Everything gets set out rather quickly. Never begins to settle down. Thank you, Mordag. Sentiment ripples throughout the group. Mordag smiles happily, her cheeks a little dark. Of course, guys. I'm really glad everyone came. Appreciate you letting me drag you around all day. It was fun. I enjoyed your little tour guide moment. 
Ah, that's more dad laughing. She has a sweet laugh. She tucks some hair behind her ear and reaches for one of the crackers on the charcuterie boards. As soon as she does that, everyone else starts to dip into the food. Kolia begins to pour the rest of your apple cider in the red solo cups. She brought along with her, of course, these red solo cups. Trust me, I have so many p so many more tour guide moments in me if you guys ever come back. I have so many other things to show you in this town. I'm sure you know a bunch of weird <laughs> I'm sure you know a bunch of weird shit about this place. Well, yeah, I spent so much t of my time as a kid just exploring, going off to places where I probably shouldn't have. I know a lot of weird shit. <laughs> Tell us something. I want to know. More that thinks for a moment. And her whole face brightens like the sun has just dawned on it. Oh my god, there was this one time when people in town were convinced there was a poltergeist in the pizza place? What? Mordag dives into the story head first, her hands moving around like a crazy. <laughs> As she gets more and more into recounting the events, she has everyone hanging by a thread. Even after she finishes the story, everyone's asking questions about it. She ends up delivering delving into another story about how she and her friend in high school had gone ghost hunting at one of the abandoned lighthouses in town. It sounds spooky that Mordag telling all these stories just as it's beginning to get dark. Six of you are the only ones on the beach as far as you can see. You're trying hard not to think about that too much. The sun has dipped lower in the sky, painting it in deep purples and oranges. It reflects onto the water below and seems to make everything glow. Wow, it's so pretty. Yeah. It goes silent for a moment as all of you admire the view. It's beautiful. I don't think you've ever seen anything like it. Does anyone want to go to the water? Oh my god, it's me. Me? I'll come too. Me too. Kolia looks over at you and Artemis, her eyebrow raised curiously. Artemis smiles a little at her. Thing I'm okay right now. I want to stay here for a bit. Okay. Emily? Join you guys in a bit for sure. I want to stay here for a minute too. Dina flashes you a thumbs up from where she is next to Kolia. You grin and send her one right back. Four of them begin to walk towards the water. Dina is twirling around. You can hear Kolia laughing. It's idyllic. A warm sort of contentment floods your chest. For a moment, you feel like you kind of want to cry, but in the best way possible. Besides you, Artemis is munching on some grapes and thin slices of cheese. Peek over at them, only to realize that they're looking at you. <laughs> what? Artemis averts her eyes, suddenly shy. Nothing. <laughs> you smile, it's more affectionate than you initially intended it to be. But you suppose that's alright. No, what is it? Artemis gazes back over at you. The remaining sunlight in the sky illuminates the side of their face and makes them look like something eternal. Ethereal, eternal. You press... They press their lips together, hesitating for a beat. It's just... Thanks for coming. Your mouth forms an O. You weren't expecting them to say that. Especially considering the fact that they hadn't even been the one to invite you in the first place. Oh, well of course. I had a great time today. Artemis looks away again, chewing on their bottom lip. They start to pick at their chip nail polish. No. Mmm. There's another silent moment as you watch Artemis struggle to find the words that they want to say. Suddenly, they look up at you, their eyes piercing behind their glasses. You stare back, eyebrow raised in curiosity. I just like spending time with you. Glad you came. They look like they have more to say, but they don't continue. Instead, their cheeks grow rosy. You observe it with awe. Something that feels startlingly like affection blooming inside you. I like spending time with you too, Artemis. You're one of my favorites. Artemis' mouth quirks up at the corners. They let out a soft little breath, putting a hand on their face to hide their smile. You feel like you've been stabbed. <laughs> you feel like you've been stabbed. Accurate. I am? Yeah. Not too mad that you spilled iced coffee all over me when we first met. <laughs> Please. Artemis laughs. They nudge their knuckles against your upper arm. The touch lingers. Don't remind me. 
That was not my proudest moment. <laughs> but if you didn't, we wouldn't have gotten to hang out. So, don't regret it too much. <laughs> yeah, you're right, but still embarrassing. I mean, at least now I'll never forget your coffee order. Oh my god, do you actually know what it is? I do! I bought you coffee already! You smirk, peeking your tongue out from between your lips. Black iced coffee with cinnamon, right? Yes. Holy shit. <laughs> Couldn't get the smell of it out of my shirt for days. There's no way I wouldn't remember. You watch embarrassment deepen the flesh in their cheeks. They put both of their palms on their face, scrunching their eyes closed. Their nose wrinkles when they when they do that. Nemini! I'm just messing with you! Without thinking, you reach out to lightly pinch her nose with your thumb and point your finger. Skin is warm to the touch. <laughs> Go to do it again mindlessly. Then you stop when you see the way Artemis is looking at you. It's a combination of emotions that you're not exactly sure how to read. Something tells you it's not a bad thing. He rushes over your face. <laughs> he rushes over your face so quickly that you almost feel dizzy. You're not sure when you figured that touching them idly like this was something normal, but it feels awkward now. You start to withdraw your hand, a sheepish apology on the top of your tongue, but Artemis suddenly grasps your wrist. Oh, stopping you. You stare at each other, wide-eyed like deer caught in headlights. <laughs> There's a moment of nothing but this. Artemis's brows furrow. You watch them try to speak, opening their mouth and closing it several times. It... it's okay. Your ears are on fire. You take a breath. Swallowing thickly. <laughs> your fingers flex when Artemis is slowly... loosened grip on your wrist. Um... I'm gonna touch you again. <laughs> Try to keep your hands steady when you reach out for Artemis again. You lick your lips nervously when you see Artemis gaze... Flick briefly to your mouth. Oh, is it gonna happen? Is it gonna happen? <laughs> your heart stutters awkwardly. You're not really sure why it does that. You brush your fingers against the line of Artemis's jaw. You feel them clench their teeth for a moment. When you put your thumb on their chin, they exhale quietly, your eyes litting. You bite the inside of your cheek, your brow drawn tight. The pad of your thumb slides up to. <laughs> To go see inside of the underside of Artemis's bottom lip. There's a beat of nothing, but then Artemis lifts her eyes, looking you straight in the face. Your heart seizes again. <laughs> you lower your hand, your fingers lingering just a second. Nemini, I really like you. <laughs> I can't. Oh my god. <laughs> they blurted out like they couldn't keep it inside of them any longer. You lean back surprised. Artemis looks almost panicked. In the waning light, you can see the scarlet color of their cheeks. Their eyes glisten when they look at you. Like, I... They're floundering, frantically searching for words. You stare up at them. You think you can hear your heartbeat thumping in your ears. I just... I really, really like you. You blink at them owlishly. You're registered what they're saying but so much slower than you should be. You do? Artemis looks like they might start crying. No! <laughs> They're so red and so eager. And suddenly their hand is covering yours. It's warm. I, um... I really do. Have for a little bit now. You think back to the past couple of weeks. All the sweet smiles and fond glances and shared laughter. Artemis has always been quick to blush when they're around you. Especially lately. Maybe this explains the blooming heat in your chest whenever the two of you talk. I hadn't put a lot of thought into it until this very moment, but you. Oh! <laughs> oh my god! Artemis is searching your face, trying to gauge your reaction. You begin to smile. Your free hand comes up so. comes up to gently tuck some of Artemis' hair behind their ear. Wait, it's happening? It's happening! <laughs> <laughs> it's happening. Oh my god. 
They lean into the touch, pushing their cheek into your palm. You could die. I am dying. Oh. Artemis. Hmm? I like you too. <laughs> they look at you. Their eyes are so soft. Warm like taffy, sticky. Warm like taffy, sticky in your hands after handling them too long. You've never seen this expression on them before. It's so affectionate and fond. It makes your heart ache. Have they always looked at you like this? Thank fucking god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Can't help but laugh softly. They smile. It's shy. I got nervous for a second. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. I kind of figured that you would say anyway. What? Really? Artemis averts their gaze. The corner of their mouth pulled up. Sort of. I could tell in the way you look at me. <laughs> Holy shit, huh? <laughs> oh my god, what? How do I look at you? Artemis kind of snickers. You nudge their face away with your hand against their cheek. Then you pinch their nose. They shake you off, grinning. I don't know, like... You like me? Also, you like to touch me a lot. <laughs> I was just drawing conclusions. You make it sound like a science experiment. Kind of is one. You're the specimen of my affection. <laughs> That's so stupid, oh my god. <laughs> they trip over the words, blushing again. No one have a no one has ever said anything like that to you. It's kinda of dorky. You think you like it. That was cringe. Sorry, welcome back, Brooke. Um, it's happening. <laughs> it's happening. Cringe? Cute kind of cringe. My favorite kind of cringe. Wow. <laughs> They're smiling as they say that, even if they try to sound disapproving as possible. Oh, it's happening. <laughs> you smile back. You're filled with contentment like it's a high tide. I'm in time. You are. You are on time. <laughs> Artemis tilts their head a bit, eyeing you tenderly. They have long lashes. There's a beat of nothing. Then Artemis goes red for the hundredth time during this conversation. On the blanket, they brush over your fingers with theirs. It feels like the ghost of a feather. Ah, could... <laughs> Can I kiss you? You nearly explode in that moment. Pretty sure... Pretty sure steam is pouring from your ears right now. <laughs> sure. Oh my god. You try to say it as casually as you can, but internally you're melting into a million different puddles. Artemis smiles again, looking blissful. You can hear the rush of your blood in your ears. Loud like the pulsing of a river. Artemis scoots closer to you, careful not to take their hand from yours. You can almost see your reflection in their glasses. They take their other hand and lift it to your face, brushing some hair away from your forehead. Their touch is gentle. They cup your cheek. They cup your cheek like you're something delicate that they could break if they aren't careful. Okay? You nod, sure that your eyes are huge when you look at them. Yeah. Artemis gives you another one of those small smiles when they're dipping down to meet you. You're holding... You're holding your breath without meaning to, and when their smile goes to yours, you exhale against their lips. Artemis is still smiling, you can feel it. They kiss you softly, sweetly, like they're asking for permission. You can hardly think, all your thoughts are jumbled up tumbleweed in your skull. You kiss them back just as softly, your heartbeat pounding in your ribcage. Artemis doesn't linger too long, pulling away after a couple beats. They don't go far, instead pressing another tender kiss to the corner of your mouth. <laughs> ah! I know! <laughs> I'm crying. You think you could cry? I am. I am crying! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Artemis, le Artemis leans back then, looking the happiest you've ever seen them. You know you're looking at them with stars in their eyes. You good? You good? I'm not good. We're not good. 
They say it while smiling this dopey little smile that makes her eyes squint. You wanna hold them and never let them go. I'm great. Okay, good. Are you good? I'm amazing. <laughs> Can't believe you just let me kiss you. Maybe, if you're nice, I'll let you do it again. Armin's smile turns giddy. It makes your head kind of floaty. Oh really? I'll be sure to be on my best behavior then. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> you and Artemis sit there on the blanket together for a little while longer. Talking about nothing, Artemis has started drawing shapes on the back of your hand with her finger. How long have you been waiting to do this? It makes you think about yourself too. You only, you only had your realization like 10 minutes ago. How long have you wanted to be close with Artemis without even knowing it? You have no idea what all this means for your relationship with Artemis now. You have to sit down and give it some thought. Nemini! Artemis! Both of you whip your heads away from each other to look in the direction of the voice that called your names. An embarrassed flush rushes to your ears and cheeks. <laughs> but you're sure that Odina's far enough away that she can't tell. Besides, it's been steadily getting darker this whole time. On second thought, you don't know if any of the others saw any of that of what just happened between you and Artemis. You hope not, but if they did, you pray that they don't bring it up. <laughs> Are you gonna come to the water or what? Artemis looks back at you, eyebrows raised. Are we? <laughs> you grin devilishly. Come on. You stand up, holding your hand out to them. What? You stand up. Holding your hand out to them to help them up. They take it. You hoist them up with little, with no little effort. You always forget how much bigger they are than you they are. We're coming. You reach for Artemis' hand, beginning to run towards the shore. They take your hand, laughing as you pull them towards the water. Above you, the sky painted orange and midnight blue. The sun casts a fading glow on everything around you, and it's beautiful. You may have a lot to think about when you get home, but you're sure that you never want to forget how you feel in this single moment. Oh my god, cute! <laughs> oh my god. Is that it? Was that the whole thing? Oh my god, there's more. I've been live for five and a half hours. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to finish this game. I don't know if we're going to be able to finish it. So cute, I know! This is adorable, I know! <laughs> Everyone say thank you, Brooke, for buying this game for me. I, okay, cause like, the description said that it was three to five hours. It's been five hours. I'm gonna Google to see estimated time. Yeah, like the description, I already, I did Google it before. It says three to five hours. We've been playing for five hours, but we did take an hour break. And I think I spent like half an hour before before starting. So I don't... I don't know how much longer. I guess we are slow. Yeah. I'm also reading it out loud. Wait, how much money did we have? 52? I'm gonna turn my camera off. Okay. It's been one week since the lake outing. True, the reading. Yeah. It's been one week since the lake outing. Nothing much has happened since then. Just work, work, more work. But it feels like your brain has been filled to the brim with thoughts the whole time. I love you also, Brooke. And also, Garo. <laughs> Everyone that's here, I love you. It's hard to concentrate on all your tasks when you're busy thinking. It's been one week since Artemis told you that they like you. It's been one week since you also told them that you like them. I haven't seen them the entire week. Only shared brief text conversations that never lasted more than half an hour. But you're not sure if it's intentional. It's not like you want to be away from them. You're sure they feel the same, but you think you need time. You're not sure what for, though. Thank you, Garo. 
<laughs> Despite this, there's one thing you are sure about. You like Artemis. You like them more than you thought you did. The more you're left alone with your thoughts, the more you start to realize things. It kinda makes you embarrassed. Plus, all of this realizing business is making it very difficult to get any of your work done. Dino's the only one you would ever be comfortable sharing your feelings with, and... I didn't tell her. I didn't tell her! Can you bear to even tell her? You know, she would keep your feelings for Artemis a secret if you asked her to. But you're just so twisted up inside that you don't think you could even speak the words out loud if you wanted to. Telling Artemis that you like them was an endeavor in of itself. Telling Odina might take your... Telling Odina might make your brain melt out of your ears. <laughs> there have been several moments over the past week where you've almost told her. Moments of comfortable silence in which the two of you were just enjoying each other's company. But you just couldn't. It's okay, though. You'll tell her when you're ready. Speaking of which, you're texting Odina right now. Not about Artemis. But about possibly taking the trek across town to visit her at the salon this weekend. It's been a while since you've visited her at work. She's been begging for you to come so she can tell you some gossip that she apparently cannot tell you over text. Plus, you suppose you can get a free hair trim out of it. Chatting with her for a little while longer until a notification pops up at the top of your screen, you gaze. Your gaze drifts from your chat with Odina to skim over it, and your heart nearly jumps into your throat. It's Artemis! You're stalling for a moment, just looking at your conversations with Odina, but another text from Artemis rolls in and you click on it before you've been thinking. Hey! Are you busy today? Oh no, I am busy today. <laughs> you stare at the messages for another second. You are, in fact, not busy today, but... Shake your head like you're trying to clear your thoughts and start to reply. No, I'm not. What's up? As always, Artemis responds insanely fast. Their next message sliding up on your screen in record time. It's like they were waiting for you to text back. It's kind of sweet. I want to take you somewhere. Can I take you somewhere? You blink at your phone. Your thumb's hovering over the on-screen keyboard. Another text from Artemis comes up. I feel like we haven't seen each other in forever. There's a pause. Artemis begins typing, stops, and starts again. I miss you. Oh my god. You flush hot and fast, then start nibbling on your fingernails. I said this before. And you said it too. But it feels different now. It's hard to explain. You're just glad they can't see your face right now. I miss you too. You really do mean it. Oh really? Yeah. That's cute. You're cute. Stop! <laughs> <laughs> I'm that person that gets anxious with the waiting text bubbles. Yeah. Yeah. Just like, why are you taking so long? What are you, what are you saying? What are you gonna say? You know? You almost get whiplash when you read this text. Artemis doesn't say things like that often at all. Matter of fact, this is probably the second time they've ever told you that you were cute. But every time, they literally just speak. Your phone vibrates a little in your hands when Artemis sends another message, drawing you back out of your thoughts. I'd rather just not know, yeah. <laughs> so, can I take you somewhere? Do I get to know where it is? Nope. Oh, oh, face. Oh my god. Gods, this is just like when they took you to the art museum by surprise. Artemis is so obsessed with surprises. Luckily, you don't mind them too much. No text should take that long to say. Just say it. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, it seems that Artemis gets a kick out of planning days out, which is sweet. It is sweet. Okay. Haha, <laughs> fine. You can take me somewhere. Sick! <laughs> okay, sick! It's gonna be fun! You smile fondly. Holding you to that. Meet me at Webby's in an hour? Sounds good to me. 
Oh, don't wear anything nice, though. I would hate for you to get dirty or something. Wait, what do you mean? Just trust me. I'll see you soon. You spend a second staring at Artemis' final text. You know that the conversation is meant to end here. And you also know that if you try to press the question again, Artemis will just become more and more aloof. You don't even have the slightest inkling of where they might be taking you this time around. But you suppose that you'll he heed their advice and not wear something nice. Oh? Is they going paintballing? I don't know, maybe? You go over to your closet, ready to agonize over picking the least nice outfit you possibly can. Go for a sporty sort of look. It's basically just an oversized basketball jersey of a team you've never heard of or cared about. A pair of black track pants. It's comfy. Sometimes you wear stuff like this when lazing around your apartment. Alternatively, you could still you could attempt to still look cute. Have a crop top you made out of an old t-shirt from like five years ago. You could match that you could match it with these high-waisted yoga pants that have a really odd synthetic velour to them. It's a low effort, but cute. Oh? You have one more option as well. Laziness. <laughs> You're still in your pajamas since you haven't left your place today. You could switch these out with the cleaner pair of pajamas. AKA, not another fatally old shirt with a peeling graphic and some faded sweatpants. You can even see if you can find that shitty shirt you bought at the lake last week. And Artemis will get a kick out of that. What do you want to wear? I want to wear the second outfit. Obviously, you're going to pick the cute outfit. There's no contest. Not a bright side. If you do somehow end up getting the outfit dirty, it won't be the end of the world. Now that you're dressed, you double check to make sure that you have your keys, phone, and wallet. Artemis didn't tell you to bring anything else with you, so you figure that it'll be okay if you just show up with yourself. You head out of your apartment, make your way down to the sidewalk in a couple moments. Surprisingly cool outside, not so much that it's uncomfortable. The sun is shining just bright enough to keep it from getting particularly chilly. It's nice weather for a walk. The trip to Webby's doesn't take long. Before you know it, you're down the street from the cafe shop. From what you can see, from what you can see from where you are, it's not busy. It's about half past twelve, so the morning rush is long over. You step inside of Webby's, smooth piano music and the smell of freshly brewed espresso embracing you. No matter how many times you come here, it's always it always feels as comfortable as the last time you were here. A quick peek around the cafe tells you that Artemis isn't here yet. So you pull your phone out of your pocket and shoot them a text to let them know that you've arrived. Hover by the doorway for a bit, trying to decide what you want to do while you wait for them to show up. You could go up to the register and get something to drink if you wanted. Maybe grab something for Artemis while you're at it. Or you could just find somewhere to sit and wait for them. What do you want to do? Um... I think we're just gonna wait. I feel like... We might require money to spend at wherever we're going. Nah, you're gonna pass this time. Who knows where Artemis is gonna be taking you. For all you know, they might have some grand scheme planned that may or may not involve food and drink. You might as well just find a place to sit and wait for them. You're waiting for just under 10 minutes when your phone buzzes in your pocket. You fish it out and glance at the screen, seeing a text from Artemis. You unlock your phone quickly, your phone buzzing again as another text comes in. I'm here! Come outside! The last text confuses you a little. They're not coming inside? Okay, one minute. You make your way out of Webby's, pushing the door open with your shoulder. Stepping out onto the sidewalk. You're looking around aimlessly for a moment, trying to find Artemis. But then you hear a familiar voice call your name. Nemini! 
You can't tell where it's coming from, but you know it's Artemis. You scan the street a second time, then finally spot them. They're in the backseat of a car? With the window rolled down? Two of you make eye contact, and they beam. Your smile is so bright that it's almost blinding. You feel your heart swell and you smile back just as brightly. They stick their hand out of the window and wave you over almost urgently. Come on! You rush over and open the door, slipping inside when Artemis slides to the other seat. Who- what? Who is driving us? What is happening here? The car just sits there by the curb for a moment, then you hear another voice. Almost makes you jump out of your skin. You done here? Yeah, thank you. You can keep going now. The driver nods their head, wordlessly, and the car carefully merges into traffic. So you're in a ride share right now. Where in the world could Artemis be taking you? Where you would need a ride share? I'm concerned. You're riddled with anticipation. You're about to see if you can catch a peek at the driver's phone navigation system, get a hint of your destination, but then Artemis is speaking. Haven't seen you in so long, holy shit. It's been a week, dude. It's only been a week. Ugh, oh, gods. But it feels like I've been away from you forever. Like simultaneously feels like just yesterday, and also an eternity ago. Totally get what you mean. It's good to see you, though. Two of you smile at each other darkly for a second, long enough that you're able to watch colors start to seep into Artemis's cheeks. You're suddenly reminded of how they smiled at you, just like this last week at the lake, with the setting sun splashed out behind them, and. I have to shake the thought away because Artemis is talking again. You look nice. His comment makes you straighten proudly. You smile. Thank you. Nobody told me not to dress nice, but I think I found a loophole. Yeah, I think you did. <laughs> you can feel their eyes on you, but it's not like they're eating you up. It feels shy when you look at them. They're nibbling at their fingernails, trying to hide what looks like a smile. You look nice, too. Artemis goes pleasantly red again, averting their eyes. Thanks. There's a comfortable moment of silence. You'll peek out the window. The neighbors- the neighborhoods you know go- The neighborhoods you know so well zooming by. You have no clue how long this car ride is supposed to last. We sure as hell have a bunch of questions. Haven't seen Artemis in a week! You probably could chat their ear off for hours if they let you. Which they probably would. What do you want to talk about? Um... I want to know how they've been. So have you been? What's been up since the last time I saw you? Artemis smiles, tilting their head to the side. To be honest, not much other than what we talked about over text. Two of you did talk over text, but to be fair, you didn't talk much. Conversations never really lasted too long. Mostly because you've been so busy that you haven't had time to do anything but work. We didn't really talk about much over text. True. Sorry about that. No, don't be sorry. I'm just glad we get to spend time together now. Artemis goes to say something, then pauses. You watch a soft flush slowly creep into their cheeks. They turn their gaze away from you. Yeah, me too. In the next beat, Artemis seems to collect himself. They hum idly, and you draw your attention back over to them. Things have been good, though. I've been volunteering a little more at the library lately. I think I might apply to work there for real. Oh, wow, really? That's awesome. Yeah, I really enjoy helping out there. But the only thing that's keeping me from actually talking to them about working, like, officially, is the fact that... I don't know. What if I want to work at another place one week after I start? What if I hate it or something? Artemis scrunches their mouth to the side, then sighs. I'm just afraid of getting bored. That's why I don't have a real job, I guess. I like doing so much, and I want to keep doing so much, but... The commitment of just being at one place for who knows how long kind of drives me crazy. I don't think my brain knows how to handle it. It's not like I don't like commitment or anything, but... I don't like too much commitment. Just a little. The right amount. Gods, I literally sound crazy right now, don't I? No, no, not really. I can I can understand not wanting to be tied down by work, 
Working isn't exactly fun sometimes. Exactly. I really don't want to ruin the fact that I like being at the library by, I don't know, working? But I don't think I should probably get a job, like a real one. They've been looking at you during the whole conversation, but something shifts and they're looking... What? They've been looking at you during the whole conversation, but something shifts and they're looking at you. Your heart stutters. Thank you for the hydrate, Brock. Job? Ill. <laughs> I know, right? I'm almost out of water. What do you think I should do? They're searching your eyes. It seems like they seriously want to know your opinion on the matter. Which is both flattering and shocking. Well, I think... I think you should apply for the job. I think you should apply for a job. No adults here! I know, right? You think so? Yeah, you already know that you like working there. Remember you telling me that you've been volunteering there for a pretty decent period of time. Doesn't that one librarian put you on a payroll even though you're a volunteer? Artemis blinks owlishly at you. Then a shy smile stretches across her face. Yeah, yeah, she does. You've been working there for a while, so I don't see why you shouldn't apply, you know? You worked there enough that I figured it would make a difference if you were an actual employee or not. Artemis seems to think about this. There's a beat before they speak again, their fingers drumming idly on their knee. I think you're right. They smile at you then. It's a sweet smile, one that makes their eyes squint. I'll apply for it then. Thanks for the advice, Anemone. Really appreciate it. You feel your cheeks go a little warm. You smile back at them. No problem. So where are we going? You know that Artemis is definitely not going to tell you where you're headed, but really. Doesn't have to ask anyway. Maybe over the past week? They've become more susceptible to spilling secrets? So where are we going? Artemis, Artemis slides her gaze over to you lazily. An easy smile on their lips. They flick you on the shoulder lightly. Do you always want to know where we're going? Well, of course I do. You just plan these things and I'm always left in the dark. That's what a surprise is, Anemone. You're supposed to be left in the dark. You put on your best begging face. Puppy dog eyes. Stuck out pouty lip. And the whole nine yards, Artemis snorts. Can I get a hint at least? Can you shine a sliver of light into the darkness? Artemis hums lung and low. They squint at you like they're examining your monetary value. You intensify the puppy dog eyes. Fear be okay. There's a beat, then Artemis' mouth simply quirks up at one corner. Suddenly, they look so insanely smug. What are you making that face for? No reason. They smile easily at you. But it's shitty and green. <laughs> oh, they're mean! You're not going to give me a hint, are you? I most definitely am not going to. You'll see when we get there. You're evil. They lean towards you, a dark lock of hair falling over their brow. Their eyes glint behind their glasses. Yeah. But I know you like me anyway. Mm. <laughs> you have to look away. Your face growing warm. You have to force yourself to speak your next sentence. That very much hinges upon whether your surprise is good or not. If it's bad, the whole thing's off. Oh my god. Oh no. <laughs> Artemis laughs, loud and unbridled. It makes your insides do something weird. You have a feeling that you're gonna like the surprise no matter what it ends up being. Ask about their new hobby. It's always been interesting to hear about how Artemis bounces between hobbies so often. It's getting a little difficult to keep track of all the other ones that they've told you about since you first got to know them. But you're sure that somehow they've collected yet another one. The question now is what? So any new hobbies? Artemis makes a weird face, color tinting their cheeks. 
They flick you on the shoulder. It didn't hurt. Don't tease me. Can't help but laugh. They flick you again. I'm not teasing. It was a genuine question, silly. I'm curious. You swear? You laugh again. Artemis seems to smile despite himself. Yeah, I swear. Do people tease you about your hobbies or something? Sometimes. I know it's kind of weird having like 70 hobbies that cycle through. So I guess I get it. It's not weird. You're just saying that. No, I'm serious. I think it's... I think it's interesting. It's cool. I admire it to some extent. I like hearing about all the stuff you enjoy. Artemis goes redder. But they appear to like this answer if your small dorky smile is any indication. Ah, oh, thanks. It's nice to know that you care. <laughs> it's called ADHD! God, oh please! We're not here to call them out! <laughs> I was thinking it, though. We were all thinking it. Come on. Of course I care. What kind of person would I be if I didn't? Well, if you must know. Yes, I must. Artemis rolls her eyes at you. They're still smiling. I've been really into dream journaling lately. Oh? Do you have really vivid dreams? Sometimes. Calling myself out, though. <laughs> Sometimes. My dreams never make any sense. So I thought maybe if I wrote them down, I'd be able to remember them so I could make sense of them later. Is it working? Sort of. I've been having dreams where I f keep finding weird doors in my house. Oh? I'm trying to figure out what the hell that means, but I feel like it's been helping to recognize patterns in what I've been dreaming about lately. Although, I do have a feeling that I'm going to forget to write down my dream one day and then... Gonna end up dropping the whole thing. <laughs> Don't have any more questions. You and Artemis share comfortable small talk after the car continues to venture forward. Outside the windows, building in the street soon passed until you're traveling on an expanse of highway that's framed by tall trees on both sides. You have absolutely no clue where you're going. Maybe 15 more minutes pass until the car noticeably slows down conversation between you and Artemis hangs in the air for a second as you peek out the window to absorb, observe your surroundings. The car is pulling into a parking lot. There are trees everywhere. You're going to make a guess and assume they're quite a ways away from the town. The car rolls to a, top, to a stop in the middle of the lot. You hear the doors unlock. Alright kids, this is it. Kids, you turn to Artemis to share an amused look with them. But they're distracted. More concentrated on unbuckling their seatbelt. Thank you so much. No problem. Did you have a good day? Thank you. You too. Both of you gather your few things and get out of the car. You stand there in the parking lot for a moment, swiveling your head around to try and get a sense of where you happen to be. Right in front of you is a small brown brick building. It sort of evokes the entrance to a public pool with glass doors instead of open hall walkways. Hmm. You don't see a pool around the back, nor do you hear the squeals of children running around. Plus, you're sure that Artemis would have told you to bring some pool-appropriate clothes if they were taking you to one. You're still pretty lost as to where the two of you are right now. Another second of silence passes. Artemis brushes her knuckle against your shoulder. Let's get going. Wait, where are we? Feels like the middle of nowhere. Artemis smiles, their expression is something similar to conniving. Hello? It kind of is the middle of nowhere. Come on, you'll figure it out in a sec. They can be so ominous when they want to be. It's a little freaky. Either way, you follow close behind them as they begin to walk towards the entrance of the building. It's chilly when you step inside the building. Air conditioning working overtime for some reason, but it's when you take inventory of what's in front of you, do you realize where you are? Before you is a long counter, an older woman sits behind it, paging through a novel. Behind her, though, is a full wall of archery bows. What? Arrows of all colors resting neatly in tubes inside of wooden cubbies lined up against the wall. Oh my god, are we at, are we at, at an archery? Wait a minute. 
There's also a snack vending machine, a couple of benches, and wa water cooler. But these seem less important. Oh! That's all you say? That's all you say. Artemis turns to you. Something bright taking over their face. Oh? Cool, right? You grin a little. Yeah, it's really cool. It's kind of funny, though. What do you mean? Well, your name is Artemis, after all. Artemis goes redder than you thought they would. They sort of wrinkle their nose at you, making a sour face. But it feels more playful than anything. Your grin only grows larger. Okay, I know it's on the nose. I may have named myself after the Greek goddess, but I swear that I like archery for another reason. I'm not judging. It's cute no matter what. It's cute? <laughs> yeah! It's real cute. Coincidence is fun. As the two of you speak, Artemis is leading you over to the counter. The woman at the counter sets her book down, resting it upon upside down to keep her place. Hey guys, what can I help you with today? Hi, could we get rentals for... Artemis turns to you. You can tell that they're so excited to be here with you just from the way that they're looking at you. It makes you a little shy. Does two hours sound good? You blink up at them. That sounds good. I assume we can always have more time later if we want to hang out, hang around a bit longer. Artemis gives you a thumbs up and a grin. Cool. Turn back to the woman at the counter. They start discussing rental prices and time slots. A bunch of stuff you don't exactly understand when it comes to the context of this place. You zone out a little, looking around the open room curiously. You pull back to reality when Artemis nudges you with their elbow. You look up at them. They're offering you a bow. Shiny and black. They, they're offering you a bow, shiny and black, and a quiver of arrows with bright green fletchlings. You stare at it for a second, then take it from them. The bow is lighter than you expect it to be. Thank you. Arden smiles, their eyes twinkle. You're welcome. There's another moment of Artemis converse what? There's another moment of Artemis conversating with the clerk at the counter. She hands him a bow from the wall behind her. This one a deep faded blue, and then a quiver of black arrows. Thank her, shouldering both the bow and the quiver. They shake some hair out of their eyes, then look down at you. Okay, let's get going. Where? Outside, silly! Follow me! They cross in front of you, gently brushing their fingers against the small of your back. Oh. Oh! As they do so. You have to try hard not to stiffen, the tips of your ears growing warm. They lead you out of the... They lead you out of a door to your left, holding it open for you. You dip your head towards them in thanks, walking outside. Temperature has gone up a bit since you first left your place. Sun is warm on your arms. Outside, under the shade of the trees, in the near distance, is a line of multicolored archery targets. Some are closer to you than others, and there are a couple of other people out here this afternoon. Behind you, by the fence that separates the range from the parking lot, is a set of benches under a covered enclosure. You follow Artemis down to the far side of the range, away from the main building and the other people practicing. Two of you are alone over here. Artemis turns to you then, apparently situated in front of a series of targets. They smile at you, easy and sweet. So, have you done this before? No, I haven't. Nope, it's my first time. Here, let me help you then. There's a whole proper stance and everything. Is there? Yeah, hold on. I set their bow and quiver down on the grass, far enough away from the two of you that you know that Artemis won't step on them by accident. They stand there next to you for a moment, watching you attempt to situate yourself. Sing the quiver across your hips like you've seen actors do in movies. Then you make a guess at the proper form, bow in hand. Artemis cocks her head at you, but they begin to smile. You immediately see them try to bite the try to bite it back. You do everything in your capacity not to flush with embarrassment. Okay, you're close. 
Don't be patronizing. Artemis laughs, and you know they can't help themselves. Take a step towards you. Hands out as they examine your stance. I'm not. Just cute. Cute? They laugh again, but this time it's more of an amused exhale paired with a small smile. Your heartbeat does something funny. Messing with you. There's a silence. Move your left foot forward a little bit. You follow their instructions, shifting your left foot forward a couple inches. Another beat passes. You feel Artemis' hand on your back. Firm and directing. Instinctively, you adjust yourself. Stand up straight. If you lean back, your aim's gonna be off. Your other hand is on you now, their palms sliding down to your waist. They push your hips forward the slightest bit. You feel your ears start to grow warm. Artemis's touch seems to burn through your clothes. Your hips go over your feet. Your hands wander up against brushing over your shoulders. You swallow thickly. Your shoulders square up your shoulders. You do as you're told. You hear them hum in approval. You look good. You don't even know what to say to that, so you don't say anything. The blush from your ears sweeping into your cheeks. You don't think Artemis is even aware of how close they are to you right now. They take a step back from you. Their hands slipping from your shoulders to dip into a quiver slung across your hip. When they move to give you the arrow, they step in close to you again. Oh my god. <laughs> you can feel their presence against your back. Holy shit. You take the arrow from them, trying not to tremble. Knock the arrow between the knocking points. Little metal pieces. The arrow clicks into place between the mocking points. Artemis reaches around and presses the arrow into the arrow rest. Put the knock in between your index and middle finger. Yeah, good. Okay, look in the target. Take a breath. Try and focus your eyes on the target. And about 20 yards away, which is pretty far. Take a deep breath. Relax, you're tense. Hands are on your shoulders again. Thumbs running, rubbing circles into your shirt. You exhale and try to loosen up. Your heart is hammering in your chest. Artemis steps away to give you space to draw. Take another breath. You pull the string back with your dominant hand, trying to keep the arrow atop the rest. Damn, it's a bit harder to pull the string back than you thought. You can feel the muscle in your arm flex. Another breath. You pull until the string is fully extended and... Poof. The arrow goes flying. Faster than you ever expected it to. And thunks at the top of the target. Right in the white zone. It's only insanely far from the middle of the target, but... You just shot an arrow! You did it! You swivel... You swivel to them, suddenly euphoric. I did it! I wanna see... I wanna see what you got. I bet you're pretty good. Artemis laughs shyly, scratching the back of their head. Not that good. I just do this for fun. Yeah, but I bet you're here like all the time. There's no way you're not good. You watch Artemis' cheeks go a soft shade of pink. It's kind of funny that they try so hard to be humble. <laughs> well, let me see. Artemis sighs, shakes her head, then smiles a little. Okay, fine. I did drag you all the way out here. You did! It'd be a waste for you to not show me your killer skills. Oh my god, Zanemini, you're gonna you're gonna make me blush, quit it. You're already red. <laughs> you point at them. Smirking cheekily. You're already blushing. At this, Artemis goes even pinker. They splutter something incoherent before speaking something that makes sense. Anemone! I'm just saying. Artemis sort of stands there for a moment. Effectively flustered, a short silence passes. Then you gesture vaguely at the archery target on the far side of the range. Artemis sighs again, and you have to bite back a grin. They take off their glasses, resting them atop their head. Oh. They reach down into the grass, picking up their bow and quiver of arrows. In one fluid moment, they sling the quiver across their hips. They get into p position, smoothly adapting relaxed but straight posture. You watch captivated as they dip into the quiver for an arrow, knocking it effortlessly. You almost don't see it happen, with how fast they're going. 
In a moment, Artemis is drawing the bowstring, bowstring's tension tight, and in the next moment, the arrow is speeding across the range, landing just outside the inner yellow ring. Artemis, what the hell? Not that good, my ass! Artemis laughs again, suddenly awkward. They pull at the collar of his shirt. That was nothing. Nothing? That was definitely not nothing. Currently witnessing the birth of an archery superstar. Artemis groans, rolling their head onto their shoulders. Cheeks are a stunning shade of red. Cute! Do it again! Artemis waves their hand at you like they're trying to bat the subject away. It's not gonna be good a second time. I'm filled with nerves now. Haha, <laughs> nerves? Do I make you nervous? Artemis doesn't answer that, just slides her gaze over to the target to the far side of the range with their teeth on their bottom lip. Have to hold back a laugh. Welcome back, Brooke. Archery is hard. Have you tried it? I wanted to do archery at a Girl Scout camp, but my mom never wanted me to. Really, it's so easy to embarrass them nowadays. There's a silence, and Artemis begins to make their way towards the target to retrieve the arrows. You watch them do so, your eyes following the bob of their wings as they jog back and forth. Once they come back over to you, they look bright, like they have something to tell you. They put their glasses back on. Hand you your arrow, the tip pointed towards the grass. And you take it, carefully putting it on your quiver. I just had an idea. What's the idea? Have a little competition. Mouth drops open in a curious little O shape. Competition? I tried it once. I had zero upper body strength. Oh no. If I did it, if I did it, it would be fun. Oh. Competition? Artemis nods enthusiastically, already starting to grin. Move closer to you to nudge a closed fist against your shoulder. You smile up at them. Yeah, we can see who can score the most points after like five arrows or something. And whoever wins gets a prize. Ooh, a prize? What kind of prize are we talking? I do I do like myself a good prize. Artemis laughs, smooth and sweet. It makes her head feel a little floaty. Uh, I don't know. You can pick whatever you want. Just don't make it too crazy. Oh. Do I have a bot? Hello? <laughs> wow, I've made it on YouTube. I can't see it in the chat. I can only see it on the screen. Interesting. Thank you, Brooke. Pro mod. <laughs> oh, sorry. No sorries. Thank you, Rug. <laughs> I can't either. Okay. Alright. Anyway. Your options are limitless. If you win this archery contest again... If you win this archery contest against Artemis, what do you want your prize? Are we... Mm. But also 69. 69 whole girls. Can you believe? <laughs> anyway. Um, the prize, obviously. It has to be a kiss. Has to. It has to. It's almost embarrassing to even say this out loud, but... Gods, you really do want it. You and Artemis have been kissed since the first time you did last week at the lake. But you'd be lying if you said that you hadn't thought about kissing them again. If you're honest, you want to kiss them really bad. Like, so bad! You feel yourself start to turn red before you even begin to get the words out. If I win, I want to kiss. There's a silence. Artemis stares at you. You watch colors seep into their cheeks. They look like they're about to evaporate. Uh, that's a good, that's a good prize. They clear their throat. Obviously, they weren't expecting you to suggest it. They open their mouth to say something else. Close it, then open it again. They're not looking at you anymore. Instead, boring holes into the grass near your feet. What? Oh. What? What kind of kiss? <laughs> what do you mean, what kind? 
This question throws you for a loop. You almost fall over. Gods, you don't know. Just wanna kiss. At this point, you don't think you care what kind. Um. Um. Oh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> you know what? You know what? We're gonna say a kiss on the hand. Let's see what they say. Is a kiss on the hand okay? Yes. They, they blurt the word out so suddenly, then proceed to turn an even deeper shade of red as they realize how eager they sound. <laughs> it makes your stomach do flips, but not in a bad way at all. You don't even have the words to describe how you feel right now. This is so cute. I know, right? I'm melting. <laughs> Artemis chews on their bottom lip. I, I mean, yeah, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, totally. Okay, good, cool. There's a beat of silence. Artemis clears her throat and speaks again. Okay, do you want to take that target over there? It'll be easier if we're not crowding around the same one. Sounds good to me. Yeah, and let's see. We can do scoring out of five instead of out of ten to make it easier to see from over here. If you're being honest, you don't exactly know what that means, but Artemis seems to know what it means. So that's all that matters to you, I suppose. Okay. Artemis peers off into the near distance, observing the targets from where they're standing. After a beat, they look over at you and grin. You can't help but smile back. Must of five sounds good to you? Hell yeah, it sounds good to me. Artemis reaches out to you with a closed fist, probably for you to bump. You do so, gently knocking your knuckles against theirs. Then you remember something. Wait, you never picked what you wanted if you won. Artemis shrugs nonchalantly, dropping their hand down to their side. Oh, I don't know yet. I'm still figuring out. Okay. I feel like they're gonna win. I mean, they, they do archery. They're gonna win, right? <laughs> they smirk, their teeth on their bottom lip. Their hand comes up against the top. Wait. They smirk. Your teeth on their bottom lip. Their hand comes up again to boop you on the tip of your nose. Your heart stutters in your chest. This is a trap. What do you mean it's a trap? <laughs> what do you mean? How is this a trap? <laughs> I'll let you know when I win. You reel back, making like you're... <laughs> oh my god. But a cute trap. It is a cute trap. I'd fall for it. You reel back, making like you're gonna chomp on Artemis' finger. They laugh, poking you on the cheek instead. Cocky bastard. When you win? I think you're underestimating me. Oh, we'll see. They won't get you. And step back to take their position at their target. Sometimes you want to kick their shins. You've got to win, though. You've got way too much on the line. A kiss? From Artemis? By the gods, you don't know what you're gonna do if you lose. You move over it to the target next to Artemis, ready to get into position. You try your best to adopt the posture that Artemis had helped you with just moments before. Relax, not tense. Hips over your feet, squared shoulders, you take a breath. Okay. You think you got it. Give me a man that is this cute, I know, right? <laughs> You peek over at Artemis. They're getting into position too. They seem to feel your eyes on them because they slide their gaze over to you. They put their glasses up on their head again. They smile, ever so charming. Their brows raised a little. You pull an ugly face in response. The way they laugh then makes you smile despite yourself. Why do you keep putting your glasses up like that? I'm farsighted. <laughs> It's easier for me to just take my glasses off. But enough about that. Let's start, okay? On my mark. You roll your shoulders, looking back over at your target on the far side of the range. You take a breath and exhale slowly. Three, two, one. Flip. 
Your arrow goes flying through the air and lands solidly on the right side of the blue ring. Three points. You lower your bow and squint over at Artemis' target. Their arrow landed on the black ring. Two points for them. Oh, nice. Two for you, two for me. Let's go again. Two of you go over to your targets in unison, collecting your arrows and going back over to where you have previously been standing to start again. You go back into position, Artemis begins to count off again. Three, two, one. Flip. Your arrow goes flying through the air and lands solidly in the top side of the red ring. Four points. You lower your bow and squint over at Artemis' target. Arrow landed in the white ring. <gasps> one for them. Oh, nice. Four for you, one for me. <laughs> Let's go again. I feel like they're losing on purpose. The two of you go over to your targets in unison, collecting your arrows, going back over to where you had previously been standing to start again. You get back into position, and Artemis begins to count off again. Three, two, one. Flip. Your arrow goes flying through the air and lands solidly on the top side of the white ring. One point! You lower your bow and squint over to Artemis' target. Their arrow landed in the white ring. One for them. Oh, nice! One for you and one for me. Let's go again. The two of you go over to your targets in unison, collecting your arrows and going back over to where you had previously been standing to start again. Get back into position, Artemis begins to count off again. Three, two, one. Flip. Your arrow goes flying through the air and lands solidly in the bottom side of a blue ring. Three points. You lower your bow and squint over at Artemis' target. The arrow landed in the blue ring. Three for them. Oh nice, three for you and three for me. Let's go again. Two of you go over to your targets in unison, collecting your arrows and going back over to where you had previously been standing to start again. Get back into position and Artemis begins to count off again. Three, two, one. Flip. Your arrow goes flying through the air and lands solidly in the right side of the blue ring. Three points. Lower your bow and squint over at Artemis' target. Their arrow landed in the white ring. One for them. Oh, nice. Three for you, one for me. Wow, okay. That's it then. Let me total scores really quick. Mental math? Artemis winks at you cheekily. Believe it or not, my memory is pretty good. Okay. So I had two, one, one, three, and one. That's eight for me. Not too bad, rookie. Artemis laughs, dipping their chin a little bit. It's then that they seem to realize that their glasses are still resting on top of their head. We put them back on. Alright, your total. You had three, four, one, three, and three. Damn, and I'm gonna get 14. I win? You win. I feel like I feel like they let me win. They totally let me win. Come on. Shift your way from one foot to the other, suddenly shy. You know what comes after this. So Artemis doesn't say anything in response. Just kinda looks at you in a way you can't decipher. No map zone, please. <laughs> okay, give me a second. I dropped something, but I'm back. Artemis doesn't say anything in response kind of looks at you in a way you can't decipher. My kiss? As soon as the words leave your mouth, you watch with wonder as Artemis turns the most astonishing shade of red. They visibly swallow. Uh, yeah. Your kiss. There's another moment of silence. Artemis looks at something to the right of your face. Do you mean, do, do you want me to? For some reason, Artemis' bashfulness is making you even shyer. Sure. There's a second of hesitation. And then Artemis is shouldering their bow and moving closer to you. I think you can hear your heartbeat in your ears. They situate themselves right in front of you, close enough that the tips of your shoes almost touch. 
He's suddenly reminded of your height difference. You almost have to tilt your face up to look at them. They search your face as if they're looking for permission to do anything else, so you just dip your chin a little. It's okay. Artemis audibly exhales, their cheeks the color of cherries. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. I'm just nervous. I'm nervous. You think back to how they didn't answer when you had asked them if you made them nervous. You guess that you have your answer now. It's kind of cute. Seriously, it's okay. Artist smiles a wobbly smile, looking across between happy and insanely flustered. Okay. They look at you for another beat. You smile up at them. They reach down for your hand. Their grip is gentle and soft. You can tell that they're trying to keep eye contact with you as they lift your hand to their lips. They press a sweet, lingering kiss to your knuckles, looking, looking at you all the while. Your free hand comes up to the side of your burning face. Gods, now I feel like I'm royalty or something. Artemis presses a second kiss to your knuckle. You can feel them smiling against your skin. Your stomach is twisting up in violent knots. I wouldn't mind treating you like royalty more often. I don't think. Oh my god. I can't. I can't handle this. <laughs> They seem to say that without thinking, because as soon as they realize what they said, they tear their gaze from you, turning even redder. You have to try not to gape at them. Okay, Casanova. <laughs> oh my gosh, don't call me that. Artemis looks at you for a bit, and slides their eyes up towards the sky. They clear their throat. So... So... Their eyes drop back down to your face. And they grin, warm and bright, like they've never been happier. Want to shoot a couple more rounds? Got 21 more dollars, 73, yay! I need to know how much longer this is. <laughs> Am I going for an 8 hour stream? What is happening here? LOL. I need to go get more water. So, BRB. Thought this was a 24 hour? You know what? I'll do it. I have my popcorn ready. I'll do it. I'll finish this game. Okay, let me let me go get more water. Maybe a snack. BRB.
Okay, I'm back. I had to I had to pee and then I had to turn my heater on because it had turned off at some point. Like no wonder I was freezing. Welcome back. Thank you. Welcome back, streamer. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Did you wash your hands? Of course I washed my hands. What do you think? <laughs> that I'm a man? <laughs> also, I have Cheerios to snack on. Oh, well, they're not Cheerios, they're Fruit Loops. <laughs> Please. <laughs> you can hear me eating. I'm gonna mute real quick. Crunch. God, I hate it when like the microphone picks up on if I'm eating something. Um, they're Fruit Loops, by the way. They're not Cheerios. I messed up. But let's get back into the game. PC game. Okay. Odina's been acting... Odina's been trying to get you to come to her salon for weeks, baiting you with a free haircut. If you came to hang out with her while she worked. You've never gone because where Odina works is a bit out of your reach. But, uh, <laughs> can you tell me any tired? <laughs> You've never gone because where Odina works is a bit out of the way for you. But your hair has been getting a bit longer. It's about time... You got it trimmed. If Odin is offering you free things, who are you to deny her? You're currently sitting in the stylist chair with Odina sipping away at your hair. She's talking about a restaurant that she went to with Kolia the other day. Speaking so quickly that you can barely keep up with what she's saying. Makes you smile a little, but she's cute. There's a lull in what Odin is talking about. In the mirror, you watch her study your hair. So how are things with you? Things are good. I've been getting a lot of work done, which is good. Clients have been nice this month. That's great. I bet you're rake raking in the cash. You laugh. Odina grins, grins at you in the mirror. Her nose scrunching a bit. Yeah, something like that. It's been nice to have steady work, though. With freelance, things aren't typically so easy. I'm gonna enjoy it while it lasts. That's a good idea. I hope it stays like that for you. I'll manifest on your behalf. Ha, <laughs> thanks. What else do you want to talk about? Oh god. Oh, I have to tell her. Okay, I'm gonna ask her about the gossip. Any new gossip you haven't told me about? Odina looks up from your hair, immediately straightening. She looks at you in the mirror. Her eyes are sparkling. You have a feeling that you're in for a treat. Oh, do I ever? You will never believe what happened the other day. What happened? Odina props her hand on her hip, resting her weight on one foot. This is her gossip stance. <laughs> okay, so like a lady came in the other day. She's a regular, right? I think her name is Sally? Sammy? Something with an S. But Ariel always cuts her hair when she comes in. Critical detail. Okay. So she came in and Ariel was doing, was doing her a hair trim as usual. They get on the topic of Miss S's boyfriend or boy toy or whatever. Something that never came up before for some reason. Even though she's been coming here like a year. They're talking about him and I think his name's Nick? Nicholas? Something like that. And Ariel's like, wow, your boyfriend and my boyfriend have the same name. <gasps> and Miss S is like, no way. And keeps talking about him. She says something about how he's always super busy with work and his other hobbies or whatever. And, okay, mind you, I'm working at the next chair over so I can hear everything. 
Okay, what happened after that? You will not believe. Like, oh my god. I'm standing there and sort of eavesdropping on what Miss S is saying. And I can see the wheels turning in Ariel's head. Miss S finally says something about this Nick guy or whatever. Works at this car repair shop in the town over. And Ariel's like, wait. My boyfriend also works at the car repair shop in the next town over. <gasps> Holy shit, were they? <laughs> Odina basically jumps into the air, nodding vigorously. Her hair is a wave around her face. Yes, Anemone, they were dating the same man. Oh my fucking gods. Like, the deafening silence after that. The entire salon was quiet. It was like, is he tall? And Miss says is like, yes. And Ariel's like, oh my god. And she's like, blonde? Miss S is like, yes! And then, and then Ariel pulls out the, does he have a mole kind of, that kind of looks like a heart on his lower back? He did, didn't he? He did, he literally did. Oh my gosh, I was in shock. I was standing there trying to keep my job up off the floor. Craziest gossip I've ever heard in a long time. Needless to say, Ariel, neither Ariel nor Miss S is dating this Nick guy anymore. Oh my god. Odina fluffs your hair gently. She grins at you in the mirror, planting her hands on her hips. And all done, you look great. She's right, you do look great. You needed that trim really badly. Thank you so much, Odina. You're the most skilled hair trimmer of them all. Don't you forget it. Oh my god. Did I miss my chance to tell her? Oh, I missed my chance to tell her about him. <laughs> Men. I know, right? <laughs> Why didn't men show up in the chat, but it showed up in the on screen? Interesting. Interesting. Two of you share some other miscellaneous small talk for a while, then you decide to head out once a young woman comes into the salon. She and Odina seem to know each other. She comes as a no surprise to you, because the two of them squeal when they see each other. Odina is ushering her into the stylist chair before you even finish saying goodbye. Odina turns from the woman to wave at you, smiling. You two, please, I know, right? I'll see you later, Anemone. Love ya. You wave back and match Odina's smile. It was so nice to see her today. Love you too. Oh my god, I feel so bad. I didn't get to tell her. I didn't get to tell her. Use your hip to open the front door of the salon and step out onto the sidewalk. It's midday. Sun shines warm on your cheeks. The bus stop isn't too far from here. Just a block over. It's a short walk. And if you're lucky, you'll be able to cut catch the bus right on time. You set to walking. Just over five minutes later, you're standing at the bus stop. There's some other people waiting here as well. You pull your phone from your back pocket to check the transit app for the approximate bus arrival time. And just as you do so, you feel it vibrate in your palm. The sun is reflecting off of your phone screen and causing a wicked glare. But if you squint hard enough, you can read the notification that rests at the top of your screen. Your heart jumps a little when you notice that the notification is from Artemis. You try to back bite back a smile, but you can't help it. You don't know when you started to feel so mushy towards them. I want to do something. That's a text. That's all they say. It's a bit cryptic. And leaves quite a bit to be desired. Very curious, to say the least. Do what? There's a moment of nothing. Then. Then you see the little typing bubble come up for a couple seconds. You look up from your phone and peer into the distance. You think you can see the bus from where you are. Your phone vibrates again and you look back down. Are you busy right now? I wanna hang out. Not busy, no. About to head home though. What are you planning? Okay, this might sound a little silly. But do you wanna go buy it and buy a plant with me? I think I think I'm in love. <laughs> Imagine Imagine just like buying a plant. Imagine they ask you to buy a plant. Oh my god. You stare at this text for a moment. For some reason, it feels kind of romantic. Storky, but but the way 
that they phrased it sound makes it sound like the two of you are about to adopt a pet together or something. There's a plant store by your place that we could go to if you're down for it. Oh yeah, it's the plant store. It's a short walk away from your apartment. You I you are a plant person. You've been to the plant store more than a couple times since you've moved to where you live now. You have plants and greenery. You especially love how they make you your home feel so fresh. Either way, you're definitely down to go to the plant store with Artemis. Sounds like fun. I'd love to buy a plant with you. As dorky as it sounds. <laughs> There's a gust of wind as a bus rolls up to the curve next to you. You let the others who had been waiting for the bus as well go in front of you as you rifle through your pockets for your change. Artemis is so distracting. A couple of moments later, you've paid your fare and boarded the bus. The bus begins to rumble back down the street, and you pull your phone from your back pocket to see if Artemis responded to you. OMG, don't tease me. You're my accomplice now. Oh, You have to hold back a laugh. Accomplice? You're so dramatic. You love it. <laughs> you just want to meet at your place since you're on your way home? Sounds good to me. I'm on my way back from Odina's salon, so it's going to be about an hour until I get back to the house. Cool, that means I can get in a quick nap before I see you. See you soon? See you soon! Lock your phone and set it down in your lap, moving your attention to the street outside the window. Several hours past noon. Why the hell is Artemis taking a nap right now? Why aren't they? I mean, they never sleep. <laughs> they probably stayed up all night doing something other... Something or other like they always do. You ask them about it when you see them if you remember, but for now... You just have to focus on remembering which stop to get off of. This does look like New York buses. Interesting. Just under an hour later, you're hopping off the bus. The bus stop you get off at. Just a short walk from your place. So you figure that you might as well text Artemis to let them know that you're almost back home. That you're almost back. Hey, I'm almost home. Just down the street. Artemis doesn't respond instantly, so you put your phone in your pocket and set to walking. Maybe they're still asleep. It's only a couple months later when you feel your phone buzz. You're rounding the corner. Only several buildings down from your apartment. You pull your phone out to see another next to... What? It's only a couple moments later when you feel your phone buzz. You're rounding the corner, only several buildings from your apartment. You pull your phone out to see another... Oh, another text from Artemis. Great timing. Just got here. I think I see you. You look up from your phone, peering into the distance. You straighten when you see Artemis waving at you from the apartment's doorstep. You wave back, breaking into a grin. And pick up your pace until you're standing at the foot of the concrete steps. Hey! Your smile is warm. Your heart stutters in your chest. They're coming down the steps to meet you. Hey! How are you? I'm standing in front of you now. They cock their head to the side a little, scanning your face with a fondness that makes you slightest bit shy. I'm good. I, I missed you. You bite down hard on the side of your cheek, feeling heat in your face. Artemis is suddenly averting their gaze equally as bashful. I missed you too. You have to force the words out of your mouth before you lose them. Artemis is quiet for a moment, scratching the back of their head. You watch their cheeks color even deep. Deeper. If you're honest, it's a sight that never gets old. Can I... kiss you hello? Um, yes. <laughs> Holy shit, they were so awkward. It makes them think giddy, burbled through your body. You nod before you even have a chance to think about it, tilting your face up. Sure. Artemis just stares at you for a second. You raise your eyes, your lips quirking at the corners. They seem to notice that, and it snaps them into action. They dip down and peck your... Chastely on the mouth. Oh my god. <laughs> he 
You can't help but smile against their lips. The kiss is quick, there, and then gone. And half a second later, Artemis is pulling back. But they don't go far. They look at you, like, really look at you. Wearing their lip, oh my god. <laughs> Be real, please. <laughs> Sorry. Oh my god, no, don't mind me. Don't mind me, don't mind me. Okay. <laughs> You good? I'm good. I'm good. It's fine. Everything's fine. Perceiving? Do not- do not perceive. Do not mind. <laughs> they speak in a whisper. Your brow furious. Your brow furrows slightly in confusion. You find yourself matching their volume. What for? Eyeball, please don't eyeball me. <laughs> they look at you some more. Then they're dipping down again. They press their mouth against yours firmer this time. Oh, more assistant. You kiss them back. Your mind feels blurry. When Artemis pulls away again, their cheeks are aflame. Sorry, I wanted to do that all week. Oh my god. They blurt the sentences out, suddenly embarrassed. You kind of snicker, feeling effectively charmed. Gods, they make your heart do something crazy. Don't be sorry, I liked it. Artemis goes even redder if possible. Their mouth works slight silently for a bit until they manage to get words out. Oh, okay, good. Artemis sort of nudges you on the shoulder then, beginning to walk. Come on, the plant store is right around this way. They say right around this way, as it's gen just down the street, but, you know, from living in the area, that it's about a ten minute walk. Artemis does walk everywhere, though, so you'd be safe to say that anything less than an hour walk is what they consider to be right around this way. It's kind of funny. The two of you walk in silence for a couple of moments, and then Artemis turns her head to look at you. You can feel them taking in your appearance, and you slide your gaze over to meet theirs. Did you get a haircut? Your heart jumps in your chest. They notice! You smile a little shyly. Just a trim. Odina did it for me earlier. Artemis takes you in for another beat. Then they nod, seemingly pleased. Your ears go hot. It looks nice. Have you ever considered changing your hair color? I think it would look cool on you. Oh really? Thought about it a couple times. Maybe something bright. Artemis nods again. Your mouth making an O shape. That would be so sick. You should try it one of these days. You tug on a piece of your hair. Maybe Artemis is right. Maybe you should try it out. You try to envision yourself with a different hair color. You can't really picture it in your mind's eye. But maybe it would be cool. What about you? Me? Yeah. Have you ever thought about dyeing your hair? Artemis purses their lips thoughtfully. They look over across the street, watching a bouncy little dog trot alongside its owner. You follow their gaze. You know, not really. I've never thought of having hair that's anything but black. But, hmm, maybe purple? Or red? Since red's sort of my thing. Not sure. I could see you having red roots. Like, just bleaching and dyeing the top. Artemis thinks about it some more. Hmm. That does sound cool. Have to think about it. Maybe I can get Kudo to do it for me one of these days. The conversation peters off into silence. Artemis continues to lead the way. Is there anything else you want to talk about? 
Um, ask about the job, ask about the plan, ask about the band. Ask if you can hold their hand. Hmm. I'm gonna talk about the band. No, the plant. So why plant? Artemis turns her head to look at you, gazing at you over the rims of the glasses. What do you mean? Wave your hands around, gesturing at nothing in particular. These rhymes. <laughs> I mean, like, why do you want a plant? What's the whole appeal? Artemis seems to mull this over, nodding their head idly. There's a beat of silence. They end up shrugging. I don't know. Plants seem like a lot less of responsibility, if that makes any sense. They just sit there, and you water them every so often. Doesn't need constant affection, attention like a child or something. Then why not a cat or a dog? This makes Artemis style, sort of wistfully. They shrug again. The animals are too expensive, they need a lot of attention. I'd love to have one regardless, maybe a cat? Because they don't need as much attention as a dog does. Koda has a bit of an allergy though. There's another pause, then Artemis starts to turn a bit red. I look away from you, staring at something in the near distance. Plus, I I just kind of wanted to do something with you. I um wanted to have something that we both gotten together. Wait, wait, that's so cute. Oh my god, wait. <laughs> it hits you hard, almost like someone had knocked the wind out of you. You take in a deep breath. You can feel your ears heat. I didn't know you were so sentimental. Artemis stammers something nonsensical. Your cheeks rosy. You, can, you can't help but stare at the side of their face. The curve of their cheek, the slope of their nose, the dip of their mouth. I'm really not. I just, I just really like you and I want to do stuff with you. The heat in your ears spreads to your face and spills down your neck. Artemis has only said stuff like this once before. Back when they had first confessed to you at the beach. Despite the fact that you know that they have feelings for you, it always manages to take you by surprise each time you remember. Gods, Artemis. You are so cute! <laughs> There's a silence, and during that silence, you watch Artemis grow so red that it makes you embarrassed by extension. It's not necessarily a bad thing, you don't think. They brush their knuckles against your upper arm. It's so light that you almost don't notice it. They won't meet your eyes, worrying their lips like it's wronged them. Hmm. You're, you're cute too. You're at a loss for words then. The only thing you can focus on is the pounding in your heart, of your heart in your chest. Let's ask them. I'm gonna ask them to hold their hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you and Artemis aren't exactly touchy feely with each other. Oh, we're not? I thought we were. <laughs> at least not at this stage, but they're walking so close to you. You'd think that if you stepped a little to the right, your hands would brush against each other ever so slightly. If you're honest, just the thought of that sort of embarrasses you. Feel silly, but gods. Two of you walk in comfortable silence for a couple moments, but after a while, you can't help yourself. Can I hold your hand? There's a beat of nothing for a second, just the two of you walking. Then Artemis turns her head to look at you. You can already feel yourself starting to turn red. Artemis stares at you, then blinks, processing what you said. Another beat passes, then they nod. Their cheeks beginning to color. Sure. Cool. You say it because you don't have anything else to say. It would be awkward if not for... Cool. Two of you stare at each other. Some more. It's definitely awkward. Moment passes. Artemis brushes their hand against yours. The back of their hand is soft. The ridges of their ring scrapes against your skin. Before you can hesitate any longer, you grab their hand. They have long fingers that fit naturally in spaces between yours. It feels natural. Neither of you say anything. It's one of those times where you think that's the best. As cheesy as it sounds, 
You just want to revel in this. You have a feeling that Artemis feels the same. I guess about the band. Haven't heard from them in a while. How's the band doing? We talked about it. We haven't talked about it in a while. Artemis nods enthusiastically. Oh yeah, the band's doing great. We have another show soon, like a legit one this time. What? No way! Where's it at? Artemis grins. It's bright. Obviously, they've been super excited about this. It's almost a surprise that they haven't told you about this sooner. You know that one music venue down past the library? You know, just the one. It's bizarre to have a library and a bumping music venue on the same street. But it's quite a popular spot. But it's a quite popular spot. You've been there on more than a couple occasions with Odina. Okay, hang on. My parents are texting me. Please. My parents are interrupting my, my intimate moment. <laughs> Please. I'm gonna mute real quick. Hi, Anemo parents. No. <laughs> Man. <laughs> BRB. Thank you. 
Hello. My parents called me. And they started telling me about how my cousin had designed a business card for my mom and how she wanted to get it printed. But she didn't want the one that my cousin designed. And and then my cousin got mad. So <laughs> This is why you don't go into business with your family. Anyway, let's go back to my moth. Um, I think I'm in love. This is very emotional whiplash for me. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Very. Yeah, so true though. Yeah, I mean... Like, they didn't want to... Call my cousin to make a logo in the first place. But, like, he kind of insisted on doing it. And, like, I didn't want to make a logo for her. My mom has told me several times that she would fire me. Yeah, no, same. Um, I feel like my mom would also fire me. But, like, I didn't want to make a logo for her just because, like, I don't know what the fuck she wants. I don't know, like, like, if I, if I do something wrong, I'm going to take it personally. And I don't want to do that. But, yeah, no, yeah, anyway, <laughs> where were we? Um, we were holding hands, <laughs> and we were, <laughs> man, we were talking about Artemis' band. Okay, okay, we're back, it's fine, we're back. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> it wouldn't be an anemone stream without my parents calling me. Anyway. You know, just the one. It's bizarre to have a library and a bumping music venue on the same street. It's quite a popular spot. You've been there on more than a couple occasions with Odina. True. <laughs> Please. Yeah, I do. You're playing at that one that's huge. Artemis blushes happily. It makes your chest warm. Ha, huh, yeah. It really is. It's about a month from now, but it's gonna be our show with another local group. I'm super excited. We stand in Nimble Parents. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> we were interrupted from the intimate moment. Oh no! <laughs> Not by the parents! It kind of feels like things are getting serious, you know what I mean? Crow and I have been writing more songs that we're going to share with Colia this weekend, and it's just, I don't know, feel serious now. You gently nudge them in the ribs with your elbow. They laughed. I'm excited for you, too. I'll go to all your shows. Just let me know when they are, and I'll be there. Artemis gazes at you then, cocking their head a little. It's a really fond gaze. Your stomach flips, but it's not unpleasant. Thank you. I really appreciate it. You can tell, with, you can tell that they mean it. You shrug, trying your best to be nonchalant. No problem. I'm here for you. That's about the job. Oh, hey. Whatever happened to the library job you were thinking about applying for? Artemis peers at you, looking confused for a moment. There's a beat. And then... Oh, the job. They break into a big smile, flashing you a peace sign. Forgot to tell you, I got hired. How'd you forget to tell me? Excuse me. Your jaw drops. What? No way! Yes way? That's amazing. I'm so proud of you. Artemis's cheeks go rosy. Their smile is crooked. Thank you so much. I owe it all to you, honestly. Oh, what? I didn't do- I didn't do much of anything. No, seriously. I probably wouldn't have applied for it if you hadn't encouraged me. This is the first time I, I've been, like, officially employed and... Gods, it's been... forever. I know it's going to be crazy to be earning regular paychecks. I'm excited for you. Ah, this is so exciting. Congrats, Artemis. Artemis shrugs a little, like it's nothing. They look so happy. You just might be even happier for them than they are for themselves. You don't have anything else to talk about? Two of you continue walking. You know from being around this area a bit that the plant store isn't far from now. Isn't far now. Maybe a couple more minutes of walking and you'll be there? 
You found that Artemis is one of those people that you enjoy your time in silence with. But you have another question poking at the edges of your brain. You know you asked them why they wanted to buy a plant, but still, you're curious otherwise. So are you, like, a plant person? Artemis's attention is drawn to you again. They hum, tilting their heads slightly in... Slightly in thought. You know, not really. Growing up, my attention span was way too short to take care of plants. We had a lot around the house, though. My mom loved them. So... Something just flashed on my screen. I don't know what it was. Growing up, my attention span was way too short to take care of plants. We had a lot around the house, so... My mom loved them, so... She would buy a ton. It's kind of her thing. Oh? Is... Can you still see the stream? Because that was weird. That was a weird flash on my browser. Anyway. Yes, okay. Okay, great. <laughs> yeah, okay, thank you. Oh, that's cool. So it's just plants, no pets? They shake their head. Nah, no pets. I remember pestering my parents for a pet. Specifically a dog. When I was younger. But that never happened. You know how kids are. It's funny because my little sister is in the same phase right now too. Like, every other day she's bringing up how she wants a hamster of all things. My stepmom keeps telling her no and she only gets more insistent. They pause. And then shrug idly. Their gaze kind of goes far away. Like they're in their own head now. I think it's cute. She reminds me a lot of myself when I was a kid. I think my dad and stepmom should let her get the hamster. I didn't know you had a sister. At your voice, they seem to focus on you again. They smile. And it's soft. Oh yeah, I have a sister. She's a lot younger than me. She's a sweetheart. Oh, what's her name? Diana. Their smile grows. They shrug for a second time. You know, I changed my name to match hers. Oh my god. My heart. For some reason, they make your chest feel tight. You don't think you've ever seen Artemis speak so fondly about another person. It's sweet. They're close with their sister. Stop, that's so cute. I know. Really? Yeah. Artemis is the Greek version of the Roman goddess Diana. She helped me pick it out. Oh my god! I don't get to see her very often anymore since I don't really leave town. Since I don't have a car. <laughs> but she likes to call me sometimes when she gets home from school. They sigh, scrunching their mouth to the side. They don't say anything else after that. Probably thinking about their sister. Let them go back to their thoughts for the time being. A couple moments later, they perk they perk back up, pointing down the street to a building with a parking lot in the front. There's a plant store. You look in the direction they're pointing as the two of you approach. The front of the building is majority glass, and you can see hundreds of plants inside. It looks almost like a forest trapped inside a store. Two of you cross the parking lot. When you get to the door, Artemis Let's go of your hand. I told the door open for you. Thanks. Artemis hums in response, following you into the store. The inside of the store smells so fresh. The floor is concrete and a bit damp everywhere you walk. There are plants everywhere. Lining shelves against the wall and tables stacked up on displays in the middle of the store. You're not sure that you've ever seen this many types of plants in the same place before. Both wander around the place, looking at everything. You mostly trailing behind wherever Artemis is going. There's a couple of minutes of this, then Artemis pauses in front of a table of ferns that all look exactly the same but in very Bavarian size. They turn to you, eyes wide. I'm going to be honest, I have no clue what I'm looking for. You laugh. You're looking for a beginner plant, right? Why don't you ask the person working? Artemis snaps their fingers, pointing at you like it's the best idea they've heard in ages. <laughs> Great idea. Artemis goes poking around the backside of the store with you, close at their heels. 
After rounding another display of aloe, the two of you are at the counter. That houses the register. Oh! A jackalope? I love this character! I love all these characters, oh my god. Sitting at the counter is a jackalope boy with massive antlers and silver hair that falls over his forehead. He's reading a book with a worn cover and dog-eared pages. There's a bookmark peeking out from between the back cover and some of the pages. Everyone is so cute, I know! If you squint, you can tell that it has something written on top of it in script. Jackson. Maybe that's his name? Uh, excuse me. Jackson startles, raising his head and blinking at the two of you. Seems like he didn't know that either of you were in the store. Oh, hello. There's something I can help you with. Yes, actually. Looking for a good beginner plant. Something I can accidentally forget about once in a while and not kill. You have to smother a snort. <laughs> it doesn't really work and ends up coming out as something strangled. <laughs> Artemis elbows you in the ribs. Jackson looks at the both of you some more, then nods very slowly. Okay, there are a couple I could show you. That would be great. Jackson sticks his bookmark in his spot. He goes up from his chair to walk around the corner. The counter. You have to try hard not to stare at and his big fuzzy hair legs. Oh. He's a lot taller than you expected now that he's standing. He begins walking towards the front of the store, and the two of you are quick to follow him. There's actually um there's actually a shelf over there with some good beginner plants. He leads you over to the shelf, trailing his fingers alongside one of the plastic plants. One of the plas- what? He leads you over to this shelf, trailing his fingers along one of the plants- plastic planters when he pauses. There's a bit of a silence as he looks over everything. So we have the spider plant here. It's not picky about light, water, or temperature. As you um, as you can see it grows to have these rather impressive hanging plantlets. That you can actually repot and grow if you wanted to. Trails off his fingers to another plant. This one taller with sword like leaves. This is a snake plant. It likes a lot of light, but um if you can handle less if necessary. It's not particular about watering as long as you don't water it too much. Striking shape, is it not? You and Artemis hum in idle agreement. You're starting to notice that the longer Jackson talks, the more he seems to get absorbed in his plant knowledge. He doesn't look as shy as he was before. Jackson gestures to a smaller, waxy-looking plant on a lower shelf. This here is a ZZ plant. It's very hardy, and it never grows very big. It can handle low light and not being watered as much. If you ignore it for a little while, it won't hurt it much. The next plant that Jackson gestures to is recognizable. As you can probably tell, this is an aloe vera plant. These are really popular beginner plants. They like heat and sun, but they are pretty low maintenance. They're also good for making the air feel fresher. There's another silence. You and Artemis watch Jackson gaze at the plants on the shelf for beat. His eyes wander, land on the two of you. And it's then that he get that he seems to realize that there were actually people here. He turns a bit red, getting shy again. Um, so so are the, are some good plants? You could try as a beginner. Do you have a preference? Artemis turns to you, looking very con con contemplative. I've never had to read that word before. They're all so cute. What do you think? Me? Artemis smiles warmly. It's infectious, and you can't help but return it. Yeah, you. I did say I wanted to get a plant with you, didn't I? Could you help me choose? Oh my god. Which plant do you think Artemis should get? Um, I don't think you should get an aloe, because they're actually difficult. I like the spider plant. What do we think? Ooh woo. Very ooh woo. Very ooh woo indeed. 
I'm gonna eat more of my Cheerios. Yeah, spider plant. Alrighty. I think a spider plant would do well. You think so? I'll get that one then. They turn to Jackson, who's standing there in front of you. Y'all look at each other for a beat, and then Jackson spurs into action. Gingerly pitting the spider plant up from the shelf. It's kind of funny. Jackson begins to make his way back to rear of the store, carefully weaving through plants on the floor and lush table displays. You and Artemis trail after him. When he's back behind the register counter, he sets the plant down like it's a baby. He then gestures to a shelf on the right side of the store that's stocked with pots of every color and size. Do you guys, um, want me to repot it for you? Artemis looks at you again, their eyes bright behind their glasses. Help me pick a pot, please? They remind you so much of a puppy in that moment that you can't help but laugh. You bump your arm against theirs. Sure, I'll help you pick a pot. There are a lot of different kinds of pots on the shelf, but you figure that you might as well pick by color rather than by any other attribute. There are white, green, red, black, and yellow pots. Which one will you pick? Red, obviously. I like the red pots. What about you? Artemis nods enthusiastically. They give you a thumbs up. Red is my color after all. It would be cute. It sure is your color. They go up to the shelf and after a contemplative beat, they select a short and round red pot. Artemis brings a pot they picked over to the counter. Jackson looks it over with a gaze. It almost looks critical, oh no. You picked a good size, you always um. You always want to pick a pot that's one or two inches larger than the original one. Gives the roots room to grow. Jackson dips under the counter for a bit, pulling out a larger plastic bin full of potting soil when he comes back up. He sets it on the counter, moving his book and other assorted items on the counter surface out of the way. Jackson rolls up his sleeves and proceeds to gently pry the plant from the plastic planter. Soil scatters across the counter. It's quiet. It's quiet as you and Artemis watch Jackson teases the roots out of the pot shape. He moves with the grace and surety that looks so delicate. You can tell that he loves doing this. He sets the plant inside of the bin of potting soil. He uses his hands to scoop soil into the new pot before placing the plant carefully among the soil. He keeps adding more soil, packing it down firmly, until Artemis' plant sits happily in its new pot. Going to want to water it when you get home. Jackson wipes his hands on a rag he procures from under the counter and begins to tidy everything up. Wow, thank you. You're really good at this. Let's make Jackson turn red. He distracts himself with the red stir now that his hands are clean. No problem. Artemis and Jackson run through the purchase process rather quickly. Soon enough, you and Artemis are thinking, thanking him and leaving the plant store. It's cooler outside today because it's later in the fall season, but the sun still shines radiant from among the clouds. It bathes the side of Artemis's face, making them almost too bright to look at. Man. Artemis has the plant cradled in one hand. You find them looking at it as the two of you walk. Satisfied? Artemis shifts her gaze to you. Their mouth quirks up at the corners, their eyes squinting a little. Yeah, really happy. It's cute, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's cute. Are you gonna name it? Artemis thinks about this, pursing his lips. Good question. I didn't think about that. There's a long pause. Looks like Artemis is thinking really hard. Okay, I have no idea. What do you think? What do I think? 
Yeah, silly, what do you think the name should be? Oh god, what do you want to name the plant? What do we want to name the plant? I wonder what happens if I put my name into the plant name. Do you think that gives you special dialogue? Maybe. Maybe. One brain cell. <laughs> We're gonna try it. Ane Anemone. Someone just followed me on Tumblr. Okay. What do you want to name the plant? Anemone. Yeah, we'll see. I like that. I'll keep it. Same as anemone now. It's a beat, then Artemis sort of snorts. You're about to ask them what exactly is so funny about the name you picked. But then they speak. It's just... It's just funny because it feels like we have joint custody over this thing. Oh my god, it's like divorced parents. Artemis laughs out loud, and you're not far behind. Okay, I probably shouldn't have put it that way. Definitely don't think of us as divorced parents. What do you think of us, then? Artemis doesn't say anything for a moment. Your smile is crooked, and their cheeks are pink, and gods, you are effectively charmed. I thought it would mention your name. I know, right? I thought it would, too. Divorced parents. <laughs> I don't know. Depends on what you think we are. Oh. You feel your face grow warm. You don't know how to answer that. There are a lot of things you think you and Artemis are. You're just not sure which thing is the right one. The two of you walk in comfortable silence for the next couple of minutes. Your apartment is just around the corner now. It was a perfect dialogue for it. It was! Like, I thought that's what it would be. After crossing the street, you can see your apartment building in the distance. The next thing you know, you're walking up the steps to the front door of the complex. Artemis lingers behind you. You turn to face him. Keeps in hand after a dip into your pockets. Kinda look at you for a moment, like they're trying to sort out what they want to say to you. There's a pause, and they speak. Thanks for hanging out with me today. You smile. Of course, I like spending time with you. You notice that the tip of Artemis' ears are turning red. Something about that makes you infinitely pleased. The beat of silence that follows is somehow not awkward, but then again, you've begun to notice that recently things with Artemis aren't as awkward as they used to be. The way they're holding that silly plant is driving you nuts. You kind of want to... Hmm. Hi, G-Van. Welcome. Welcome to the stream. I've been live for seven hours. I... <laughs> We're gonna finish this game. I'm too... I'm too far in. We have to finish it. Hi, G-Van. <laughs> what are we gonna do? Are we gonna hug him or kiss him? Do we... <laughs> what are we gonna do? <laughs> I think we're gonna kiss him. This three-hour game, I know, right? Kiss, kiss, kiss. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> okay. Kiss them. Can I kiss you? Say it without thinking. Artemis blinks at you. A couple more beats pass. You watch the color of their ears seep down to their cheeks. With that little embarrassment you have left, you feel yourself flushing to match. When did you get so bold? I saw stream earlier and didn't think I was gonna make it, but I did. Nice. <laughs> Welcome in, Chiban. I'm glad you're here. Uh, sure. Okay. Artemis chews on their bottom lip, trying to hide a smile that's growing by the second. 
Okay. Let's see if we stare at each other some more. You have to tell yourself that you should probably kiss him now before it truly gets awkward. You step forward, nudging one foot between theirs. Artemis attempts to readjust their hold on the plant. It doesn't work. It's still in the way. Tilt your chin up ever so slightly, and it's then that Artemis seems to actually realize what's going on. You know that you were the one who asked to kiss them, but suddenly, they're the one kissing you. Not that you mind or anything. The kiss is eager but short. A fiercely sweet pressing of lips that somehow conveys a million different emotions at once. Artemis always kisses you like they've been waiting to do it all day. Makes your inside twist up like knots. When you break apart, Art Artemis has the audacity to look shy. They start to chew on their lip again. And it takes everything in you not to crane up and kiss them again. We're gonna see each other again soon, right? Your heart squeezes in your chest. Of course. Am I gonna be able to trust you to take care of Anemone when I'm not around? This makes Artemis laugh. It's deep and warm, like melted chocolate in the sun. Yes, you can trust me. I would hate to get my partial custody revoked. You and me both. The plan needs two parents to grow up happy and healthy. What is this? <laughs> Okay, sure. You'll just have to come over it so you can check on it. Make sure I'm not neglecting it or anything disdainful like that. I just might. I've got to make sure that you're living up to the, your parental duties. Artemis grins at you, nudging your shoulder with their free hand. I'll see you later? Yeah, I'll see you later. Text me when you get home. They look at... They look at... What? The look that Artemis gives you, then, is incredibly fond. You bite down hard on the inside of your cheek. I will. Bye, Anemone. Bye, Artemis. <laughs> oh my god. They adjust their hold on the plant one last time before stepping away. But not without giving you one last smile. You have to force yourself not to watch them leave. If you're honest, you're already looking forward to the next time you get to see each other. After a long week, you have $24. Oh my god, $97, that's so much money. I thought the plan was a 24-hour stream, so it's normal to me. <laughs> Brooke! I mean, if it takes 24 hours to finish this 3-hour game... Alright then. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep eating my Cheerios. You and Odino just finished having dinner, and she's helping you wash up. The two of you have gone the two of you haven't gone to hang out too much this week because Odina has been constantly at work. We finally got a moment to be together tonight. Unfortunately, it's time for the both of you to part. Because Odina has somewhere to be, and so do you. You bring Odina the last of the dishes from the dining table and she thanks you, flashing you a brief smile. So what do you have to do after this? You linger by her side, picking up a dry rag from the counter and beginning to dry off the dishes on a dish rack. I'm actually going to Artemis's place. A smile that Odina gives you then could only be described as devious. It makes her stomach flip. You rush to explain yourself, but Odina jumps in before you can. You sure do spend a lot of time with them. You sputter. Suddenly, the plate you're drying is extremely interesting. I spend a lot of time with you, too. Odina giggles, bumping her hip against yours playfully. Just messing with you. I'm glad that you have other friends. I love spending time with you, but I'm also happy that you have other people to be around. Something about Odina's words make you feel dizzy. So I haven't told her about you and Artemis. It's been over three weeks, and you don't think she's heard anything about what happened at the lake or about... Anything else? I have something to tell you. Dina looks up from the sudsy dish water. Her eyebrows quirked up. Hmm? You know, you're, you know you're starting to turn red just thinking about speaking the words out loud. 
is like confronting a lot of your own feelings. Artemis and I aren't exactly friends anymore. Odina's brows draw together. She's confused. What? It's quiet. Odina stares at you for a beat, then her mouth drops open, her eyes going as wide as saucers. Are you two dating? You don't say anything. Just lick your lips and sort of smile awkwardly. Odina is completely gobsmacked. You're dating Artemis and you didn't tell me! <laughs> okay, wait. We're not actually dating, but it's... OMG, I can't believe you didn't tell me! Did you guys kiss? Um... <laughs> the silence is stretches Zen. Seems to tell Odina everything she needs to know. You two are kissing! Only... only sometimes! <laughs> you didn't tell me! How long has it been? If you weren't so flustered, you might have laughed. She really has no idea. Since the lake? No fucking way. Yes way? And you're dating now. No? Yes, I don't really know. We just... we just like each other, I guess. Wow, look at you. They grow so fast. You smack her gently on the arm. She laughs and flicks dishwater at you. There's a content silence. Odina sighs, shakes her head and smiles. You know, it's going to sound crazy, but I sort of had a feeling. Oh my gods, you did not. I did, I swear. You might not have noticed it back then, but Artemis has always looked at you in a way they don't look at anyone else. I noticed it when we went to the lakeside. Believe it or not, I am quite perceptive. This kind of embarrasses you. Did everyone know that Artemis liked you before you did? It's either that Artemis is bad at hiding their feelings, or that you're just oblivious. Maybe it's a combination of both. Odina goes back to scrubbing a pan. We're gonna do it at Artemis' place anyway. We're gonna watch Midwest Singles double episode season finale. Oh, no way! I'm gonna watch it too after I finish up at the salon! Going to salon this late? It's past seven. Odina sighs, sticking her bottom lip out. Yeah, I have to drop by to process payroll. Since when do you process payroll? Isn't that your boss's job? Yeah, that's what I thought too. I think I'm becoming the assistant manager without actually being told that I'm becoming the assistant manager. And also without making assistant manager salary. God, I hate that so much. That's what they did at my old job. They like had me do a bunch of team lead stuff and I wasn't a team lead and I wasn't getting paid to do any of it. I hate that so much. That's not good. Maybe you should um talk to your boss. Ew, I know, right? Odina hums thoughtfully. She tilts her head a bit to the side. Her long hair falling over her shoulders. Hmm. Thought about it. Why haven't you done it? I was under the impression that your boss was nice. Odina shrugs and begins rinsing some silverware. Yeah, Sophia's nice, but... But? I don't know. I don't want to bother her. Girl. She's taking advantage of you. Even if she doesn't mean to, she is. You're reliable, and you like what you do. But that doesn't mean she can step all over you. Exactly. If you say something, maybe the two of you can come to a mutual understanding. You might be able to figure out a solution. Odino seems to think about this, placing her rinsed silverware in the dish rack. For you to dry, she hums again. You have a good point. I am not really sure why I haven't said anything this whole time. Communication is a good thing, you know? Part of me has been like, oh, she's giving you all these responsibilities. That must mean she must trust you and thinks you're good at what you do, but I... I don't know. It's a bit exhausting, especially because I'm not getting paid anymore to do... Any of it. Absolutely. There's a short silence. Odina smiles at you then. It's warm. Thanks, Anemone. I should definitely say something. You really helped me put, put that into perspective. You nudge Odina gently with your arm, smiling back at her. Of course. You and Odina finish washing up shortly after you finish talking. Odina helps you put all of the clean and dry dishes away. And she wipes her damp hands on the front of her shirt mindlessly. I should probably get going. Oh, I wish you didn't have to go. 
Odina sticks her bottom lip out, her, bris her brows creasing. I know. We don't get to hang out as much as we used to. I miss you. I miss you too. Once I get all this work stuff sorted out, we can hang out more, I promise. She says it so vehemently, completely determined. She throws her arms open for a hug, and you can't resist her. Her hugs are always so warm and sweet. She always smells good. I'm gonna hold you to that, okay? Okay. Adina pulls away from the hug, her hands sliding down your arms. She's smiling. See you later, alright? Have fun with Artemis. I will. I'll see you later. Odina collects her things and slips on her shoes, and, the next thing you know, two of you are saying your final goodbyes. When she leaves, you, s you just stand there by the door for a little bit. You love her, you kind of miss her already. Suddenly, you remember that you have plans tonight as well. You could sit and be a bit sad that you can't spend time with Odina as much as you'd like to, and you can get ready to go to Armand Miss's house. Looked for the ladder, shuffling through the kitchen to get your bedroom. To get to your bedroom. There was one thing you didn't tell Odina about your plans with Artemis. It's a sleepover. It's a sleepover? What? I'm sorry? Whenever you think about sleeping over at Artemis' place, you feel your insides twist and turn and tie up into a million knots. Ayo! <laughs> Come again? It's not exactly a bad feeling, but gods, you're nervous. If you think too hard about it, you might psych yourself out of it. You remember the way Artemis had brought it up earlier this week. You two had been grabbing coffee at Webby's, and you remember the way Artemis' face had been scarlet when they'd asked. You almost couldn't believe that they asked in the first place. You'd agreed, flustered and embarrassed, but insanely pleased for some reason. You're not exactly sure what this means for your relationship with Artemis, but you hope that it's something good. Like, the sleeping sleepover, or... <laughs> I guess we'll find out. Or... <laughs> you get to pack up your things in a drawstring backpack you found in the depths of your closet. I'm going to be taking the bus to Artemis' place. It's a bit too late to be walking around, and besides, if you walk, you'll miss the beginning of the Mid Midwest singles finale. When you're done gathering your things, you check your transit app on your phone. The bus comes in seven minutes, you grab a light jacket off your bed and get to moving. Luckily, there's a bus stop just outside your apartment. By the time you get down... By the time you get down there, you only have to wait a little while before it rolls up to the curve. It's only about a ten minute bus ride to Artemis' place. But it's been a while since you've been over there. Last time was when you went over to watch a movie last a month ago. Oh, is it like January by now? Right? Because we started in like September. No, it's like November, December? Time. It's crazy to think that it's been so long, but it doesn't feel like time has passed at all. Keep checking your phone throughout the bus ride to make sure you don't miss your stop, but after a while, the streets and buildings start to look a little familiar. Time is not real. Time is very not real. When your phone tells you that it's time to get off, you pull the, sing the signal cord and the bus slows as it approaches the next stop. You get up from your seat, ready to disembark. On your way off the bus, you call out to the driver. Thank you! Always say thank you to your bus driver. Now that you're on the sidewalk, you get the opportunity to look around. Everything is coming back to you. Artemis' place is down the street, and to the left. You get to walking, pulling your jacket tight around you. It's been getting chillier at night lately. In a couple minutes, you're at Artemis' doorstep. You knock on the door. Maybe you should send Artemis a text to let them know that you're here. Your thoughts are interrupted by the front door opening to real Artemis. <laughs> Their face lights up when they realize that it's you standing there. Hey! Hi! Smile brightly and Artemis returns it. You can already feel your heart doing that melting thing again. You... I'm gonna kiss him on the cheek. Can 
to give you a kiss. Hello. A smile on Artemis's face slips into something fond. Fucking hell. You don't think you'll ever get used to them looking at you like that. Sure. You move closer to them and crane up, pressing your lips to the curve of Artemis's cheek. It's nothing much, but doing it makes the inside of your chest feel warm. When you pull back, Artemis has this wobbly grin on their face. What? They shrug, fiddling with their own fingers. Their ears are rosy. Nothing. You've just never kissed me on the cheek before. I like that. <laughs> wow, they're cute. I forgot to text you and tell you I was on my way. Sorry. That's okay. You're here now. That's all that really matters. You're in time for Midwest Singles. That's the best part. Artemis steps out of the doorway so you can go inside the house. Which you do. Once you're inside, Artemis closes the door behind you. Take off your shoes and follow Artemis into the living room. There's something playing on the television, but it's nothing you recognize. No one's watching it either. Artemis pauses in front of the TV, grabbing the remote off the coffee table, turning off the television. Were you watching something? Yeah, it's this office romance drama from a couple years ago. It's silly. You didn't know Artemis watched office romance dramas. It's kind of silly. That is kind of silly. But you'd think that it's the best kind of silly. You vaguely recall seeing all of those reality TV shows on Artemis's Cryptflix. Last time you were over there, you are over here. Perhaps Artemis enjoys more corny and trashy television than you thought. Not as silly as you think. We're literally about to watch the matchmaking television show about Mid Midwesterners. Cryptflix, I know, right? <laughs> Artemis laughs, setting down the remote and heading out of the living room to get to the kitchen. You are so right. In the kitchen, the both of you find Kuro seated at the table eating a thin slice of what looks like chocolate cake. Hey! Kuro looks up from his cake, licking frosting from his lips. Hey. He seems to see you behind Artemis. You raise your hand in greeting. He peers at you, almost like he's examining you and cataloging every detail for later. Then he dips his head as a hello. Hey, Anemone. He's addressing you! For some reason, you feel a rush of satisfaction. It almost feels like you finally gained Kuro's approval. Hey, Kuro. You here to keep this rascal company? Oh, look at that grin. <laughs> he points at Artemis lazily. This is chocolate smeared fork. Artemis rolls her eyes. You try not to laugh. Yes, actually. Good. Cause it, because really, there's no telling what they'll get up to once Mordag and I leave. Oh, you're leaving? As soon as they say that. As soon as you say that, you can hear someone bouncing down the stairs. A few seconds later, Mordag is walking into the kitchen. A bag slung across her body. Where are they going? Ready, ready when you are, Koo. Mordag's gaze slides to you and Artemis. Her lips pull back into a smile full of sharp teeth. Your heart jumps, even though you've seen her smile so many times. Hey, Nemini. Haven't seen you in a bit. Are you hanging out? Hanging out for the night? Yeah. Artemis and I are gonna watch Midwest Singles finale. What? No way. Totally wanted to watch that. If I'd known it was airing tonight, today, I probably would have said no to going to this concert. She says the last sentence more towards Kuro than anyone else in the room. Kuro snorts, shoveling the remains of his cake in his mouth before getting up from the table. Kuro is so funny. Whatever. You're welcome to stay here and watch your shit- <laughs> Your shit was singles if you want. Shit was singles. You guys are going to a concert? Yeah! It's a super sharp concert. A super sharp concert. Mordag laughs, waving her hand at you. On the other side of the kitchen, Kuro is washing his plate. It's a duo. They make really loud and abrasive punk music. It's mostly Kolia's thing, but I thought it sounded like fun. Kuro finished washing up now. You see him dry his hands on a rag hanging under the sink. 
he ambles over, pulling his phone from his pants pocket. Speaking of Colia, we should probably get going. She just texted me asking where we are. Don't tell her we're still at home. Say we're on the way or something. <laughs> Typical. I need to turn my light on. The sun is setting. The sun is setting. We've been here all day. We've been here all day. Mordak turns to you and Artemis, flashing another smile full of teeth. <laughs> Brooke, please. I need to know how this ends. I need to... I need to... You finish this game. You two have fun tonight, okay? Don't break anything while we're away. We won't. You guys have fun too. Okay, we really should go. Colia texted me again and said that if we're not at her place in the next 15 minutes, she's going to leave without us. She's left without us before. She's definitely not joking. Curl looks at Mordag, his eyebrows raised. You ready? Hell yeah, I'm ready. We are dedicated to Mothman. Yeah. Yeah, we are. <laughs> Let's fucking go then. See you later, losers. Hope you lose your phone in the mosh pit. Oh, that's harsh. Bye, Artemis. Love you. Love you too. Have fun. You too, Curl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love you. Bye, Nemini. Don't get into too much trouble. Bye, Nemini. <laughs> Bye. Kuro and Mordag siddle past the two of you, leaving the kitchen and heading towards the front door. There's a moment of them putting their shoes on. Then you hear the front door and open. You hear the front door open and close. It's quiet. You and Artemis are alone. Artemis moves then, lightly brushing their hand against the small of your back to get you to follow them. Oh my god. <laughs> Let's go upstairs. You trail behind them, following them upstairs into their bedroom. They leave the door open, probably because no one else is home. You hover in the doorway, Artemis going straight to their bed to clear some clothes off, off the bedspread. Now that you're looking, the room is a bit cluttered, more than it was last time you were here. You don't particularly mind too much, clutter is different than dirty. That's true. I'm curious, why aren't you going to the concert too? Seems like something you would have fun at. Artemis looks over the shoulder at you, in the middle of hanging up those clothes in the closet. You wander idly into the room, settling down in their dust chair. Artemis shrugs mindlessly. You hear the clattering of flashed kangaroos against each other. Ah, I don't know. Kuro, Koli, and Mordak told me about it only a couple days ago. And I'd already made plans with you for today. They shrug again. They close their closet door, then bend down and begin to pick up some shirts from the carpet. I love my friends, but I... I don't know. Really want to hang out with you? Oh my god. <laughs> Everything Artemis says to you makes you want to evaporate into particles. You know that they're just speaking their mind, but something about it makes your blood rush hot and fast under your skin. That's sweet of you. I... I like hanging out with you. Artemis pulls the clothes they collected from the floor into a hamper by their closet, looking over at you with a small pot with a small smile on their lips. I like hanging out with you too. Being around you makes me happy. You feel yourself blush. Artemis is already doing the same, averting their eyes from you. That was corny, wasn't it? A little bit. I liked it though. Artemis bites back another smile. They sit down on the floor then, among a bunch of spray stray papers and start to rifle through them. You watch them make small piles for a while, then you speak. Do you want me to help you? Huh? Oh. Oh, sure, if you want. Sorry. Should have organized before you got here. It's embarrassing for you to see my messy room. You slide in the chair down the floor, settling your clothes to where Artemis is sitting so you can look over whatever they're starting through. It's okay. I don't mind the clutter. They put a piece of paper in a pile on their left. You're not really sure which piles are for what. What are you organizing? Take a peek at you from over the frames of their glasses before observing the piles they've arranged. Um, trash and not trash, I guess? 
These papers have been sitting around for forever. Not sure why I've kept everything. You look over some of the papers in the pile in front of you. You're not sure what's trash and not trash. See a bunch of grocery store receipts, notebook paper scrawled over with Artemis slanted handwriting, stained with coffee rings, sheets of printer paper smeared with excess ink. You're not exactly certain what Artemis would want to keep. You so see, you just settle for sorting things by type of item. Notebook paper goes in one pile, receipts in another pile, and open mail in another pile. Chufi sit on the floor in comfortable silence for a while, sorting papers into piles until things feel a little neater. Artemis gets up every so often to collect more random papers from around their room, adding to the main pile in front of the both of you. At some point, you begin to unearth Polaroid photos among everything else. There aren't very many, just three, but they pique your interest. What do you want me to do with these? Artemis looks up, peering at the photos in your hand. They seem confused, but that expression is quickly replaced with a bright recognition. Oh my gods, I've been looking for those for forever. Look at the photos again. They look like pictures taken on one of those disposable cameras you buy from retail pharmacies. Two of the pictures are of a little girl you don't recognize. One of her sitting in a tire swing under a drooping tree, and the other of her smiling over a dripping ice cream cone covered in sprinkles. Hydrate, thank you for the hydrate. The third picture, the third picture of us is of Artemis with the little girl. Your cheeks press together as they squeeze into the frame. With big smiles on their faces, it's a little blurry. Who's this? Artemis takes the photo from you, looking them over. You watch a smile pull at their lips, but it's a different kind of smile, one you've never seen on them before. It's my sister, Diana. Oh, that's so sweet. How old are these pictures? They're from this past summer. I went back home for two weeks and we hung out a lot. She never wanted to leave my sight the whole time. I think she misses me a lot when I'm not around. Artemis falls silent, gazing at the pictures again. You sort of try to sneak another peek at them, craning your neck a little. It's really none of your business, but Artemis and their sister look nothing alike. Like, they're completely different people. You don't think anyone would be able to even mistake them for siblings. Artemis is all long limbs, dark wings, and red eyes. Their sister... Their sister is softer than them. With deep, horizontal pupils, splotchy cheeks, and a small button nose. And she's green. We're not actually related. Oh. Artemis' words snap you out of your own head. You feel, f you feel yourself flush in embarrassment. It's like they read your mind. Artemis gives you a crooked smile. That's what you're thinking, right? It was. It was what I'm thinking. You're not really sure how to answer that. This almost feels wrong to have been thinking it. Was it disrespectful? You chew on your bottom lip, resorting to keep quiet. She's my stepmom's kid, technically an only child. I think of her as my real sister, though. I love her more than, more than anything in my whole life. She was really young when my dad and my stepmom got married. I'm not sure if she completely knows that we're not actually related by blood. Still sweet that she gets to have an older sibling either way. I don't think being flesh and blood has a big factor in your relationship with her. Yeah. Artemis nods slowly, setting down the photos with care. Yeah, I definitely agree. Are you as close with your stepmom as you are with your sister? There's a silence. Then Artemis makes a face, an unpleasant one. You get a sinking feeling in the pit of your stomach. No. It's a hard no. Nothing non-negotiable. It's a no rooted in distaste and disdain. It makes you feel a bit dizzy. Oh, I'm sorry. Artemis shrugs. They move some papers around, but you can tell that it's just so that their hands will be busy. 
Nothing to be sorry about. I... Oh, I feel bad, but I want to ask them. Ask why. You begin to chew on your lip again. You're not sure if Artemis will find it irritating. But you are rather curious. Known them for a while now, and it would be nice to get to know them better on this level as well. But if they don't want to say anything else, that's fine too. You don't think you're obligated to any information. Do you mind if I ask why? Artemis slides their eyes back up to you. They just look at you for a moment. It makes your insides squirm. There's another beat. Then they exhale through their nose. A ghost of a smile twitches onto their mouth. No. Of course I don't mind if you ask why. There's yet another pause. They lick their lips. My mom passed away when I was just starting high school. It was a car accident. One afternoon, she left for the grocery store. Just got unlucky, I guess. Your heart drops. You try not to let it show on your face. I'm trying to let Artemis finish talking. Oh, I know, right? Oh, oh is right. <laughs> My dad dealt with his grief a lot quicker than I did. I was still a kid, still growing and all that, so I was working through all of the emotions of my mom not being around anymore, coupled with all of the emotions of being a teenager. It was a mess. My dad met my stepmom, I think, ten months, ten months after my mom passed away. I wasn't ready, but I think my dad was. He needed to move on, but I couldn't deal with the fact that some other weird lady had come to replace my mom. It's probably the grief mixed with all the teenage angst. But once my stepmom started coming around, when she married my dad, we didn't we did not mesh very well. She never really did anything in particular, but I don't know. She wasn't my mom. She still isn't. My dad's always been the meeker type. So it was common for my stepmom to take control of things. Suddenly I had to answer to her. And ask her to things or ask her if I could go places and I hated it. I don't think she liked that I never listened to her. I think she she wanted to be my mom really badly. She wanted me to be her kid, but I just I don't know. I just couldn't. We still don't really get along. It makes me feel a little guilty because I feel like it's my fault that we're not close, but I I guess I'm still grieving can't come to terms with things even though it's been so long. The, the good thing about it all, though, is Diana. There's one thing I'm grateful for and my stepmom for. It's Diana. Diana is... She's everything. I don't know how to describe it. I've never loved someone so much. Artemis fixes their eyes on you. Almost like they're seeing you for the first time during the entire conversation. Their lips pull up at at the corners, their tone grows fond, wistful. Diana would love you. Oh my god. <laughs> For some reason, you think you would cry. I'd love to meet her. You and Artemis finish organizing papers after a while. Time slips by, and the next thing you know, Artemis is checking their phone and going, Oh! Midwest Singles is on in like, five minutes! Let me just take these papers down to the recycling and I'll be right back up. You know where the TV remote is, right? Do you think you could turn it on while I'm downstairs? Yeah, I can do that. Awesome, I'll be right back. I... My heart hurts. I'm in pain. <laughs> you watch Artemis gather a bunch of papers that, that two of you had sorted into the trash pile into their arms. It's a bit inefficient, but... Seems to do the trick as they're trotting out of the bedroom, with only a couple stray receipts slipping out of their grasp. Once Artemis is gone, you get up and look around. You actually do not know where the TV remote is. Maybe by their bed? You take a peek on one nightstand, then the other. No dice. You walk across the room towards the TV. There's a short shelf under the television, and it's there that you find the remote. Success! You go back to sit down on Artemis' bed, turning on the TV and flipping through the channels until you land on a familiar faces 
of Midwest singles. It's pretty much started. Cold open is already played. A couple moments later, Artemis walks back into the room. Is it on? Yep. You scoot over on the bed, making space for Artemis to settle down next to you. Who are you rooting for? Not gonna lie, I have a soft spot for Michaela and Cole. No way! Cole is such a loser! He is! That's what makes him interesting! Must be why Michaela likes him so much. What about you? I'm team Kiana and Peter all the way. Oh wow, they're basically the first couple this season. Remember the feud between Kiana and Kathleen? Artemis laughs, nudging your shoulder with theirs. Of course I remember. It was training online for like 12 hours. <laughs> I remember Odina telling me about it. That was over two months ago, wow. Conversation peters out as the title sequence begins to play. Your attention is snagging like a fish on a hook. It's almost funny that you're watching the finale with Artemis right now. I used to tease Odina for watching all of her shitty reality TV. But now here you are, watching it on, on your own free will. I suppose, you suppose that there's a reason that trashy reality television has existed for so long. People just can't avoid getting sucked into it. Midwest Singles Finale is two episodes long, but an hour of content. It's quite a bit of drama to get through. I'm going to be sitting here for a while. In the back of your mind, you wonder if Odina is at her house watching the finale too. You have so much to talk about when you see her again. You and Artemis watch the finale in attentive silence for about 10 minutes before your attention starts to wander. The couple on screen isn't exactly the one you're interested in, so you find yourself distracted by what you are interested in. Oh! Artemis is so close to you, close enough that your shoulders are pressed against each other. You can all smell their conditioner. <laughs> your stomach twists. You find yourself distracted by Artemis' side profile. Oh? <laughs> distracted by the reflection of the television on the lens of their glasses. They're so caught up in the show that you don't think they know you're looking. Um. <laughs> when it rests your head on their shoulder. It's an idle movement and you can't help yourself. You tilt your head just enough so that it rests on Artemis' shoulder. Artemis doesn't seem to realize right away, but when they do, they don't do much. Just take a peek at you. As both of you direct your attention back to the TV, after a while you can feel Artemis' eyes on you. Your cheek is pressed against her shoulder. You look up at them, a smile goes to your lips. Artemis' cheeks go a little rosy. They return the smile. They return your smile, one hand coming up to brush some hair from your forehead. They tuck the strands behind your ear. Their touch, delicate and barely there. The first time they've ever touched you like that. You think you could die. Do if you spend the next hour like that, cuddling up close to each other as the finale continues to play? The season finale seems to fly by. By the time it's over, you feel like you've only just started it. The two of you sit through the end credits for a moment. Once the TV broadcast begins to play another reality TV show that you don't recognize, Artemis turns her face to kiss you softly on the head and moves, <laughs> moves to get up from the bed. You hungry? They walk over to the TV, finding their remote on the console below it, turning it off. You only just had dinner with Odina a couple hours ago, but you think you could go for a snack? I could eat something, sure. Cool. Got some stuff in the fridge that you could pick from. They adjust her for you to follow them out of the bedroom, so you swing your legs off the bed and rush to trail after them. The house feels so big and empty without Kuro and Mordak home. It's a creaky house, too. When you go down the stairs, the wood under your feet screams. It's a bit unsettling. You're not sure how Artemis sometimes stays on their own in this house. Artemis flicks the kitchen lights on. And both of you arrive in the room. 
Your eyes wander over the stove clock, and you're surprised to discover that it's after 10. Oh wow, it's late. Artemis goes over to the fridge, opening it and peering inside. You follow behind them. I know, right? I didn't realize that it was already 10. They hum, perusing the selection of food in the fridge. You try to look over the shoulder to peek at the contents as well. Okay, so... There's some leftover spicy rigatoni from last night. Some veggie pizza Mordag brought home this morning. And then Curl left some miso ramen in there. For the house. Artemis steps out of the fridge, turning to you. Or I could make you, like, a sandwich if you wanted. What do you want to eat? Um. I want the pizza. Pizza sounds good. Is it just veggies? Artemis takes the pizza box out of the fridge, opening it to examine the contents. Yeah, looks like it. I think it's a vegan pizza too. Mordag told me that I could have some if I wanted. You're vegan now? Last time we checked, they were vegetarian. Maybe they're trying out a new food lifestyle or something? Artemis shakes her head, pulling a plate from one of the cabinets and begins to arrange some slices on it. No, not really. I've just been trying to not eat so much dairy lately. Kind of makes me break out. Oh. Oh, really? Yeah, I'll get crazy since sometimes. Mordag is lactose intolerant, though. Makes sense. Are you okay with microwave pizza? It'll be a little... floppy. You can't help but snort. Artemis gives you a crooked little smile. Their eyes bright. I'm okay with floppy pizza, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> oh? Artemis gets another plate for their pizza slices, then plops one plate into the microwave just for just over a minute. Once it's done, they put their plate in, handing the other plate to you. You find a seat at the kitchen table, and Artemis is quick to follow once their pizza is done. Two of you eat together, sharing small talk in between bites. What do you think of the finale? You slide your eyes from your food to look at Artemis. You swallow before speaking, nodding a little. It was good. A bit anticlimactic, considering that the rest of the season was pretty action-packed. But I assume they're going to have another season after this. I've watched the other seasons. This one is definitely not as good as some of the others. Have you seen season 3? Season 3 is the best season. You can't help but laugh. You attempt to cover it up, digging your head and putting your hand over your mouth. What? Don't laugh. I'm- I'm not laughing. Artemis elbows you in the ribs, then begins to continuously poke you in the ribs until you're squirming. <laughs> in the most unbecoming way. Artemis! Don't laugh at me for liking shitty reality TV! <laughs> you bat Artemis's hand away. Laughter hiccuping out of you. You try to get a proper breath. It's just... it's funny! Artemis pretends to look scandalized. It is not funny. You watch shitty reality TV too. Haven't watched anything other than the season of Midwest Singles. The fact that you've seen everything is just funny. I'm invested, okay? Sure, sure. Maybe you can watch the third season of Midwest Singles together one of these days? Oh my god, so you, we have to. It's literally the best season. You snicker again, waving your hand in Artemis' direction. You hear them laugh, too. You think they know how silly they sound. It's cute. Both of you get... Both of you finish eating a couple long moments later. Artemis begins to clean up. You get up from your chair, having a little stretch. You yawn. It's getting late. You need to go get ready for bed if that's okay with you. Artemis is over the sink, washing the dishes. They look at you. Yeah, good idea. Do you want me to turn on a movie? Think about it, you are sleepy. You could stay up a little longer. Especially since you just ate. Watching a movie could be a good way to wind down could be a good wind down activity. Even if you accidentally fall asleep during it. And if you're honest, you kind of are a bit nervous for the whole actual sleeping portion of the sleepover. <laughs> oh, only sleeping then? 
You sound so disappointed, Caro. <laughs> but, I mean, we'll see. You don't know where Artemis is going to have you sleep. In their bed? Next to them? Just the thought makes your face go hot. <laughs> a movie would be fine. You can pick whatever. Sick. I'll be up in a minute. Aren't you? I am. I am disappointed. <laughs> but, like... We haven't gotten to the actual sleeping yet, so... There's still time. There's still time. You go ahead and make your way back upstairs, looking over your shoulder to peer at Artemis until you can't see them anymore. You left your bag in their room, next to their desk. And you grab it, slinging it over your shoulder as you look at the bathroom. You vaguely remember using the bathroom last time you were here, so... You're able to find it without poking about in other rooms. That looks like the bathroom of three young adults. The entire upstairs shares the same bathroom. It's a bit cluttered. A bunch of products line the counter. There are multicolored toothbrushes stuck in a clay holder by the sink. Cat stickers on the mirror. A teetering stack of toilet paper on the floor. When you move to close the bathroom door, you can see that someone's marked their heights of everyone in the house on the frame. Aww. It makes you smile a bit. You tuck some hair behind your ear, rummaging in your bag for your toothbrush and toothpaste. You're in the middle of brushing your teeth when you start to realize that your bag is deceptively light. Hold your toothbrush between your teeth, trying not to dribble toothpaste suds everywhere. And go through your bag again. Holy fuck, you're dense! You forgot to bring pajamas! That's totally something I would do, oh my god. You resist the urge to sigh, knowing that if you do, you'll make a mess of toothpaste, juice all down your chin, you scrub at your teeth some more. Oh, I know, right? Now we have to ask them for pajamas? Like, what? Brows? <laughs> Seriously, sleepover, how could you forget to bring pajamas? You finish brushing your teeth and rinse out your mouth. You take that time to wash your face, pulling some cleanser from your bag. You remember to bring the stuff for your face. You remember to bring the stuff for your face regimen, but not close to sleep. It says wonders about your brain. It's like the one thing you need. I know, right? After a while, you're done in the bathroom. You slip back into the hallway, making your way to Artemis's room. You walk into the room and find Artemis lounging on their bed, typing away on their phone. They're in pajamas, just an oversized faded green t-shirt, a pair of shorts that just barely reach their mid-thighs, and some stripy socks. You don't think you've ever seen this much of their skin the entire time that you've known them. It sort of flusters you. Yeah, girl, me too. Hey, I fucked up. Artemis looks up from their phone, eyebrows raised. You fucked up? Yeah, I forgot to bring pajamas. Artemis breaks into a stupid little grin. You forgot to bring pajamas to a sleepover? You groan, rolling your eyes up to the ceiling. Artemis gets up from the bed, going over their closet. I know, I already went through that exact thought with myself five minutes ago. Here, you can wear this. Artemis comes over to you with some clothes in their arms. They push them into your hands. They might be a little big, sorry about that. No, it's okay, thank you. No problem. Put on a movie while you change. You nod in response, leaving the room to go back to the bathroom. When you get there, and close the door behind you, you take a moment to look at what Artemis has given you. It looks like another old t-shirt and stained with paint and a pair of sweatpants. Ooh, paint? You put the clothes on easily enough, but Artemis was right. They are a little big. It's comfy, though, and fabric smells like them. Hesitate for a moment before lifting the front of the shirt to your nose. It smells so much like them. Like coffee and grass and vanilla. And it's just... It's almost a bit overwhelming. But at the same time, you think you could keep smelling this for the rest of the night. It makes you feel a little bit like a freak. <laughs> but gods, Artemis smells so good. You shuffle back over to Artemis' bedroom. They've already turned on the movie, and it's paused as they wait for you. 
They're under the covers now. Sheets pulled up to their waist. They look at you when you walk in. There's a beat of silence. Your ears grow hot as you realize that they're taking you in. They chew on their lip. You look... You look cute in my clothes. Their voice cracks at the end of the sentence. You could die. Thanks. Try to say it without stammering. You walk over the bed, pulling up the sheets to get under them as well. You sit as close to Artemis as you'll allow yourself to. Artemis still looking at you. Your guts are writhing around. Do they know? You just spent like 30 seconds smelling their clothes I'd given you while you were in the bathroom? I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't go on. I can't. We have to. We have to keep going. You know that there's no way... You know that there's no way they would know. But she thought... But the thought is scratching at the back of your mind. It's embarrassing. Well, they can read my mind, so... They smell like you. You blurt it out without thinking. Fuck! Gods! You're a mess! <laughs> Artemis gapes at you, blinking owlishly. D do they? You intentionally don't look at Artemis when you speak again. Cheeks aflame. Yeah. It's good. Artemis is quiet. Several moments pass when you finally get the courage to look at Artemis again. Your heart pangs when you see the scarlet of their face. Seeing them blush really never gets old. Meeting your eyes for a second makes them blush even harder. They lick their lips. You try not to stare. A ghost of a smile flickers onto their face. They dip their chin, looking away. I'm gonna start the movie. You clear your throat, making a conscious effort to look at the television and not Artemis' face. Okay. Artemis grabs for the remote, which is next to them on a bedspread, and starts the movie. It takes a minute for the beginning credits to start, but after they do, you realize that this is an animated movie from a couple of years back. Oh. It's a cute one about anthropomor anthropomorphic witches. They have to come together for a spell to save the city. Do you remember watching it with Odino? When it was on streaming services last year. Oh, you picked a good one. Oh, you think so? It's one of my favorites. I love Nine Tales. It's a cute movie. Do you like animated movies? Artemis shrugs, smiling a little. Yeah. I watch a lot of them with Diana, but I think they're great entertainment for myself, too. That's so sweet. You don't think you'll ever get over the way Artemis and Diana are so close. The opening credit scenes roll into the beginning of the movie. Your attention is snagged, but Artemis speaks again, lightly brushing their fingers against the back of your hand. A shiver runs up your spine, but it's not unpleasant in the slightest. I have lots of animated movies that I love. Maybe we can watch some more of them sometime? You look up at them, smiling a little. Sure, I would love that. Artemis smiles back at you, their eyes squinting into crescent moons. They don't say anything after that, simply directing their attention back to the TV. You do the same. Even though you've seen this movie before, it's easy to f it's easy to fall back into it. It's been quite a while since you've last seen it. You don't think you ever, you don't think you remember most of this movie. Artemis's hand is still lingering next to yours. Your pinkies are touching, and it's only a moment until Artemis sort of slides her hand onto the back of yours. It's gentle, careful. You look at them again. Your head is tilted a bit to the side, and they're gazing at you, eyes lidded. Do you mind if I... <laughs> you bite your lip, your mouth quirking up at the corners. No. Okay. You attempt to focus on the movie again. Artemis is so distracting. At this rate, you won't be able to pay attention at all. Artemis slips their fingers into the gaps between yours, loosely holding your hand. They rub their thumb in soft circles on your pinky, and you swear your hand, your heart does a backflip. They're not looking at you anymore. Movement is mindless. It's comforting. Your insides have turned to mush. They always treat you so fondly. 
they're not really sure what you did to deserve it. The movie continues to play. You can feel Artemis' warmth next to you, even though the two of you aren't pressed together. You... Hold them, or get get them to put their arm around you. Um... I'm the top in this relationship. <laughs> hey, come here. You pull the sheets back, patting the sliver of bed between your legs with your free hand. Artemis looks at you, looks between your legs, and then looks back up at you. Their eyes are wide. You want me to... Your sentence trails off. You attempt to continue to ride the high of your boldness, forcing yourself to speak. We can... we can cuddle. Artemis quickly turns their face from you. But you can still see the way color bursts into their cheeks. They chew on their bottom lip, silent. Only... only if you want to. They look at you again. Something again akin to panic in their eyes. No, no, I mean, yes. Yes, I... yes, I want to. You almost want to crawl under the covers and hide there forever. Your voice cracks when you speak next. Okay, then come here. Artemis doesn't doesn't move for a long moment, but then shifts, scooting towards you. It takes them a second, but they get into your lap, between your legs, sliding down far enough that their head rests against your shoulders. You're not sure where to put your hand. You're sure what... What? You're sure that they could feel your heartbeat if they paid enough attention to it. Neither of you say anything for a beat. Artemis pulls the covers back over the both of you. Their weight against your chest is firm but comfortable. And you can smell the sweet scented product of their hair. Did they did they shower before you got here? You're warm. You're really struggling to keep your cool here. You don't think Artemis has ever been this close to you in such a relaxed and intimate way the entire time that you've known them. The moments pass and Artemis seems to make themselves comfy against you. You notice the way they loosen up, the way they kind of melt into your chest. Something hot blooms inside of your ribcage. The feeling is hard to place, but it might be fondness. You've grown to feel so fond and soft over moments like these. You move your hands, wiggling them under Artemis's arms, resting them on their stomach. You hear them hum deep in their throat. You quick, you swallow thickly. You've had them, you've had this thought a million times over the course of tonight. But gods, you like them so much. After a long while, Artemis sort of looks up at you. Their face is so close to yours. What? Artemis gives you this dorky little shy smile. Teasing their bottom lip with their teeth. Nothing. They run their hands lightly along your thighs. Oh my god. <laughs> you try not to shiver. They've never done that before. They go back to watching the television again. Your hand's not leaving your legs. Ah! <laughs> I'm... I'm dying. I'm dying right now. It's quiet for another moment. They look up at you again. Could I have a kiss? Mm. <laughs> They've asked this so many times now that you probably shouldn't have such a visceral reaction to it every time. But you feel your mind start to spin even so. It takes you a second to find the words to speak. Yes. What do you mean? Of course. Yes. You give them a cheeky smile. I don't see why not. It's almost funny the way that Artemis scrambles up to kiss you once you give them permission. Oh my god. <laughs> they push themselves up to meet you, turning so that your mouths brush up against each other. They kiss you then, soft and sweet. It makes your nerves buzz under your skin. Oh my god. <laughs> Put your hands on their cheek. Now that Artemis has moved, you don't know where to put your hands. They end up coming up to hover Artemis' face before you commit to cupping their cheeks. At your touch, Artemis sort of makes a noise that you can feel against your lips. It does it does something to your heartbeat. Oh. 
If you've ever wondered what romance books are like, this is it. A man that would never treat me like this IRL. <laughs> um... <laughs> I hope you find that IRL. <laughs> no further comment. Your fingers start to tangle at the nape of Artemis's neck, into their hair. Artemis is putty in your hands. You feel like headed. Two of you break apart for air. Oh. Artemis is flushed. Cheeks like fresh cherries. They have their hair in their eyes. Brush their hair out of their eyes or kiss them again. We're gonna brush their hair. <laughs> I'm committed. Okay, I'm committed to not sleeping tonight, alright? You know what? It's happening. You move to brush their hair out of their eyes. Your touch gentle, the two of you are inches apart. You tuck some loose hair behind their ears, and Artemis squeezes their eyes closed, biting their lip and tilting their face into your palm. Their brow creases, and you... I... Um... Kiss the furrow between their brows, or kiss, kiss the corner of their mouth. Um... <laughs> probably this one. You dip back... You dip back in ever so slightly, brushing your lips against the corner of their mouth. You can feel their warm breath on your skin. You linger there for a moment, but then Artemis turns to face a little to the left, so that your mouths meet. They kiss you again, soft and tender, like they're trying to speak to you without words. Like this is the only way they're able to really convey their feelings for you. You don't know what to do with yourself. Your heart aches in your chest. When they pull away from you, you watch them lift their glasses and rub their at their eyes. They let out a shaky sigh. You okay? Your other hand comes up to their opposite cheek, and you cradle their face in your hands like you might break them if they don't handle them gently. And Artemis looks at you. Their eyes are kind of glassy. Your heart pangs. They smile. Something wobbly and affectionate. Yeah. You exhale a deep breath, situating yourself so that you're nesting your head on Artemis' shoulder. Under the blankets, your legs are very nearly tangled between theirs. It's the kind of thing that you have to try not to think too hard about, otherwise you'll get embarrassed. Two of you sit there in comfortable silence for a moment. It's then that you realize that there is, in fact, an entire movie playing! You are so distracted by Artemis at the God's forsaken mouth. Oh my God! You were so distracted by Artemis in that God's forsaken mouth of theirs that it was almost too easy to forget that you were watching something. Two of you sit in comfortable silence for a long moment. It's been quite a while since you've seen this movie, long enough that you've forgotten most of the plot, and it's fun. And it's fun to be surprised by what's going on. Artemis gets up once to go to the bathroom. They don't bother pausing the movie while they're gone. When they come back, they settle down next to you. Hydrate, stretchy, thank you. I'm like... I'm so tense right now. <laughs> also, I'm almost running out of water. I think after this chapter... I... I have to go eat something. I have not eaten... <laughs> I've been eating Fruit Loops, so wait, we're gonna have to take a break. <laughs> Nemini, please eat. Um, I'm like, I'm just so in this story. Okay, we'll finish the chapter and then and then I'll go eat something. Okay, okay. Mindlessly, you situate yourself so that you're resting your head on their shoulder. You tilt their head against yours after a beat. It's such a small movement, but it makes your heart warm. After a while, you start to feel Artemis' eyes on you. When you turn to look at them, their gaze lingers for a second before going back over to the TV. They are so charmingly horrible at being slick. What is it? Artemis doesn't say anything at first, almost like they're about to pretend that Pretend that they weren't looking at you at all. 
But you watch them visibly cave. It's nothing. A smile as they say it. A small, barely there smile. And that's seemingly the end of it. There's another beat. They turn to you. You lift your head off their shoulder. You lift your head off their shoulder. There's something unreadable on their face, a blur of emotions that are impossible to distinguish from each other. It's not nothing. Their eyebrows draw together. They chew at their bottom lip for a moment. You have to try not to stare. Even more so when Artemis begins to turn a rather flattering shade of pink. For a bit, they don't speak, searching for the words they want to say. No one has... No one has ever made me feel the way you make me feel. They blurt the words out like they couldn't hold them in for a single second longer. Your breath catches. Artemis keeps going. The sentence is spilling out. The sentence is spilling out of them. I dated my ex for a year and a half, and he... I loved him, but I... Don't know how to describe it. Every time I look at you, feels like the first time. It didn't feel like that with him. You listen to me, and you make me smile, and you always look at me so fondly, and I hate being away from you. I want to see you all the time. I want to touch you all the time. I hate it when you tell me goodbye. I'm crying. I'm actually crying. They shake their head hard then. Like, they're trying to unjumble their thoughts. The color in their cheeks only grows deeper, darker. I like you a lot, Nemini. Like, more than, more than anything. I like you so much. I want to be yours. Mm, if that's okay with you. Artemis falls silently after. Artemis falls silent after they say this. They start to fiddle with their fingers. Obviously nervous. You feel the wind has been knocked out of you can't help but blink at them owlishly as you slowly process what they've said. You want to be yours. I want to be yours. They say it firmer this time, steadier, a little more confident than before. The heat that rushes your face makes you dizzy. Holy fucking shit. They're asking if you want to date. Your mind is absolutely swirling. Artemis, I... Fuck. Yes, you can be mine. I would love it if you were mine. You exhale the words out all in one breath, and smile already is starting to split your cheeks. You feel kind of floaty inside, like you're living in a dream that you haven't quite woken up from yet. Artemis looks at you, like, really looks at you, and then their chin wobbles and their expression crumbles onto something so delicate and so fragile. And suddenly, they're crying. No! Your heart jumps into your throat. In a second, your hands are on their cheeks. Your thumbs wiping their tears from their skin. Oh my god, it's Artemis. Oh my god, it's okay. Oh my god. <laughs> Artemis sniffles. Their eyes fill to the brim. They give you a shaky smile, putting their hands on your wrists. Your cheeks are warm in your palms. I know, I know, I know. I'm just... I'm just happy. I'm really happy. You mean so much to me. It feels like your heart is being torn into a million tiny shreds in your chest. Oh, you could die, but in the best way possible. Please, can I kiss you? You nod vigorously, already beginning to pull them forward. Yes, 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 you can kiss me, please. <laughs> when Artemis kisses you, you can taste the salt of their tears on their lips. Oh my god. The kiss is in... Insistent and full of emotion, and you swear that maybe you could cry too. Artemis pulls away, but presses a lingering, affectionate kiss to your temple before they sit back. They sit there for only a moment, looking at you. The softest expression you have ever seen on their face, the entire time that you have known them. After a beat, they jump back towards you, cradling your face in their hands and kissing... You like it's the last thing they could ever do. They're everywhere. Their smell, their touch, their mouth. And you don't know what to do with yourself. You don't think you've ever liked someone this much in your life. 
You've never gone gooey for anyone like you do for Artemis. It's a feeling that you've grown to adore. Just like how you've grown to adore the person who spilled iced coffee down your shirt all those weeks ago. <laughs> oh my god. Perhaps that mishap was the one best thing to ever happen to you. But there's one thing you know for sure. Artemis is here with you now. You don't think they'll be leaving your side anytime soon. There's someone you want to... You... There's someone you never want to lose. And you know that they feel the same way about you. Oh my god, that was it! That was the whole game! <laughs> oh my god! Thanks for playing! I'm crying. I'm crying right now. OMG! Yeah, gallery? Oh my god. We got all the pictures! That is so cute. Nemini, go eat! <laughs> I will! I will! I will! I will! Oh my god. So that was fun. <laughs> so that was fun, right? <laughs> it was! Yeah. I'm gonna be honest. Um, It's been a really long time since, like, I've been so captivated by a story I really liked it thank you Brooke <laughs> very thank you for stream thank you all for being here literally the entire time <laughs> okay bye it was a good story it was it was a good story um yeah gotta go eat okay bye